Welcome to Fantasy Audiobook, Hogwarts. I am the only one who is a cultivator. Chapter 1 In the early morning, in a beautiful countryside, a young boy with an immature but handsome face, who could not hide his handsomeness and gentleness even at a young age, opened his eyes in an exquisite, small villa. The moment the young man opened his eyes, a dazzling light flashed in his starry eyes, but that ray of light just flashed away, and as the ray of light passed, the young man's starry eyes also became normally, even if you look closely, you can only find that the boy's eyes are brighter than ordinary people. Ah, another day filled with 70,000 yuan and expectations. Stretching, the young man did not stay in bed but directly opened the quilt and got into bed with his bare feet. If anyone is here at this moment, you will find that the little boy's feet are more delicate and fairer than 99% of girls. But if you want to do something bad, then the owner of these feet will use the cruel reality told him what cruelty means. Wow, as a sound that was not too loud but not too small sounded, the curtains in the room were opened, and the orange-red sunlight instantly shone through the window on the young boy's face, and the boy just grabbed the curtains with both hands and turned sideways. The corners of the sun's mouth, which had just risen and revealed half of it, were slightly raised. The time is just right, it's time to start practicing. The boy's name is Yi Feng which is the name he has had since he was born, but unfortunately, the name is still the name of the world, but it is no longer that world. Yes, just like the plot in many novels that are old but still used, he is a time traveler. Although the way he travels through is a little bizarre or even outrageous, fortunately, the world he travels to is a peaceful one. The world is a country he is familiar with. Fortunately, he has a system. As for his method of time travel, after reading a novel about fairy tales, he cut a wooden sword and then imitated the main character in the book to handle the sword with the sword pointing at the middle. In the end, he actually succeeded and successfully, sword driving, himself. There is no need to mention the shameful time-traveling method of piercing the heart with a sword. Eleven years, eleven whole years, do you know how I live? This kind of, life where you don't have to worry about food and clothing without having to worry about your, money future, is so cool. Compared with those hard-working predecessors, although Yi Feng was not reborn into a wealthy family after time travel, his parents were just two teachers in the town, but their salary was still good, at least they didn't need him for their salary. Like those predecessors, you have to find ways to make money as soon as you were born. So, relying on his intelligence he still had elementary school knowledge Yi Feng went to the inner city elementary school to win a lot of scholarships every year, which made his childhood extremely comfortable. After sighing and speaking to Chao Yang, Yi Feng let out a long breath. In an instant, a white light shot out of his mouth like sword energy, and it did not slowly dissipate in the air until it flew seven or eight meters. Fortunately, there are green mountains behind his small villa, and it's still early. Otherwise, if people saw this scene, he would have to be invited to drink tea. After all, exhaling like a sword is not something a normal person can do, things to do. Dip, the daily mission of eating purple energy is completed, and the immortal power will be extra plus ten. Listening to the system prompts, Yi Feng's smile grew wider. Although his way of time travel is rather bizarre, the system of cultivating immortality that came with him is still quite good. As long as he persists in cultivating immortality and completes the system's tasks, he will be able to obtain rewards. These rewards are also strange, but in general they are something beneficial to his cultivation. The only pity is that he has been cultivating immortals for ten years, and he has long been able to control swords that he could only dream about before. However, even if he secretly walked around with his sword at night for the past two years, he could not find any immortal cultivators. Traces, which made Yi Feng a little disappointed. However, Yi Feng was not discouraged. After all, he still had to take care of his parents in this world, so he did not dare to go out for too long even if he sneaked out at night, so he did not go far. But now that he has graduated from elementary school, after entering junior high school, he will have more time to explore and find his kind. In order not to make the parents of this world worried and sad, and to avoid unnecessary trouble, he pretended to be a little kid for six full years. If he hadn't had a system for cultivating immortals, and usually spent most of his mind on cultivating immortals and only allocated part of his mind to attend school, he would have been tortured and gone crazy. Fortunately, although he still really doesn't want to go to junior high school, 
teenagers at this stage have begun to become more sensible. He doesn't have to pay attention to his words and deeds all the time and worry about suddenly saying something more, shocking, to scare others, and he no longer has to deliberately pretend to be introverted and don't like talking to people anymore. However, although school time is not very pleasant, the time after school is still very happy for Yi Fang. He can do what he likes, such as using the induction cooker at home to make elixirs when his parents are not home. As for that bit of homework, it was nothing to him. And since he learned how to control things, doing homework has become even less of a problem. As long as he thinks about it, he can use the power of his consciousness to control several pens at the same time and start working at the same time, even during the summer vacation. Homework and other tasks can also be completed within half an hour. Although the system's rewards are not bad, relying on the system's rewards alone is not the answer after all. Yes, although the system rewards are pretty good, the refresh rate of tasks is not high, and most of the rewards are immortal power, various skills, formations, alchemy and other secrets, such as treasures and elixirs, there are only a few materials such as elixirs and weapon refining. This is also the reason why Yi Feng looked around for similar people, after he learned to wield a sword and had some self-protection ability, because he really didn't have any materials to practice, and although ordinary medicinal materials and various metal materials can be used, they can't be used. It's just barely usable. I hope this situation will get better after I enter junior high school. While Yi Feng sighed in his heart, there was also a little noise coming from his parents' room next door, and his parents also got up. Yi Feng, who heard the sound, rubbed his face, showed a sweet smile, turned around and walked out. He wanted to go for a walk in the mountains today to see if he could find some suitable herbs to try the newly thought of, alchemy. And this requires his parents' approval. When the red sun in the west was about to set, Yi Feng returned home carrying a small bag of wild fruits. But what surprised Yi Feng was that as soon as he stepped into the house, he saw the two solemn faces of his parents. Dad, Mom, what happened? Looking at the solemn faces of his parents, Yi Feng also put away the smile on his face and walked in front of them. When Yi Feng's parents heard Yi Feng's words, they were serious. He handed a piece of paper in front of him. Yi Feng, katakana middle dot underscore katakana middle dot. He took the piece of paper and looked at it. He had almost forgotten all of it but could still vaguely recognize a few words in English. Yi Feng's head was filled with question marks. When he saw the doubts on Yi Feng's face, Yi Ma suddenly slapped her forehead. Full of chagrin. Hey, I forgot you don't understand English very well. This is an admission letter from a school called Hogwarts in England. Hog. Was. Hearing this name, the questions in Yi Feng's mind became more and more. He has been practicing immortality for ten years. Now you tell me that this is not the world of immortality but the magic world. Are you sure you are not kidding me? A letter of admission to Hogwarts caused a few ripples in Yi Feng's peaceful life. Yi Feng never thought that what he got was not the protagonist's script of resurrection of spiritual energy or urban cultivation. Instead, what he got was fan magic. The script has nothing to do with his system. Oh no, I'm in China now. Although the time is slightly wrong, I haven't read Harry Potter very much, but I have read the fan fiction. The admission criteria for Hogwarts is not those born in the UK with magical talents. An 11-year-old child. While Yi Feng was extremely confused, Minerva McGonagall, the cat lady, who was far away in Hogwarts, was also very confused about Dumbledore's decision. She couldn't understand why the principal knew about it and insisted on giving it to him far away. An unknown little boy in China sent a letter of admission. As for our protagonist Yi Feng, he also fell into silence after listening to his mother read the contents of the admission notice, but soon this silence turned into joy. Although Xi'an Yefeng, who has been cultivating for ten years, has never done anything himself and is not sure about the limits of his strength. Maybe now he can kill Voldemort with one finger, but he is still slightly interested in the power of magic, not to mention magic. There are dragons, all kinds of magical creatures and strange items in this world. There is a saying that there are 3,000 avenues, but in the end they all lead to the same goal. Although the system of magic is different from that of cultivating immortals, the differences between various things should not be big. Even if the characteristics are different, do a little research and then divide the uses according to their characteristics. Enough. Therefore, 
Yi Feng was a little excited after hearing the contents of this admission notice. As for whether it was fake, even if it was fake, there was some kind of special energy fluctuation that he had never seen before. It wasn't fake, that is to say, whether it was true or false, he had to take a look. So, Yi Feng asked his mother to write a reply. As for Yi Feng being too young to go abroad, his parents were not worried at all. After all, more or less people in this era can become English teachers. They all have some background, so it makes sense for his mother to have a few friends who have gone abroad, right? Of course, the main reason is that his parents don't believe this is true and think it's just a prank played by one of their friends. The next day, Yi Feng got up as usual and faced the rising sun to swallow the purple air. Just as he was finishing his breathing and exhaling the waste air as usual, an owl silently fell from the sky, and then, then it hit the sword energy, he spat out with a bang. Yi Feng, an airy summation opening parenthesis D no, no. Yi Feng was immediately frightened when he saw the owl screaming, spinning and falling to the ground. The next second, the curtains in his room were slightly raised. When the curtains fell, Yi Feng was already squatting under the shade of the tree outside the window. Quote exclamation mark, you have a round face and a fat body. Bah, brother owl, don't want to die. Wake up quickly, you still have a letter to send. Let's discuss it, can you wait and wait until the letter is sent back before you die? Owl, key back quote D, human language, fortunately, the owl couldn't speak, otherwise it would have pointed at Yi Feng's nose and scolded him. Yi Feng also discovered its problem, so he put the owl with a bloody hole in its abdomen on the ground, turned his little hand and took out a little finger-sized pill that exuded a faint fragrance, pinched open the owl's beak and opened it. The pills were fed to the owl. Brother Ying, don't worry. This is the passion pill that I refined using 9918 kinds of spices. Although it doesn't have the effect of the living dead or flesh and bones, it can still easily cure the fatal injury of this cricket. Owl, Sigma, Su degree D degree winking face, Su no, I think I can save it again. An hour later, hey, Zhao Feng, we have a treat today. Your mother bought pigeons early this morning and came back to stew pigeon porridge. The taste is so delicious. I just took a taste secretly and didn't know that your mother let it go. What seasonings? This pigeon porridge has a special fragrance and is very delicious. Yi Feng. Hollow down pointing triangle, no. Yi's mother had just come down from the balcony after watering the strawberries planted by Yi Feng. My dad. This is not pigeon porridge, this is old hen porridge stewed with the pheasant I picked up from Xiao Feng. Oh, you should eat more now. This is a rare good thing. Yi Feng, hollow down pointing triangle. Brother Eagle, I'm sorry. I will burn two more female eagles for you every Kingming festival. Go away. T hollow down pointing triangle T. A few minutes later, don't say it, Brother Ying, your taste is really delicious. While muttering to himself, Yi Feng handed the finished bowl to Yi Ma next to him and asked her to serve him another bowl. Although the first owl that came to deliver the letter died heroically, Yi Feng's letter was still successfully handed over to his successor and sent out, and on the second day after the letter was sent out, the principal of Hogwarts, the one wearing the Dumbledore, wearing a small round hat and a long white beard, suddenly appeared in front of their house. As for Yi Feng, he looked at Dumbledore with a smile on his face and subconsciously glanced at the bag of garbage outside the door that he hadn't thrown away before. Dumbledore noticed Yi Feng's little move and turned his head and glanced with a smile, and then on his face his smile froze. Ha ha, Principal Dumbledore, right. I didn't expect you to come to the door in person, please come in. Although Father Yi was not a human being, he still felt the subtle atmosphere, so he immediately broke the atmosphere and invited Dumbledore into the room. Ha, huh. looking at Father Yi's bright smiling face, Dumbledore breathed a sigh of relief, and the smile on his face became vivid again. They have never been exposed to magic in this magical and delicious country, so it is normal for the owls that deliver letters to be delivered to their doorsteps in the future. However, next time they deliver letters to the little wizards in this mysterious country, they will have to change their species. Messenger. Yi Feng didn't know what was going through Dumbledore's mind at this moment, but looking at the current situation, Dumbledore probably wouldn't pursue the matter of them, burying, the messenger. However, Yi Feng thought it was better to be on the safe side, so as he walked inside, he put his little hand back and then hooked it up. 
the garbage bag with a long tail feather still exposed quietly disappeared, as if it had never been there before. It didn't happen. Of course, this is when ignoring the watermark on the ground. An hour later, they agreed to take Yi Feng to buy various school supplies the day after tomorrow, and told Yi's parents and Yi's mother to complete the procedures for leaving the country. On September 1st, they took Yi Feng to London to send Yi Feng to school. After that, Dumbledore was with them. With shocked eyes, Yi Feng suddenly disappeared using his apparition, and Yi Feng was full of expectations for Diagon Alley, a magical neighborhood that he had only heard of. Of course, he will definitely not fall behind in cultivating immortals. After all, he has been practicing for ten years. This has become his instinct and a habit. Father Yi and Mother Yi are also quite excited. After all, his my son is going to study abroad, which is something to be proud of. Diagon Alley, Diagon Alley. I'm really looking forward to it. I wonder what my wand will be like. Will there be the kind of ordinary wand in fan fiction that can't withstand my magic, and explodes, and in the end I can only use the old one. I'm really looking forward to the storyline about the magic wand. In the midst of Yi Feng's murmur, Dumbledore, who had been agreed with them, appeared at the door of Yi Feng's house on time under the rays of the morning sun. I don't know whether it was because Yi's parents and Yi's mother were too worried or because Dumbledore was really reassuring to them. He actually felt comfortable letting Yi Feng follow Dumbledore on a long journey alone. That was on the other side of the ocean. In this era, let alone smartphones, even landline phones were not yet completely popular. In many places, even a village only had one phone. But under such circumstances, his parents were very relieved and allowed him to follow Dumbledore alone to study in another country on the other side of the ocean. You know, he is only 11 years old now. Even though he always acts more mature than his peers, he looks like an 11 year old kid. However, when Yi Feng followed Dumbledore to the domestic magic branch by Phantom, and used the fireplace system to rush to London through the branch, and met his mother's old classmate, Yi Feng understood why his parents were so relieved. Because their old classmate's husband's surname is Zhang, and they also have a daughter named Zhang Chu. This world, is really small. Looking at the girl who was one or two years older than him and looking at him with her head tilted, she couldn't help but feel that although she was only 12 or 13 years old, her delicate little face had gradually revealed signs of her stunning beauty. Sigh. Yi Feng never thought that his mother's classmate would be the mother of Zhang Chu, a famous beauty in Hogwarts, but maybe only in this way and if the two of them are on the same page, can they really feel free to let him have a baby people come to study? Okay, now that you know each other, I'll leave it to you to take Feng Yi to buy preschool supplies. No problem, Chu Zhang. No problem, Principal Dumbledore, I will definitely help Feng Yi prepare all the school supplies. After hearing Zhang Chu's words, Dumbledore nodded with satisfaction, because although Zhang Chu is not very famous now, she is indeed very reliable and a very reassuring little girl. It was precisely because of this little girl who made him feel at ease and trouble-free that he wanted to find another little wizard from China and found Yi Feng. I have to say that Zhang Chu's family is indeed very hospitable. Not only did they prepare a sumptuous dinner for Yi Feng the night he stayed, but they also directly packed up an empty room for him to stay in. This treatment was better than that of a savior living at the bottom of the stairs. It's so much better. But before coming, Yi Feng was already looking forward to the magic that he had only heard about or seen parts of. So Yi Feng knocked on Zhang Chu's door that night and borrowed her magic phone from her. Standard spells, elementary, history of magic, magical theory, Beginner's Guide to Transfiguration, A Thousand Magic Herbs and Mushrooms, Magic Potions and Potions, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, Dark Magic, Self-Defense Guide, and Other Books. Well, that is, the entrance textbooks that first-year students need to purchase. Originally, Yi Feng planned to borrow books for higher grades, but Zhang Chu felt that Yi Feng was too ambitious. In addition, there was only more than a month left before school. Can Yi Feng borrow those first grade books? I couldn't even read enough books, so I directly rejected Yi Feng's request. Zhang Chu looked down on Yi Feng a little. After all, he was also an immortal cultivator who could control objects with his spiritual mind. He only needed to read all these books that had no restrictions or prohibitions with his spiritual mind. The reason why he didn't use his spiritual mind. Find out the rest, just out of politeness.
of course, there is a difference between reading it and fully mastering it. In addition, it was not easy for him to borrow the book one second and say it was finished the next, so Yi Feng took the book back to his room. Yi Feng, who moved the book back to his room, was not in a hurry to test whether the things in the book were true, nor did he try to use the magic in the book, because he now had a more serious problem in front of him. Although their family is considered to be well off in the country, they do not have a currency called pounds. In other words, he does not have a dime in his pocket, and when Hogwarts starts school, he needs to buy various items by himself. Utensils. What's more, although Zhang Chu's mother Aunt Li said that all the expenses were covered by them, Yi Feng had no shame in eating them and using theirs even when living with them. After all, they were not a real family, so Yi Feng wondering how to get some money. In fact, the best way is to borrow money, because Yi Feng remembers very clearly that a historic event occurred in the world in 1991. It was at the end of this year that Big Brother, one of the two poles, suddenly collapsed and fell into pieces, and the ruble issued based on this behemoth became worthless because of the collapse of this behemoth. In other words, Yi Feng only needs to borrow a large sum of rubles at this time and exchange it for gold galleons. Then when the giant collapses and the ruble depreciates, he can pay back the loan at a very low price, and this price compared to the gold galleons exchange, it was almost like giving it away for free. In fact, some people do this in reality. This is what our third brother did at the beginning. When the giant collapsed, he gave the successor Damao a hard blow at that critical moment. In the end, he was completely remembered by Damao. Since then, the third brother has been tricked by Damao. In addition to almost having a sticker on his forehead, this may not be an important reason. But loans require collateral. He can't mortgage Hogwarts, can he? While thinking about it, Yi Feng saw the row of test tubes on the table that looked like crystals under the dim light. By the way, the Philosopher's Stone should be quite valuable, right? If you take the Philosopher's Stone to Gringotts for a mortgage, Yi Feng's eyes suddenly lit up when he thought of this, but the Philosopher's Stone is still in Gringotts now, and he will tomorrow we are about to go to Diagon Alley, and we will definitely run out of time. It looks like there's some blood. Yi Feng murmured and turned his right hand, and with a flash of light, a pale yellow crystal the size of an egg appeared in his hand. In the past ten years, although he has not traveled far because of his age and has not triggered any tasks, he has also accumulated a little wealth by relying on daily check-ins and daily tasks. What he is taking out now is one of the things he has accumulated over the years. A spiritual stone. Although this is not a magic stone but a spiritual stone, and it is only a low-grade spiritual stone, even if it is a low-grade spiritual stone, it contains very rich and pure spiritual energy. It should be worth a lot of money to Gringotts. Ha! Huh, everything is ready now. I'm just waiting to go to Diagon Alley tomorrow. I hope the magical world in this world can bring me endless surprises. Yi Feng murmured and put the spirit stone in his hand on the table, and then he took out a top-quality spiritual stone from the space ring and held it in his hand for daily practice. The day's plan begins in the morning. Congratulations to the host for successfully waking up early. Please check for the random rewards that have arrived. The next morning, Yi Feng had just opened his eyes and sat up when he received a reminder from the system. However, Yi Feng was already used to such reminders, so he didn't pay too much attention to it. He still followed his own habits and walked to the window first. Get ready to take Chao Yang Zichi. Just like instinct, Yi Feng walked straight to the window, but when he walked to the window, he suddenly realized that he was no longer the room in his home where he could see the morning sun as soon as he opened the curtains and turned slightly sideways. He is currently living in a foreign country in the home of his future classmates. Looking at the other house that was only four or five meters away from the window, Yi Feng sighed slightly, turned around, sat back on the bed, put on his shoes, and walked to the top of the building according to the position Zhang Chu told him yesterday. But when Yi Feng came to the top of the building, the sun in the sky has completely jumped out of the horizon. Although according to astronomy, the sunlight that the sun shines on the earth does not change much, Yi Feng doesn't know why. The purple energy that can be taken by using the breathtaking method is indeed only as high as the sun can rise every day. It only exists the moment you wake up, but does not exist for a second in the morning or a second at night. Ha, huh, didn't you sleep last night? You got up so early. 
Just when Yi Fang was already here and was stretching his muscles on the roof to go downstairs, Zhang Chu's voice suddenly came from the top of the stairs. Morning. I slept well last night, but I'm used to getting up early. Do you want to come up and breathe the fresh morning air? Seeing Zhang Chu, who was wearing loose sportswear and looked extremely youthful and beautiful even though she was still young, Yi Feng's restless heart couldn't help but beat. It was definitely not because he was afraid of not knowing what to do. The answer was caused by nervousness. PFF. Looking at Yi Feng's somewhat stiff body and expression, Zhang Chu couldn't help but laugh out loud. This made Yi Feng a little embarrassed and at a loss. After all, he had never talked to girls in his previous life or this life, experience of. Seeing Yi Fang's embarrassed look, the smile on Zhang Chu's face became even brighter, but she was a gentle and kind person after all, so when Yi Fang's face slowly turned red, she walked directly in front of Yi Feng she stretched out her little hand, which was even fairer and slender than Yi Fang's, and placed it on Yi Fang's head. Don't be nervous, I will be your sister from now on, and I will take care of you from today on. Feeling the warmth coming from the top of his head, Yi Feng suddenly froze, because he had never felt this kind of feeling of being cared for by his sister, but this feeling, wasn't bad. After Zhang Chu touched his head in the morning, Yi Feng felt a little more at home in this place where he lived, and his relationship with Zhang Chu and his family became closer. Although it was not close or familiar, the barriers were indeed reduced. Less, this change makes getting along with each other more comfortable. So, after breakfast, Zhang's parents and Zhang's mother went to work, Zhang Chu, who had a huge sum of 500 pounds in his arms, tightly held Yi Feng's hand and set off for Diagon Alley. To be honest, although Zhang Chu's little hands are very soft and warm, he is still a little resistant to being pulled by Yi Feng like a child. However, Zhang Chu is worried that he doesn't understand English well and is not familiar with the surrounding environment, so he gets lost and caught. It was quite tight, so Yi Feng gave up after trying twice and failing to break free. Under the leadership of Zhang Chu, Yi Feng and the others came to a relatively busy street. On this street, there was a store in front of which looked good but not many people entered, or in other words, it was as if pedestrians could not see it. Is this some kind of spell or formation that has been cast to expel people who don't understand magic? No, I didn't feel anything like the movement of the formation, so this should be some kind of expulsion spell. While thinking about it, Yi Feng was pulled by Zhang Chu to the shop that had some kind of expulsion spell cast on it. When Yi Feng was pulled by Zhang Chu and entered the shop, Yi Feng knew that they should be in the legendary place now. In the broken axe bar. The wizard in the bar was immediately surprised when he saw two children coming in. After all, it was rare for two little wizards to come by themselves, not to mention that these two little wizards knew that they were Chinese at a glance. Just when Yi Feng was sizing up these wizards, he suddenly felt his hand tighten, and Zhang Chu's grip on his little hand increased unknowingly. In other words, Zhang Chu was nervous at this moment. Although her little face still looked natural and calm at the moment, Yi Feng felt her nervousness from her clenched hands, so Yi Feng narrowed his eyes slightly and glanced around the wizards who were sizing them up. The wizards who were originally drinking in the bar and were full of reckless atmosphere became friendly after being glanced at by Yi Feng. Some wizards even nodded towards Yi Feng and the others with kind eyes. This, favor Halo, is quite useful. Yi Feng couldn't help but sigh in his heart when he saw the wizards around him looking friendly. But of course this is not the so-called halo of favor, it's just a spiritual thought. It's just a little trick, similar to mental induction, to make people subconsciously like them. Of course, this kind of good impression is just a feeling of intimacy at first glance, and will not cause hostility or the like, nor will they really think that you are their friend or anything like that. Zhang Chu slowly relaxed after feeling the kind eyes from all around, and continued to pull Yi Feng forward, and soon came to the small patio behind the broken axe bar where the wine barrels were placed. Is this the legendary entrance to Diagon Alley? Then the gap on the wall opposite the entrance should be a mark, right? While Yi Feng was thinking about it, Zhang Chu finally let go of Yi Feng's hand and breathed a sigh of relief and said, This is the entrance to Diagon Alley. Today's opening formula is, count three blocks up, and count two horizontally to the right. Blocks, count down vertically, three blocks. While talking, Zhang Chu took out his wand and wanted to use his wand to light the brick that opened the entrance, but at this time an accident happened. As we all know, 
the domestic economy was not very good in the 1990s, so people at that time grew relatively slowly. They generally did not start growing until junior high school or even high school. Yi Feng is only 11 years old now, and Zhang Chu is he is only one year older than Yi Feng. In the novel, Yi Feng does not know how tall the gap at the entrance to Diagon Alley is, but in the movie, Yi Feng remembers that the gap is the same height as Hagrid, and Hagrid's height is much higher than that of an average adult. Less presence. In other words, although Yi Feng and the others knew the key to entry and the brick they needed to click on, they couldn't reach it. Yi Feng couldn't help but smile when he saw Zhang Chu supporting the wall with one hand and holding up the magic wand in the other as he struggled to stand on tiptoes. As for moving the wine barrel next to him to cushion it, the barrel was not much shorter than them. The weight may not be lighter than them, so Yi Feng walked directly to Zhang Chu and squatted down. Yeah, Zhang Chu, who was suddenly hugged, was so frightened that she screamed, but when she saw that it was Yi Feng who picked her up, she breathed a sigh of relief and then quickly stretched out her wand and pointed at the brick. As Zhang Chu clicked on the brick, the wheels on the wall began to move on their own. Yi Feng saw this and put Zhang Chu down. However, Zhang Chu did not see Yi Feng stuffing some old bricks with her when he put her down. Into the brick wall that moved quickly and parted in both directions. As this Diagon Alley, it doesn't feel that good, either. Zhang Chu. As soon as Yi Feng said these words, Zhang Chu next to him was filled with questions. After all, this can almost be regarded as the most prosperous, trading center, in the magical world, and although it is not as popular as the most prosperous muggle streets, it's a bit incomparable, but it is still quite lively and prosperous. This is far from comparable to the undeveloped domestic areas. Yi Feng didn't know the question in Zhang Chu's mind, but he did think so, because Diagon Alley was really not that good, because in the other world before coming to this world, their relatively backward town was full of people. Not much worse than this. Of course, it is indeed a bit bullying to compare the economic development level of the wizarding world, which may still be in the 19th century, with the country that has developed in the 21st century, but apart from the things for sale in Diagon Alley, there is really nothing else. What? Therefore, after Yi Feng said these words, his eyes suddenly lit up, because he saw many things containing special power fluctuations, and these must be products of the magic world, and Yi Feng's appearance also made Zhang Chu Song, who was full of questions. Tone. Let's go. I'll take you to Gringotts first to exchange for some gold galleons, and then I'll take you to buy school supplies. Although he really wanted to rush out and buy all the magic items, especially some herbs and materials, he didn't have any gold galleons in his pocket, so he could only follow Zhang Chu forward obediently. As he walked forward, Zhang Chu naturally bent slightly and took Yi Feng's hand again. Yi Feng, Omega. After Yi Feng and Zhang Chu left, another adult wizard also came to the small courtyard with the young wizard who was about to enter school. The adult wizard took the little wizard to the patio, turned around, took out his wand and said seriously, you little wizards can't use flow powder at will yet, so if you want to enter Diagon Alley, you need to use these special tools. The entrance is into Diagon Alley, and the secret to opening this portal is on this wall behind me. Remember, the gap on this wall is the mark. Count three blocks up from the left side of the gap, and then go to the right. Katakana middle dot underscore katakana middle dot. K. Why is there no gap? Exclamation mark exclamation mark exclamation mark. N airy summation opening parenthesis D no no. The gap is gone. The huge exclamation was heard by the entire giant axe bar and when the wizard who heard the news rushed to the small patio and saw the intact wall without even a brick corner missing, he fell into silence. Could it be that, we're in the wrong place? After a long silence, a wizard suddenly raised a very possible possibility, so a group of wizards left the small patio and started looking for the, real entrance. However, ten minutes later, they found that a group of them had returned to the previous small patio. Do you think there is a possibility? It's just a possibility. This is indeed the entrance to Diagon Alley from the Broken Axe Bar. It's just that someone filled the gap in the wall. Impossible, absolutely impossible. If it were patched up, the person who made the patch wouldn't be able to remember where to start counting. Do you think someone put a hallucinatory spell on this wall? As soon as these words came out, the eyes of a large group of wizards suddenly lit up, and then each wizard eagerly took out his wand, because in their opinion, someone was challenging them, so they must break this challenge no matter what today. Psychedelic Spell 
Soon the sound of chanting curses could be heard in the small courtyard, and the broken axe bar also lit up one after another with magic lights, but even if they tried their best, the wall still remained unchanged. Let them slowly change from being confident and refusing to admit defeat to being unconfident, and finally doubting life. At the same time, Yi Feng and Zhang Chu had arrived at Gringotts. We want to exchange gold galleons. Hearing Zhang Chu's words, the goblin sitting behind the table that was almost as high as them glanced at them indifferently, and then said in a rather impatient tone, Hand over the muggle currency to be exchanged, remember every little the wizard cannot exchange more than 1,000 gold galleons at a time. Zhang Chu may not have been to Gringotts for the first time, so he didn't pay too much attention to the goblin's attitude, but Yi Feng was a little unhappy when he saw the goblin's condescending attitude. It is well known that the goblins in the Harry Potter world are a very money-grubbing race, so they are very thirsty for some very valuable things, and will even lower their, arrogant, heads in order to get these things, and beg you to sell them things in a low voice. Or give them Gringotts instead. Of course, after getting what they want they will return to their previous attitude. Yi Feng remembered that the ruthless people in a certain novel took advantage of their greed for money and directly used the opportunity of the giant's collapse to mortgage Hogwarts and then directly took over Gringotts. From Gringotts' largest lender suddenly he became Gringotts' biggest creditor. So, when Zhang Chu handed over the small stack of pounds, Yi Feng took out the low-grade spiritual stone and played with it pretending not to care. Etc. Just two seconds later, before Zhang Chu had even taken out the gold galleons that Zhang Chu exchanged, the goblin who had been sitting behind the counter in a condescending manner suddenly widened his eyes and almost reached out of the counter. Seeing the attitude of the elf, Yi Feng suddenly put the spirit stone in his hand back into his pocket, then looked up at the elf who had already leaned out of the counter for more than half of his body and said impatiently, Why are you so slow? Haven't you taken out the gold galleons yet? I still need to buy a complete set of books for school, as well as all kinds of school equipment. Hearing Yi Feng's words, the goblin who was originally indifferent suddenly showed what he thought was a bright smile and said extremely flatteringly, these two little wizards have already exchanged the gold galleons. Please take your gold galleons. But now I have a request. Can you? Dot can you take out the gem just now and have a look at it with me? Just take a look. Seeing that the goblin had taken the bait, Yi Feng waited for Zhang Chu to put away the exchanged gold galleons, and then he reluctantly took out the low-grade spiritual stone from his pocket. The moment Yi Feng took out the low-grade spirit stone, the goblin's eyes widened, almost popping out of his eyes, and his wrinkled hands unconsciously grabbed the spirit stone in Yi Feng's palm. Yi Feng originally planned to prey on the goblin's appetite, but after thinking about it, he was an 11-year-old child, now, so he resisted and let the goblin take the spirit stone in his hand. After the goblin took away his spirit stone, his face showed a look of ecstasy, but the ecstasy was quickly restrained, and he took it away for appraisal with other goblins on the grounds that the value could not be determined. Ten minutes later, the goblin appeared in front of Yi Feng and the others with the spirit stone with a calm face, and then quoted a price to Yi Feng and the others. They were willing to accept this, gem, for 100 gold galleons. Although he knew that these goblins were dark, Yi Feng didn't expect that these guys were so dark. The quotation almost made him laugh angrily, but Zhang Chu next to him widened his eyes in shock, and his moist and delicate red lips opened slightly. She I really didn't expect this, gem, to be so valuable. However, although she was quite satisfied with the price, Zhang Chu quickly calmed down. She did not let Yi Feng sell the, gem, directly. Instead, she asked Yi Feng to keep it first and discuss it with her parents and his parents when she went back. Make a decision later. Yi Feng knew that this was the most correct thing to do at their age, but he didn't need it because this thing was not precious to him, so he shook his head and stretched out a finger towards the elf. 10,000 gold galleons, if one is less, we will turn around and leave, and we will never sell it to you Gringotts again. 10,000 gold galleons, if one is less, we will turn around and leave, and we will never sell it to you Gringotts again. As soon as Yi Feng said these words, the area around them instantly became quiet. Even Zhang Chu, who came with him, was shocked by his offer. After all, it was 10,000 gold galleons. Not to mention in the magic world, it was all exchanged. A pound is considered a huge amount of money in the muggle world. But something happened that shocked Zhang Chu. What she expected to be rejected by the goblin immediately and sternly did not happen. 
Instead, a scene appeared that almost shattered her outlook on life. The goblin was stunned for a moment after hearing Yi Feng's price of 10,000 gold galleons, but then a look of ecstasy appeared on his face. Although the ecstasy faded instantly, they still saw it, and the goblin immediately took out a contract, quickly filled in a number and signed it with his big wrinkled hands, and then handed it to Yi Feng. The contract has been established, little wizard. Sign your name on this contract, and you can take away 10,000 gold galleons from Gringotts. When he said 10,000 gold galleons, the goblin's face showed there was a flash of physical pain. Obviously, in their opinion, buying Yi Feng's spiritual stone with 10,000 gold galleons was a big profit for them, but having them pay 10,000 golden galleons still made their flesh ache, and Yi Feng was so displeased with himself. That low-grade spiritual stone could be sold for 10,000 gold galleons, which was acceptable, so he happily signed his name on the contract. In the magical world of Harry Potter, there is something like a space bag, so when the goblin took them to a warehouse filled with gold galleons, Yi Feng took them in front of the goblin and Zhang Chu. When all the gold galleons piled into a small mountain were taken away, although they were a little surprised, they were not too shocked. Of course, although he was not shocked, the goblin watched Yi Feng take away all the gold galleons that originally belonged to them. Not even a gold galleons was left. He even searched carefully to see if there were any mistakes or omissions. Then he took them with him. A look of pain still flashed across the face of the goblin who came down. Zhang Chu also saw the look of pain flashing across the goblin's face, which made her smile. After all, there were not many opportunities to make these aloof, grand eye, feel pain. Yi Feng didn't care whether the goblin was in pain or not. After receiving the last gold galleons in the storage ring, he said to Zhang Chu in a grand voice, Let's go, from now on I will be a rich man, and I will keep it from now on. We will buy whatever you want now. Zhang Chu couldn't help but smile when he heard Yi Feng's words. That smile was still unusually bright even in the dark underground warehouse of Gringotts, which made Yi Feng stunned for a moment. Zhang Chu blushed slightly when she saw this, but the next second she smiled, took Yi Feng's hand, pulled Yi Feng back, and scolded, Little brat, don't pretend to be an adult, let's go, it's dark here. Don't get lost. The white, soft and slender little hand held another fair and slender little hand with larger phalanges, and walked out of Gringotts and entered Flourish and Blot's bookstore. Half an hour later, the two of them walked into the boss's room with satisfied smiles. I walked out of the bookstore with a farewell. Although Yi Feng is just a little wizard who is about to enter school, and Zhang Chu is just a little wizard who is preparing to enter the second school year, Yi Feng has a lot of gold galleons in his pocket, so when Yi Feng feels that he is useful, Zhang Chu the owner of Flourish and Blot's bookstore was very happy when he bought all the books he could use. After all, these books are not cheap. When first-year wizards enter Hogwarts, in addition to preparing textbooks, they also need to prepare three sets of plain work robes, a wand, a pair of dragon skin gloves, a standard size number two pewter crucible, and a set of glass or crystal vials, a telescope, a brass balance and an owl for delivering letters, etc. Of course, if possible, you can also buy a cat or a toad as a pet. However, this pet is not completely a pet, because the transformation class can be used, such as turning a cat into a goblet or something. Yi Feng bought magic robes, dragon skin gloves and other items easily, but Yi Feng had a hard time buying the crucible because tin is poisonous. If you eat too much or touch too much, you will not grow taller, so in when buying the crucible, Yi Feng thought about it and decided to customize one himself. He slightly changed the material, replacing tin with platinum. When Yi Feng came out after buying the crucible, he saw the place selling owls, but he scanned around and couldn't find anything that suited his eyes. Just when he was about to leave to buy a wand first, a childish cry came in, into his ears. Hearing the childish cry, Yi Feng suddenly turned around. At this time, another cry sounded, which made Yi Feng directly locate the location of the sound. The sound came from the haystack, behind the boss. Boss, do you have owl cubs here? The boss was a little surprised when he saw customers coming back. When he heard Yi Feng's words, he was stunned for a moment and then said, Yes, yes, but all chicks are not capable of delivering letters and packages without training, of the mission. Little wizard, you should take a look at these adult owls that have been trained. Baby birds are not suitable for you little wizards who have just entered school. Add 10% to the price. 
help me finish the bird's nest and I'll take it away with you. Boss, I'll be back soon. Three minutes later, Yi Fang carried an owl cage with a bird's nest and followed Zhang Chu into Ollivander's wand shop, which boasted a history of 2,000 years of wand manufacturing. Good afternoon, little wizards. Let me see which little wizard needs a handy wand. They arrived before anyone could say anything, and as soon as they finished speaking, an old man wearing a black suit and with white curly hair walked up to them. Mr. Ollivander, it's me who needs a wand. After hearing Yi Feng's words, Ollivander took out a tape measure and measured Yi Feng's height, arm length, etc., and said, Not bad, very good. Young man, although I don't know your name yet, I think you will definitely become famous in the magic world in the future. Your body proportions are really suitable for magic. I have never seen such perfect body proportions, people. As he spoke, Ollivander turned back and took out a box from the pile of wands, opened it, took out the wand and handed it to Yi Feng. Here, give it a try. Yi Feng had been looking forward to the wand for a long time, so when he heard this, he waved the wand in his hand without hesitation, and then, nothing happened. There was no so-called explosion of the magic wand, nor was there any explosion of magic power that blew up the store. It was as if the wave Yi Feng had just waved was not a magic wand but an ordinary chopstick, and it did not cause any fluctuations in magic power. Is there something wrong with the way I open it? This script is wrong. Looking at the motionless wand, Yi Feng a little doubted whether he had no magic talent, because this was completely different from the novel. Yes, it must be opened in the wrong way. Try another wand and try again. At this moment, the other two people around Yi Feng were also shocked by this situation, because let alone Zhang Chu, even Ollivander, who was well informed and had sold countless wands, had never seen such a situation. Since inheriting this wand shop, Ollivan has received hundreds of young wizards. Various situations have happened to these young wizards when choosing wands, such as some magic attack that blew up his shop. It was common for him to wave his wand and set fire to his shop. However, no matter how the little wizard waves his wand, he will make some noise. Even if he throws out a breeze or makes some noise, it can be said that there will be some movement no matter what. But now, nothing happened after Yi Feng waved the wand, as if the one holding the wand was not a little wizard, but a muggle with no magic power in his body. However, as a qualified wand maker, he will not easily doubt the little wizard who comes to buy a wand. He will only think that the wand he chose is not suitable for the little wizard in front of him. After all, this little wizard is an oriental, and the oriental people's physiques are different from theirs, so it's understandable that they are a little special. With this idea in mind, Ollivander gave Yi Feng another wand, but unfortunately the situation remained the same. Ollivander immediately became angry when he saw this situation. As a wand maker with rich wand making experience, he would never allow a young wizard to enter his shop and leave empty handed. So, Ollivander, who did not believe in evil, changed three or four more wands for Yi Feng to try, but what made Ollivander almost doubt his life was that even though he had tried his best to choose the wand that he thought was suitable for Yi Feng, but the result remained the same, and there was still no movement from the magic wand in Yi Feng's hand. Just when Ollivander was about to doubt his life and even began to wonder whether Hogwarts had really made a mistake, and Yi Feng might not really be a little wizard, Yi Feng found the reason. In the final analysis, a wand is just a prop that helps wizards guide the power in their bodies and allow them to better control the magic power in their bodies to release magic. Especially young wizards. They have not learned magic and do not know how to control the power in their bodies, so they need a wand even more. Use a suitable magic wand to guide you to avoid magic disorder. As for Yi Feng, he has been cultivating immortals for 10 years. To put it bluntly, his control over the power in his body is definitely not as good as that of Dumbledore. In other words, the guiding power of the wand can't control the power of his body at all. Without the power in Yi Feng's body, this situation occurred. Thinking of this, Yi Feng did not take the wand handed over by Ollivander but closed his eyes, let go of his control over the fairy power in his body, and allowed the fairy power in his body to flow on its own. Wah wah wah! The moment Yi Feng let go of the power control in his body, the wands in the entire wand shop kept beating, which shocked Ollivander because he felt the joy, expectation and, fear of the wands, which he had never seen before. Never encountered. At the same time, Yi Feng, who had let go of his control, 
dispersed his consciousness slightly, but unfortunately he did not find that these wands made him feel friendly. However, although there were no wands that made him feel friendly, Yi Feng found that one of the wands was very interesting, so Yi Feng opened his eyes and stretched out his hand towards where the wand was. Whoosh! As a sound broke through the air, a wand shot out and landed in Yi Feng's hand. At this time, Yi Feng restrained his aura, and the vibrations around him stopped. That's it, boss, how much does it cost? Seven, seven gold galleons. After paying the money, Yi Feng took Zhang Chu out of Ollivander's shop with Zhang Chu in his eyes. After buying the wand, Yi Feng couldn't wait to go back and try how to cast magic. After all, fairy power and magic power it was a little different after all, and he might need to modify his spell a bit to cast magic. Originally, Yi Feng planned to take Zhang Chu to buy some things. After all, Zhang Chu's family was not actually wealthy, but Zhang Chu refused because although their family was not very wealthy, they were not lacking in basic necessities, food, housing and transportation. However, although Zhang Chu refused, Yi Feng still pulled her to buy a lot of things, such as some materials that he liked, gadgets that Zhang Chu liked, snacks, etc., which cost them more than a thousand gold galleons. Then he walked towards the exit with satisfaction. When you come in, you need to find a mechanism according to the spell to open the entrance to Diagon Alley, but you don't need to go out, so Yi Feng and Zhang Chu walked toward the exit with a relaxed look, but when the passage opened, Yi Feng stepped forward to block it. He stood in front of Zhang Chu and stretched out his right hand to block him. The next second Yi Feng blocked Zhang Chu, a white light hit Yi Feng, but to Yi Feng's surprise, the light did no harm. At the same time, huge cheers sounded from the other side of the passage. Successful, we finally cracked the illusion, Ga. As the passage opened little by little, revealing the figures of Yi Feng and Zhang Chu, the cheers on the other side of the passage suddenly stopped. This strange scene made both Yi Feng and Zhang Chu become nervous instantly, and they had the urge to turn around and walk back, impulse. But after waiting for a while, Yi Feng discovered that these people did not have any malicious intent, and he also realized that the magic just now was not an attack, but was like a magic to repair or break illusions. At this time, Yi Feng I finally remembered what I had done before. Realizing what might have happened, Yi Feng calmly stretched out his hand and took Zhang Chu's hand, pulling her out quickly. As he walked out, he smiled sweetly and said, Uncle and aunt, what are you doing? What are you doing? Are you going to build this wall? It's true that this wall is so dilapidated and it really needs to be repaired. In order to enter Diagon Alley, we just had to climb up the wall and click on the bricks next to the hole to open the entrance. It wouldn't be good if it fell over and crushed someone. Quote. But don't worry, I filled the gap in the wall with a few bricks I picked up from outside when I entered. Now I don't have to look for the gap to count the bricks when I enter Diagon Alley, and there is no more hole. Doesn't it look much better? My mother has taught me since I was a child that when you encounter someone who needs help, you can help if you can. It's just a few bricks. A cricket's effort is insignificant. You don't need to thank me. Witches. Yi Feng's words immediately silenced all the wizards. Even Zhang Chu looked at him in astonishment, but Yi Feng was unaware and still looked at the wizards with a bright smile and said, Of course, if you really really want to thank me, I can't refuse your kindness, so just give me something nice to do. Gulu. Zhang Chu couldn't help but swallowed when she heard Yi Feng's words. When she saw that the faces of the wizards around her began to look strange, but Yi Feng was still, unaware, Zhang Chu subconsciously pulled Yi Feng's arm. He ran out quickly and pulled Yi Feng out before many wizards could react. Stop him, he's still a child, don't let him go. Don't use the killing curse. Just fall unconscious and hang him up and beat him after you catch him. The broken axe bar became extremely lively for a while, and in the commotion, a pretty little girl with a nervous face rushed out of the broken axe bar, dragging a little boy who was still smiling heartlessly. Oh mom, it's not my first time to go to school. I know how to get there, so don't worry about this or that. Downstairs of Zhang Chu's house, Zhang Chu, the nagging mother, seemed a little impatient. After all, she had already this was not the first time that I went to school alone, so I felt a little resistant to my mother's repeated emphasis. You're overthinking. I'm not worried about you, I'm worried about Xiaoyi. As soon as Zhang's mother finished speaking, Zhang's father continued. That's right, it doesn't matter if you lose him, nothing will happen to Xiaoyi. 
he is not familiar with this place, so you have to pay close attention. If anything happens to Xiao Yi, I will only ask you. Zhang Chu shocked face carrot back quote oh. The case has been solved, this is the biological father and mother, because only the biological father and mother can do such a thing to deceive their daughter. To be honest, Yi Feng was very touched when he heard what Zhang's father and Zhang's mother said, because during this period of time, the two of them really raised him as their son. They would look after him first if there was anything delicious or fun. On the contrary, Zhang Chu, the biological daughter, was left out. Of course, this being left out is just a joke. After all, even Zhang Chu himself takes care of Yi Feng as his younger brother. Therefore, when Yi Feng saw Zhang's father and Zhang's mother bullying Zhang Chu, he quickly spoke to help Zhang Chu and said, Uncle and aunt, don't worry. Although I am not completely familiar with the surrounding environment, under Sister Chowers with the guidance, I can now communicate with other people normally. Yes, Yi Feng, who has been cultivating immortality for ten years, is very strong, and his spiritual mind is strong enough, but the primary school in their town does not have English as a subject at all. In addition, Yi Feng once had a hard time learning English, kind of. In other words, although he memorized the contents of those magic books with a single glance of his mind, he had no idea what was said in them. Therefore, in order for Yi Feng to attend Hogwarts properly, Zhang Chu spent nearly a month letting Yi Feng learn English. Now it is no longer a problem to speak, listen, read and write in English. Hearing Yi Feng's words, Zhang's parents and Zhang's mother let Zhang Chu go. Upon seeing this, Zhang Chu glanced at Yi Feng with a slightly grateful look and dragged his suitcase forward. Comma, this is the railway station in the King's Cross area, but is there really a platform with such a strange name as Nine and Three Quarters? Just as Yi Feng and Zhang Chu were discussing whether to buy some snacks such as melon seeds and peanuts to pass the time on the road, a little boy wearing glasses walked past them with his head lowered and murmuring in a low voice. Yi Feng, Sigma opening parenthesis DLLLL. Zhang Chu, Katakana Middle Dot underscore Katakana Middle Dot. Although Yi Feng has not watched Harry Potter completely, as the protagonist of this world and the savior, Yi Feng still knows him, so when this little boy wearing glasses walks by him, even if he does not show the scar on his forehead Feng also recognized who this was. We arrived early enough, but we didn't expect to meet Harry Potter. No, although I haven't watched the Harry Potter series of movies, I remember that the train left not long after Harry got on the train, so we shouldn't meet him so early. Suddenly, a guess that was very likely to be true but slightly cruel appeared in Yi Feng's mind. He, couldn't he have been wandering around here for a long time, and didn't enter until he met Ronald and they were told to enter station 9 and 3 quarters this way. Snapped. While thinking, a small hand fell on Yi Feng's shoulder with a snap, and at this time Zhang Chu's somewhat angry voice also reached Yi Feng's ears. Yi Feng, what are you thinking about? Are you so lost in thought? I've called you several times. Ah, hearing Zhang Chu's words, Yi Feng woke up from a dream and quickly replied, I was wondering if we have met the, savior, of the magic world, that is, Mr. Harry. Harry, that boy who was rumored to have survived Voldemort, I didn't expect that even you knew his name and could even recognize him. Harry's reputation is really great. Yi Feng was not surprised to see Zhang Chu, although he was surprised but not surprised, because Zhang Chu's temperament was like this. She was not the kind of person who liked liveliness and gossip, so she didn't care much about Harry Potter. As for Yi Feng, although he didn't know how powerful his full power explosion was, he should have no problem beating up a Dark Lord who was almost killed by Harry's parents, so he didn't actually care too much about Harry Potter, the so-called savior. However, although he didn't care too much about Harry Potter, everyone was from the same school and might even be from the same college in the future, so it was okay to help if he could, so Harry suggested Yi Feng stopped him when he continued to search for his pile of luggage. Mr. Harry, wait a moment, hearing the sound, Harry Potter stopped and turned his head to look in the direction of the sound. When he saw the man and woman standing together, his eyes suddenly lit up behind his glasses. So beautiful, although Zhang Chu is still young, she is already a rare beauty. Especially when Zhang Chu went out today, she tidied up a little and put on a new set of clothes. Therefore, when she first saw Zhang Chu, she Harry was stunned. But only two or three seconds later, the light in Harry's eyes dimmed and he lowered his head slightly. 
Although he now has a short respite after leaving the home that only brought him pain, his childhood experience has made him develop a character of low self-esteem. This made him feel uncomfortable when he saw Zhang Chu's beautiful clothes and standing next to her, Yi Feng she felt ashamed. Although Zhang Chu is kind-hearted and quite smart, she is only a 12-year-old girl after all, so although she saw Harry lowering his head slightly, she didn't know what was going on. She thought it was because Harry didn't listen. When she arrived, she also called Harry. Mr. Harry, this way. With a low self-esteem, he subconsciously thought that he had just heard wrongly. This time, Harry was finally sure that the two people were indeed calling him, but he was also sure that he did not know each other at all, which made him quite confused. However, despite his doubts, Harry still dragged his salute and walked towards Yi Feng and the others. Excuse me, do you know me? Looking at Harry with a slightly wary face, Yi Feng took a step forward and said with a smile, Of course, who doesn't know the famous miracle boy in the wizarding world? But I didn't expect that you would also enroll this year. As soon as Yi Feng finished talking about Zhang Chu, he continued, Want to go together? Finding the nine and three quarters railway station is still a bit difficult for a new little wizard who has just entered school and has no one to take care of him. Obviously, although Zhang Chu did not see Harry's emotional changes, she smartly guessed that Harry probably did not find a way to enter platform nine and three quarters, so she very kindly extended an invitation to Harry. Harry, who had been looking for the entrance for more than an hour when he heard Zhang Chu's words, was suddenly moved to tears. When he saw Zhang Chu, Bumping, directly towards a wall pillar of the platform, he was shocked. When Zhang Chu sank directly into the wall pillar, a look of surprise appeared on his face. This is magic. Welcome to the magical world, Mr. Harry. After saying this, Yi Feng also pulled his luggage and walked towards the entrance. After a glimmer in his eyes, there was an entrance with no brick wall. This is, platform nine and three quarters. Yi Feng couldn't help but sigh as he looked at the station in front of him that was full of historical charm, low EQ, dilapidated, and the retro-style locomotive that was emitting steam. When Yi Feng sighed, Zhang Chu turned around and smiled sweetly at Yi Feng, then waved and said with a smile, Xiao Feng, our carriage is separate from your little wizard who just entered school, so sister will leave first. I wish you well. Transport. After saying this, Zhang Chu walked towards one of the carriages without looking back. The moment Zhang Chu turned around and left, Yi Feng clearly saw a look of disappointment flash in Harry's eyes. Yi Feng, Katakana Middle Dot Underscore Katakana Middle Dot. Seeing the look of disappointment on Harry's face, Yi Feng fell into deep thought. By the way, this guy doesn't fall in love with Zhang Chu now, does he? But he shouldn't. He is only 11 years old. A big kid knows this. It is probably like a familiar and reliable adult who has left and feels hesitant in his heart. Emotions. Thinking of this, Yi Feng said hello to Harry and walked towards the steaming train, but just as he raised his steps, a person rushed out from the entrance behind him with a roar. If they hadn't already moved forward, after taking a few steps, he would definitely bump into them directly. I'll go, you're all young, ahem, I guess you can't blame them, because they really couldn't see what was going on inside when they came in. By the way, the setting of this entrance is a little unreasonable. How about helping them? While thinking, Yi Feng instinctively raised his hand and snapped his fingers. It was also at this time that Harry saw the illusory brick wall at the entrance flicker with light, but the light disappeared in an instant, so although Harry was confused, he could only think that he was dazzled. As for Yi Feng, he came to his senses only after he used his magical power to modify the magic at the entrance. However, when he found that the effect of the magic was exactly as he wanted, he continued to move forward with satisfaction, and Harry, he saw Yi Feng moving forward and quickly followed. Bang! Yi Feng and the others had walked less than 10 meters forward when there was a faint banging sound behind them. This made Harry, who was following Yi Feng, a little confused. However, because the sound was a little quiet, Harry just turned his head and took a look without finding anything. He turned around and continued to follow Yi Feng. As for Yi Feng who was walking in front, if Harry followed Yi Feng now, he could see the corners of his mouth turning up slightly. The modified magic effect is quite good. It will not cause harm to the people who are about to come in, but it can also ensure that they will not hit the people who have already come in. It is perfect. 
At the same time, in the train station outside platform nine and three quarters, a tall man with flaming red hair lay stretched out on the ground. Ouch, who did it? They actually turned the entrance into a wall. Percy, who was knocked off guard and knocked upside down, had a look of pain on his face. Although the collision did not cause any harm to him, and the wall seemed to be a bit soft, anyone who was suddenly hit by a pushed car would suffer severe pain in the stomach, so Percy Weasley was in pain. I couldn't get up all of a sudden. On the other side, seeing their brother's miserable state, the twins were stunned for a moment and then laughed. Wonderful, why didn't we think of this idea? If we suddenly cast a spell to turn this into a wall when someone wants to go in, the picture will be quite beautiful. As he spoke, George Weasley glanced down at his still my brother lying on the ground. No, 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 I thought of a better way. We can let someone go in first, and then cast a spell to get him stuck in the wall when he is halfway in. Then, pa, before he could finish speaking, Fred received a slap on the head, and at the same time Mrs. Weasley's words rang in his ears. You're still smiling, why don't you pull your brother up quickly? If you attract the attention of a lot of muggles, you'll be in trouble. After hearing what their mother said, the Weasley twins hurriedly walked over and pulled their brother up. While pulling his brother up, George reached out and touched the wall. Originally, George just wanted to confirm whether there was really a wall, but when he stretched out his hand, he found that his hand went directly through the wall, which meant that the magic spell had probably disappeared. Generally speaking, when magic is cast, the caster will be nearby. Now this, wall, has disappeared, which means that the caster is on the opposite side. Thinking of this, George stood up and rushed towards the entrance. The next second. Dong. Ouch. There was a crisp impact, followed by George's cry of pain. Who is teasing us? Seeing this, Mrs. Weasley also saw that something was wrong, and once she could think it was a joke by her son's classmate, but the three after another were a bit too much, so she couldn't help but speak, and she continued to speak. At the same time, he protected his daughter Ginny behind him. However, after Mrs. Weasley said this, there was no movement in the surrounding area, which made the five of them wonder whether they were too sensitive or whether the other party had really left. What's going on? Seeing that there had been no situation for a long time, Fred became a little bit uneasy. He also walked up and stretched out his hand to touch the non-existent wall. Just like George, his hand also passed through the non-existent wall, and with the experience of the previous two brothers, Fred learned wisely. He did not rush forward like George, but instead twitched. He turned back and slammed his hand towards the non-existent wall. Pa, a crisp sound sounded, and Fred felt as if he had patted a ball of slightly thin dough, but this was not what shocked him the most. What shocked him most was when his hand patted the dough, after stopping, when the hand continues to move forward due to inertia, the dough is gone again. After discovering this, Fred's eyes suddenly lit up. He was pleasantly surprised and told his family about his discovery, and during Gemini's experiments, they also discovered the properties of this wall. This non-existent wall does not prevent them from entering Station 9 and 3 quarters. What it blocks is the wizard who rushes towards Station 9 and 3 quarters. In other words, as long as you don't run in, then this magic has no effect on you. This magic is so amazing. I must find the person who cast this magic and let him teach us. After understanding what was going on, George suddenly became extremely excited. However, although they wanted to find the magician right away, they were not willing to miss out on the fun that was about to follow. Therefore, when one classmate after another was bumped into their heads, the Weasley twins would be good-hearted to remind them how to enter Station 9 and 3 quarters. On the other side, Yi Feng nodded with satisfaction when he saw through his spiritual mind the underage wizards who no longer ran but entered the nine and three quarters station through the passage in a disciplined manner. It's very dangerous to ram around in such a crowded place, especially when there are so many young wizards who have just entered school. It would be quite dangerous to bump into them. Alas, I still can't change my love of helping others. Habit, if Dumbledore finds out, he will definitely give me a helpful award. Next to him, looking at Yi Feng who was laughing inexplicably, Harry didn't know why he always felt a little cold on his back. Have you heard? It is said that the Weasley twins invented a very magical magic. This magic can build an invisible wall to block people. I've heard about it too, 
but according to them they didn't invent the magic. They were also victims. They also said that if anyone can provide information about that person, they are willing to pay a bounty of two gold galleons. Two gold galleons, isn't this too little? Just be content. In the case of the Weasley family, if they can come up with two galleons, that's a lot of money. That's right, it seems to be true. Comma. In just half an hour, the news that the Weasley twins set up a magic at the station entrance spread throughout the train. At this moment, our scapegoat, the Weasley twins, are hiding in a certain carriage and shivering to avoid those tormentors. But the carriage is only so big, so where can they hide? Therefore, they only hid for less than half an hour before they were caught. In the end, after paying a huge sum of two gold galleons to buy a lot of snacks, his classmates let them go. At the same time, a boy with flaming red hair was lying on the door panel of Yi Feng's room. He looked at Yi Feng and said, I'm sorry, can I sit here? Everyone else is full. Looking at the flaming red hair, Yi Feng smiled, because there was a black mark on the boy's face, and the clothes on his body were a bit dirty, and some traces of being pulled could even be seen vaguely. Of course, please sit down. Yi Feng did not expect that Ronald would still find Harry just like in the play. However, Ronald was much worse than in the play at this moment, and his already shabby clothes were even more torn, and all of this had a lot to do with Yi Feng. It is precisely because he slightly modified the magic effect of the entrance that Ronald was also troubled after getting on the bus with his brother. It is precisely because of this that he has not found a seat until now, and it is worse than in the play. It's even more miserable going up there. Thank you. After receiving the permission, Ronald thanked him and sat down next to Yi Feng. After sitting down, he immediately introduced himself. By the way, my name is Ronald, Ronald Weasley. Ronald's arrival gave Harry someone to chat with. As for Yi Feng, Yi Feng didn't have much to talk to Harry about. After all, Harry didn't know as much about magic as he did, and for other topics, you still expected someone to talk to him before. What topic can an 11 year old kid from a country where you are not from talk to you? Of course, although Yi Feng did not join their chat, he did not make the topic deadlocked. He also pretended to be listening, and occasionally nodded in agreement with their topics. In this cheerful atmosphere, a lot of the snacks Yi Feng took out were eaten. At this time, a figure appeared again at the door of their compartment. Hello, have you seen a toad? A man named Neville lost one. Hearing the sound, Yi Feng and the others turned to look towards the door, and then they saw a cute girl with chestnut curly hair and chestnut eyes. Although the girl is not as beautiful and stunning as Zhang Chu, or she looks a bit ordinary at first glance, but if you look closely, you will find that the girl's bones are actually quite good. As long as they really grow in the future, they can take a little care to nourish the skin. If she is fairer and tenderer, she will definitely be a school bell level girl, not much worse than Zhang Chu. Of course, what really made Yi Feng notice her was not the potential hidden under the ordinary appearance, but if he guessed correctly, this girl should be Hermione, the other protagonist in Harry Potter. There is such a sentence to describe the three protagonists in Harry Potter, that is Hermione and her two shortcomings. Although this sentence is not necessarily completely normal, it can also be seen from it that Hermione plays an important role in the trio. Therefore, when Yi Feng saw this girl with chestnut curly hair, his eyes suddenly lit up. If this is really Hermione, then the protagonist team has already been assembled. It would be great if there was a camera. While Yi Feng was thinking, Ronald, who was eating snacks, looked directly at Hermione and replied, No. Hermione was a little disappointed after hearing this answer, but just when she was about to turn around and leave, Yi Feng suddenly spoke. Perhaps, I can try, for example, like this. While Loya Feng took out his wand and tapped it lightly while chanting softly, Neville's toad, fly here. As the word, lie, fell, the top of Yi Feng's wand flashed with light, and then a huge toad fell on the floor of the carriage with a chirp after the light disappeared, and screamed in pain. Looking at the huge toad that fell directly to the ground and almost rolled his eyes, Yi Feng smiled awkwardly and said, Sorry, it's a little unfamiliar to use the flying curse for the first time. You can ask the man named Neville to come over and take a look. See if it's his toad. That's incredible. How did you do that? It's not just some simple little spell. In fact, I also thought about using this spell, but I searched through the spell's textbook for a whole school year and couldn't find it. Are your parents also wizards? 
Can you teach me this spell? Stop, 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 this beautiful lady, please don't get excited. What we need to do most now is to find the owner of this toad. As for the flying spell, you can come to me when you get to school. If you are still interested, I, I will definitely not hide my secrets. After hearing what Yi Feng said, Hermione finally calmed down. About three minutes later, Neville was led by Hermione to their carriage. Neville recognized his toad the moment he walked to the door of the compartment. He exclaimed Yi Feng couldn't help but sit up and lean back. Although he doesn't object to others keeping such a big toad as a pet, he still prefers furry pets, such as foxes that can change shape, cat ladies, etc., compared to big pimples. Because there was still space in Yi Feng's compartment and they were almost there, Hermione and Neville simply stayed in Yi Feng's compartment. Of course, she didn't forget to remind Yi Feng and the others to change into robes. When the snacks Yi Feng took out were completely eaten, and when night fell and the sky became completely dark, the Hogwarts Express also arrived at their destination, the terminal station, Hogwarts. When the train stopped, a group of young wizards couldn't wait to get out of the carriage and walk down, and Yi Feng followed Hermione and the others out of the train unhurriedly. When Yi Feng and the others got off the bus, they heard a loud voice at the front of the car shouting for their first year students to follow him. Yi Feng's eyes lit up when he saw the giant, who was almost as tall as two of them. This is not because Yi Feng recognized who the other party was, but that he smelled the scent of a large number of other animals on the other party, and the scent of these animals was quite powerful. In other words, if he guessed correctly, those scents should belong to magical animals. Hagrid has the aura of such a magical animal in his body. This is Hagrid. This is an invisible rich man. As long as I can have a good relationship with him in the future, all the materials I need will be available. When Yi Feng stared at Hagrid with burning eyes, Hagrid looked at their position with feeling, but his eyes did not fall on Yi Feng because all his eyes were attracted by Harry next to Yi Feng. It seems that even if you don't want to follow the plot, you still have to have a good relationship with Harry. With Harry here, I will still be afraid of him in the future. How about the materials that Hagrid collected from those magical animals? Chapter 11 The little wizards behind me quickly followed and got on the boat. Be careful not to fall into the lake. At Hagrid's greeting, a group of little wizards followed him to the lakeside. Yi Feng, who was following Hagrid, felt really sorry for him when he saw Hagrid leap up, lightly and land on the small boat that was just big enough for him to sit on. I sweat a lot. What surprised Yi Feng a little was that although the boat shook violently when Hagrid landed, it unexpectedly did not overturn. This made Yi Feng highly praise Hogwarts shipbuilding skills and he jumped with confidence. Arrived on the boat. Seeing Yi Feng, he jumped on the boat. The other little wizards also boldly followed him on the boat. What surprised Yi Feng a little was that Harry didn't follow him on the boat, but ran to another place with Ronald. On a small boat. But when Yi Feng saw Harry and Ronald looking at Hermione a little unnaturally, he knew that it was because the two felt that Hermione was too strong, so they chose Hermione after following Yi Feng on the boat. Another boat, instead of squeezing into one with Yi Feng and the others. Um, just when the boat was rippling slightly and getting ready to set off, Yi Feng looked back. This glance made Yi Feng couldn't help but cry out in surprise, because he saw that Neville hadn't found the boat yet and was standing on the shore anxiously looking for something. Even though Yi Feng has not read the entire series of Harry Potter, Yi Feng still knows the name of Gryffindor, and he actually admires Neville more than Harry, because Harry has always been arranged to follow in the footsteps of his parents, and he himself I also think this is right. But Neville was different, he was timid and cowardly, but for the sake of his friends, he pulled out Gryffindor's holy sword without hesitation and faced Voldemort. Although Voldemort was not that good in Yi Feng's opinion, he had no respect for the wizarding world. For people, this is a big devil who can stop children from crying. In this situation, Neville was able to stand up for his friends, proving that he had truly fearless courage. Unlike Harry, he was just trying to escape his previous environment and follow in his parents' footsteps and was arranged to catch up all the way. Of course, he actually did it when he was caught up, which was also a kind of strong courage. After all, he was told from the beginning that the scar on his forehead was left by Voldemort. Because he admired Neville, Yi Feng was willing to help this introverted and timid boy. So Yi Feng stretched out his hand and pressed lightly on the boat. The next second, 
the water was rippling and the small canoe was ready to follow Hagrid's lead boat, stopped. Neville, what are you still looking for? Why don't you come up here quickly? Neville, who was anxiously looking for an empty boat or a familiar, kind-faced wooden boat, suddenly lit up when he heard Yi Feng's voice, and when he followed the voice, his eyes suddenly lit up. He saw Yi Feng and Hermione, who were almost hidden in the darkness. Wind, Hermione, a shout with a trembling tone and a hint of crying sounded out, and Yi Feng couldn't help but shudder at this moment. It wasn't because of Neville's crying tone, but because Neville only called his name, coupled with the slightly crying vibrato, this moment reminded Yi Feng of the kind of bitter love drama where the male and female protagonists interact with each other when parting or dying. The scene of calling each other's name. Looking at Neville, who had tears in his eyes, Yi Feng resisted the urge to turn around and leave. After Neville got on their boat, he immediately said, Neville, you can call me Yi Feng, Brother Feng or Xiao Feng from now on. It's okay, but please don't call me Feng again, okay? Why? Dot why? Is this your custom there? Just think of it as our habit. As he spoke, Yi Feng gently put his hand on the edge of the canoe, and the next second Yi Feng put his hand on the canoe, their boat rippled. Landing waves caught up behind it at a faster speed than the other boats. The boat had already set off, and Neville and the others did not continue to ask Yi Feng this question. At the same time, they were on the other side of the lake. As that, the little wizard that Dumbledore adopted from China. Their small wooden boat, seeing that the small boat that had fallen behind and seemed to have no power to move quickly caught up with the large group, he looked at this with a telescope on the other side of the lake. The, cat girl, Minerva McGonagall, the vice principal next to her, had a look of astonishment on her face. As soon as vice principal Minerva McGonagall finished speaking, a white figure appeared from behind her and walked to her side. When the white figure followed Vice Principal Minerva McGonagall's gaze and saw Yi Feng and the others, her eyes there was also a strong look of astonishment. As expected of a little wizard from that mysterious ancient country, even I can't figure out what the magic he uses is. It seems that Hogwarts will become quite interesting in the future, and our little wizards will not be lonely in the future. After saying this, Dumbledore turned around and walked into the auditorium, handing it back to Vice Principal Minerva McGonagall. On the other side, he was curiously looking down at the dark lake outside the boat. He looked up in the direction of the door of the auditorium with some feeling. However, Yi Feng withdrew his gaze after just one glance, because whether it was Dumbledore or the cat lady, Minerva. McGonagall was far less attractive to him than what was following them in the lake right now. If Yi Feng guessed correctly, what they were crossing now should be called the Black Lake, and under normal circumstances, approaching the Black Lake in the Forbidden Forest was strictly prohibited. There is only one reason why there is such a school rule and it is especially emphasized to the young wizards who have just entered school, and that is that these two places are really too dangerous for them. There are a large number of magical animals in the Forbidden Forest. This is something that many fans of Hamburg and even those who are not fans of Hamburg know. The reason why the Black Lake is not allowed to approach is also the same, but the ones in the Forbidden Forest are all kinds of land animals. Magical animals, and in the Black Lake are all kinds of, seafood. Gulu. Thinking of this, Yi Feng couldn't help but swallowed. This made Hermione, who was sitting opposite him, very puzzled, because she really couldn't understand why Yi Feng was so curious about this dark lake, and after seeing such after a long time, he swallowed his saliva. Hermione dared to use her IQ to guarantee that the saliva Yi Feng swallowed just now was definitely not due to dry mouth or anything. It was definitely because she was hungry and wanted to eat, because she had seen this similar look, expression, and movements more than once, and right on the train. The Ronald who was on the train looked almost the same when he saw the snacks in front of Yi Feng, that is to say. Thinking of this, Hermione also followed Yi Feng's gaze and looked over. Unfortunately, Without night vision, all she could see was the dark lake. However, Hermione was worthy of being the wise person in Harry's world. She only moved her eyes slightly. A good idea came to mind. Feng, is there anything delicious in the lake? Yi Feng, who was imagining various recipes, after hearing Hermione's words, subconsciously replied, Yes, it's such a big squid cuttlefish. If you catch it, save it and make it into a sizzling squid and then sprinkle it with garlic. Yes, chili noodles. As he spoke, Yi Feng couldn't help but sip the saliva that flowed to the corner of his mouth, 
and the big squid that followed their small wooden boat seemed to hear and understand Yi Feng's words. His huge body couldn't help but tremble, and then quickly dived to the bottom of the lake. Disappear. Seeing the big squid disappear, Yi Feng withdrew his gaze with a little pity and sighed. It's a pity that I didn't bring my fishing rod, otherwise I would have lost my midnight snack. But it doesn't matter, I will make another one when I have time. Jen, don't worry about the big squid, I will catch it soon and rescue you ashore. The night breeze blew gently, and as the small wooden boat moved forward, the light mist on the lake and mountains slowly blew away, and the brightly lit main building of Hogwarts College appeared in front of Yi Feng and the others on the lake shore in the distance. Seeing the sudden appearance of the brightly lit spire, castle group, even Yi Feng felt a slight sense of shock, while the little wizards on other ships were even more shocked and opened their mouths wide. Perhaps this is why Hogwarts has always retained the tradition of letting newly admitted little wizards cross the Black Lake in a small canoe. This scene of suddenly seeing the brightly lit main building of Hogwarts in the dark is really shocking. People's hearts. Yi Feng didn't know whether the scene in front of him left a deep impression on these young wizards, but it did leave a deep impression on him. Perhaps many years later, the memory of Hogwarts will slowly fade away. But this scene will still remain fresh in his memory even after many years. Amid the shock of all the new life, the boat slowly docked, and when the wooden boat docked, the little wizards became lively again. This was not because I was excited about arriving at my destination, but because after disembarking from the boat, the small pier was pitch black without any lights, and there was only a winding path leading to the college. If it were during the day, it might be nothing, but this was night, so even if it wasn't raining, it would still be difficult to walk on such a grassy path with an oil lamp that could only illuminate one or two meters in front of you. By the way, is Hogwarts house so poor? Why can't we build a better road leading to the school? Besides, even if we don't have money to build a road, we can always afford to install a few more lights, right? Yi Feng boarded the shore. Hermione stretched out her hand to support her as she jumped down, her foot slipped and she almost fell into the water. She couldn't help but complain. Thanks. Hermione, who was in shock as Yi Feng supported her, thanked her and then said, I have read the history of Hogwarts. It is said that this is to allow the newly admitted little wizards to experience the four founders of Hogwarts. It's so difficult, so every student is asked to walk through the same path they took when they enter school. Although I don't know how hard it was for them back then, I do feel how difficult it was. While Hermione was complaining, Neville also successfully got off the boat and landed. Although Yi Feng and the others were following behind, they were still relatively behind, so by the time they got off the boat, the others were already waiting on the shore. So Hagrid took a quick look and saw that no one was left behind, then he held an oil lamp and loudly alerted the shore, little wizard. If the shore is slippery, be careful to keep up. Don't fall behind. After saying that, Hagrid turned around and walked forward along the path without caring about anyone. Although the little wizards were a little panicked when they saw this, they all hurried to follow. However, only a small number of them held oil lamps in their hands, so many of them couldn't see clearly where they stood. If it was just like this, then it would be okay to follow the lead and walk slowly, but the person leading the way was Hagrid. The newly admitted little wizards are generally 11 years old. Even those who are relatively well-developed at this age are usually only 1.34 meters tall. But what about Hagrid? He is quite tall among adults. So, when Hagrid strode forward, even Harry who was following him had to jog occasionally to keep up, which made the already panicked little wizard even more panicked. Ah, suddenly, there was a miserable scream in the team. When Yi Feng followed the scream and looked over, he immediately became happy, because in the dark crowd, a golden man with a big back was lying on the ground, and looking at the wizard robe on his body. Judging from the footprints, the reason why he screamed was not simply because he fell. And when Yi Feng saw Ronald speeding up to catch up with Harry in the darkness, a glimmer of understanding emerged in his heart. According to Ronald's character, it's not enough to secretly push Malfoy down, but it's still very possible to take a stab at seeing him fall, and maybe. While thinking, Yi Feng glanced at Harry, whose heartbeat was a little fast and his breathing was a little rapid. It was obvious that he had just done something exciting. For example, when you pass by someone because it's too dark and you can't see clearly, and you don't have a good impression of that person, you don't have time to help him, but you accidentally touch him or something. Yi Feng had night vision, 
so he was not frightened and instead ate the melon happily. However, this sudden change also shocked Hermione who could not see next to him. In addition, she had just she almost fell into the water and was still a little scared, so she was so frightened that she instinctively grabbed Yi Feng's robe. Feeling that his clothes were being grabbed, Yi Feng turned around and saw that it was Hermione. Yi Feng knew that she must have been frightened, so he took out his wand. Lumos, following the magic spell from Yi Feng's mouth, a bright light lit up from the top of the wand in Yi Feng's hand, illuminating the road several meters in front of them. This scene not only made Hermione, who was holding Yi Feng's wizard robe afraid of falling, as soon as their eyes lit up, the other little wizards nearby couldn't help but exclaimed, and after nodding their thanks to Yi Feng, they quickened their pace and chased after Hagrid's back. Actually, I also, previewed, our courses for this year carefully before school started, so I know a few little magic spells, which makes sense. It makes sense, although she was surprised, Hermione was relieved when she thought that she had also learned several small magic tricks. However, at the same time she was relieved, she also had an idea of not admitting defeat. She felt that she had not worked hard enough. But now is not the time to think about this, they have to quickly follow the team. With Yi Feng's fluorescent light illuminating the road ahead, Yi Feng and the others were much faster. Even though they were at the back of the team at the beginning, they quickly caught up with Hagrid. Even though the road was really hard to walk, Yi Feng's fluorescent lighting made them go much faster, so it didn't take long for them to follow Hagrid out of the winding path and enter the brightly lit college. All the little wizards were very excited looking at this brightly lit building. Yi Feng was also very excited, because soon he would see the famous sorting hat and the ghosts wandering around the academy. I don't know if the sorting hat can really peek into a person's thoughts and identify a person's character. Speaking of which, should I let go of the defense of consciousness see a little later? Otherwise, the sorting hat won't be able to detect anything, and will it think I'm a Death Eater sneaking in? In Yi Feng's thinking, they we came to a door at the end of the stairs, and in the middle of the door stood an old woman wearing a pointed wizard hat. The moment Yi Feng saw this old lady, his eyes suddenly lit up. Cat, ahem, transformation is indeed magical, but I don't know if it can only transform into half. After all, cat ears are the cat girl's true form. If it can, Yi Feng glanced at Hermione next to him while thinking to himself. It's a pity that it's not golden, but the brown-haired kitten girl doesn't seem to be. On the issue of whether the transformation spell can only be used in half and appear in the form of half human and half beast, Yi Feng temporarily remained silent because the only cat lady in Hogwarts was looking at him with a puzzled look. Welcome to Hogwarts. Vice Principal Minerva McGonagall stared at Yi Feng for about two seconds before she turned back and looked at a group of young wizards. Okay, in a while you will pass through these doors and gather with other students. But before you can take your seats, you must be assigned to a college. There are Gryffindor, Slytherin, Hufflepuff, and Ravenclaw. Each of these colleges has its own characteristics. During your time at school, the college is like your home, and your classmates are like your family. If you perform well, the college will receive extra points. If you violate school rules or do poorly, points will be deducted. At the end of the year, whichever house has the most points will win the house cup. I hope you all perform well. All right, the sorting ceremony will begin in a moment. Come in with me. After saying this, Vice Principal Minerva McGonagall turned and walked towards the door. Just when Yi Feng and the others were about to leave, a man held up his blonde hair. The little boy with his slicked back hair and a proud expression took the first step forward. It seems they were right what they said on the train. Harry Potter has indeed come to Hogwarts. As soon as the name Harry Potter came out, the little wizards who didn't know that Harry was in the team immediately started talking in an uproar. However, Yi Feng, who had already known that Harry was coming and had no interest in, intrigue, with them, didn't seem to hear this. Normally, he still raised his legs and walked behind the vice principal and walked inside. Hermione, who was still a little interested in hearing the gossip, saw that Yi Feng had left, so she had no choice but to give up the idea of continuing to listen to the gossip and quickly followed. When Neville saw Yi Feng and Hermione leaving, he originally wanted to follow them, but when he raised his legs, he found that everyone else was standing still. Only Yi Feng and Hermione were walking forward rather abruptly. Neville was already quite timid and cowardly. When he saw this situation, he was frightened and stopped immediately. 
At this time, when others saw that Yi Feng and Hermione actually ignored the famous Harry Potter, they immediately turned their attention to them. They also wanted to know who these two were. However, when they looked at Yi Feng and Hermione carefully, they found nothing surprising. No one even knew them. In other words, they or their parents were not magic at all. Well known figures in the world. Seeing that Yi Feng and Hermione were not surprised, all the young wizards turned their attention back. Malfoy, who was interrupted, felt that he had been ignored. This made the man who always considered himself a pure blood noble think very highly of himself. Malfoy felt extremely insulted, so he left Harry and Ronald in front of him and strode after Yi Feng and Hermione. Stop, Malfoy's angry voice came from behind, but Yi Feng seemed not to have heard it, because he was completely attracted by the following sorting ceremony. He also wanted to know whether the sorting hat could really peek into a person's heart, idea. Of course, what he wants to know most is whether the sorting hat can break through his spiritual defense and spy on his thoughts. If not, then should he let go of his spiritual defense a little. Otherwise, will the sorting hat not be able to spy on anything? Think of him as a stone or a death eater or something. Yi Feng pretended not to hear it. Hermione turned around when she heard it. However, seeing that Yi Feng had no intention of stopping, she turned her head back and continued to move forward. After all, compared to fighting with others, she still looked at what was in front of her. Yi Feng, who had just started school and had mastered several kinds of magic before officially starting classes, was even more interested. Yi Feng and Hermione ignored him again, which completely angered Malfoy. So he took out his wand and pointed it at Yi Feng and shouted loudly, Are you too deaf? Stop. This time Yi Feng finally stopped and turned to look at Malfoy. When he saw Malfoy actually taking out his wand, he immediately laughed. Do you want to duel me? But with all due respect, can you really use the wand in your hand that you just bought and hasn't warmed up to release magic? Oh. By the way, I would like to remind you that the sorting ceremony is about to begin. Are you sure you want to continue to pester Principal Dumbledore to wait for you? Malfoy, who was still angry, and the young wizard who was looking excited and wanted to watch the fun, their expressions changed slightly when they heard Yi Feng's words. Although Dumbledore is just an ordinary old man, in the player in Yi Feng's eyes, in the magical world Dumbledore actually represents authority and unparalleled strength, so even Malfoy, who thinks he is extraordinary, hears Dumbledore's name also forced him to let go of his pride. Malfoy, who was frightened by Yi Feng's words, angrily passed Yi Feng and walked quickly inside. Upon seeing this, Yi Feng smiled and nodded at Harry before turning around and walking inside. Vice Principal Minerva McGonagall, who was walking at the front and deliberately slowed down her pace while keeping an eye on what was going on behind her, sped up when she saw the little wizards following them. Judging from her thoughtful expression, she just let Mal go on purpose. Fu is messy, and as for what the purpose is, perhaps only she or Dumbledore knows. No more quarreling, the little wizards who followed the Vice Principal Minerva McGonagall quickly arrived at the auditorium. After entering the auditorium, Yi Feng and the others discovered that except for them, everyone else including Dumbledore had already arrived, and they were all in order. They all sat down at the dining table and waited. However, what attracted them most in the auditorium was not the students who had been waiting, nor the motionless candles floating in the air, but the ever-changing night sky. This is not the real night sky, it is the ceiling that has been transformed by magic. I read about it in. Perhaps seeing the confusion in Yi Feng's eyes, Hermione was a little excited, explained. It's a very good magic, but it's a pity. It would be great if this was a real night sky. The sun can come in, but the wind and rain can't. I think that would be cooler. Dumbledore, who was standing on the stage, frowned slightly when he heard the conversation between Yi Feng and Hermione. A pick, but he didn't say anything because Harry also came in. Although Dumbledore was the headmaster, he didn't talk too much nonsense. He only mentioned some taboos, such as not being able to enter the Forbidden Forest, and then announced the start of the sorting ceremony. Students who have read their names, come to the front, I will put the sorting hat on your head, and then determine the college you want to go to. Coming, coming, she's coming. As the protagonist of the so-called flowing water, the iron-clad Hannah, I declare that the winner of the Iron Throne of the Magical World is, Hannah Abbott. 
Under Yi Fang's excited and expectant eyes, Vice Principal Minerva McGonagall read out the much anticipated name. Hannah Abbott, Hufflepuff, oh. As soon as the Sorting Hat's words came out, there was a huge cheer from Hufflepuff College, and among the cheers, the Lord of the Iron Throne, Hannah Abbott, walked towards them with a smile and sat down at the long table over there. As each name was read out, cheers rose one after another, and when the name Hermione Granger rang out, Yi Feng felt his robe being tugged. Don't be nervous, just treat it as an ordinary old hat. Maybe Yi Feng's comfort had an effect, or maybe Hermione calmed down. In short, after Yi Feng finished speaking, Hermione took a deep breath and walked out and sat on the chair next to the deputy principal Minerva McGonagall. A little different from others, after Hermione put on the hat, the sorting hat was silent for a while, and Yi Feng, who had a sense of consciousness, felt that Hermione's consciousness was communicating with the sorting hat, and when the two stopped communicating, the sorting hat also a decision was made. Griffman, Findo, Yi Feng, N airy summation opening parenthesis D no, no. What did I just, here, it spilled the beans, he definitely spilled the beans, it just said Gryffindor. Although Yi Feng didn't speak very loudly, he had no intention of hiding it, so his voice was not quiet. People nearby heard it, including Dumbledore who was sitting at the top, because Dumbledore raised his eyebrows when Yi Feng said this. Dumbledore heard it, and the deputy headmaster and the sorting hat who were closer also heard it, so the next second the sorting hat, which had not been removed from Hermione's head, screamed loudly. No, I didn't say that. You must have heard wrong. I never said Gryffindor. The entire wizarding world knows that I, the sorting hat, am the most honest and never lie. Just because you never lie, you are most likely to lie, because once a person who never lies lies, no one will think that he has lied. Sorting hat. What he said makes sense, and I can't refute it. No one expected that Yi Feng silenced the sorting hat with just one sentence. In order to avoid the silence, Vice Principal Minerva said, maybe you misheard the sorting hat because it was vague. After all, it is very old and is in tatters. It sucks, it's normal to be a little vague. Okay, this topic is over, next one. HMPH, no need to read your name, it's just this little naughty thing. I want to see which house you will be assigned to. Is it Slyklin? or Ravenclaw, or, Azkaban. Azkaban, he must be sent to Azkaban. The moment the sorting hat was picked up by Vice Principal Minerva and placed on Yi Feng's head, the sorting hat started shouting, and as soon as the name Azkaban came out, everyone except some little wizards who really knew nothing about it his face suddenly changed. Mr. Sorting Hat, are you really sure you want to send me to Azkaban? To everyone's surprise, Yi Feng did not panic when he heard that the sorting hat was going to send him to Azkaban, not angry but a little expectant. Yes, that's the expectation. In fact, although Yi Feng has been practicing as an immortal for ten years and has never fully used his strength, even he himself does not know how strong he is, but in fact, he has never seriously seen spirits such as soul ghosts. Of course, when someone died in the village, he still saw the souls of those people, but their souls quickly disappeared out of thin air, as if the souls directly entered another dimension after leaving the body, even if he had already practiced Xiao Yu as a result, the Yuan Shen has been able to wander around in the daytime and still can't find where they went. Therefore, if he could see real ghosts or study so-called death eaters, soul eaters, etc., he would not refuse. Therefore, when Yi Feng heard that he was going to be assigned to As by the Sorting Hat, Yi Feng really wasn't worried when he was in Kaban. The reason why the Sorting Hat wanted to sort him into Azkaban was not because of what he said before or because the Sorting Hat couldn't detect his thoughts at all, because just now he didn't completely calm down and instead waited for a while. After realizing that the Sorting Hat was really unable to probe his thoughts, he deliberately let go of his defenses. The reason why the Sorting Hat reacted so hugely may be that Yi Feng's little idea just now scared it. Although he knew the reason and was not opposed to going to Azkaban, Azkaban can go to Hogwarts at any time but not at any time. Si Yi Feng coughed lightly and defended. The Sorting Hat sir, can you tell me why I was assigned to Azkaban? Because you are a devil. You actually want to pull my soul out of my body. Sure enough, this is the reason, but this is really a misunderstanding. Let me quibble. After thinking about it, Yi Feng said directly, Mr. Sorting Hat, you misunderstood. I did not want to remove your soul from your body. 
I just think it's a bit wasteful and overqualified to use your talents to divide the schools for young wizards. Really, then tell me. Yi Feng's little flattery made the sorting hat feel a lot more comfortable instantly, and his tone softened. Yi Feng glanced at Dumbledore above. Dumbledore saw the questioning look in Yi Feng's eyes and nodded to indicate that he could speak out his thoughts boldly, and Yi Feng was instantly reassured after accepting Dumbledore's instructions. Actually, my idea is not to extract Mr. Sorting Hat's soul, but to recreate a body for you, Mr. Sorting Hat, and place it on the gate of Hogwarts. Of course, Yi Feng will definitely not say that after building this thing, he still needs to extract the soul of the Sorting Hat from the Sorting Hat and stuff it into the built thing. Imagine there is such a magical thing. As long as someone or something passes through it, all the hidden conspiracies and evils will be discovered. No matter how deeply hidden the Death Eaters are, as long as they pass through this door, they will reveal their true colors. If this magical object is really created, then Hogwarts will be able to keep out all dangers, and Mr. Sorting Hat, you can distinguish good from evil and see through people's hearts. I think there is no one else who can compare with you. It's more suitable for this location. After saying this, Yi Feng paused for a moment, tilted his head and looked at the sorting hat expectantly. He waited for about two seconds before continuing to speak. Mr. Sorting Hat, what do you think of this proposal? Perhaps the sorting hat was also shocked by Yi Feng's amazing proposal, because if such a magical instrument could really be created, then a big earthquake would occur in the entire magical world, and those Death Eaters who were hiding deeply would all they will be found one by one. Dumbledore, who was sitting at the top, looked confused when Yi Feng made this suggestion. When Yi Feng finished speaking, he sighed slightly and said kindly, Mr. Feng Yi, what do you think this magical thing should be called? Good name. Yi Feng, who wanted to trick the sorting hat into agreeing, didn't see the change in Dumbledore's expression just now, so he immediately said loudly, I decided to name this great item, the security gate. Dumbledore, I shouldn't have expectations from you. Fung, Mr. Yi, your suggestion is very good. My suggestion is not to suggest it again in the future. After saying this, Dumbledore felt that he could not dissipate the student's interest in exploration, so he paused and explained again. The Ministry of Magic has clear restrictions on the use of items from the Muggle world, so Mr. Yi Fung, your suggestion is very good, but the law doesn't allow it. Dumbledore's decision completely blocked Yi Feng's proposal. Of course, he was not actually assigned to Azkaban. Instead, he asked the Sorting Hat to test him again to see which academy he was suitable for. Oh, little guy, I admit that I wrongly blamed you just now. Bravery, perseverance, wisdom, integrity, loyalty. God, I just wanted to assign such a good boy with so many beautiful qualities to Azkaban. I am really guilty. Good boy, in order to make up for my sins, I decided to let you choose the college you like. Yi Feng. Katakana middle dot he katakana middle dot. Although he had just polished it a bit when he opened a crack in his consciousness so that the sorting hat could peek into some of his thoughts, the sorting hat wouldn't do such a thing, right? Isn't it because he doesn't know which college I should be assigned to, so he throws this problem back to me? But that's not right. Even if he doesn't know, we can discuss it. Ahem. Thinking of this, Yi Feng coughed slightly in embarrassment. It seemed that there was indeed a faint ray of consciousness that wanted to enter his sea of consciousness along the gap he opened to transmit some information, but at the time he thought it was Voldemort or something who wanted to find out his thoughts or something like that, so he subconsciously used the power of his divine consciousness to smash it into pieces. Gryffindor, after all, my good friend is also in Gryffindor. Oh, as soon as Yi Feng's choice came out, a huge cheer erupted from where Gryffindor was sitting. While the Gryffindor crowd cheered, there was a beautiful figure in the Ravenclaw crowd whose expression darkened, but then the exquisite figure the little face once again bloomed into a bright smile. Although, younger brother, didn't choose to go to the same school as me, it's very gratifying that he can make friends with people of the same age so quickly. I just didn't expect that my cheap brother would be so good with women. I definitely wouldn't weak, it seems that as a sister, I have to keep a check on him. Yi Feng who was walking quickly to the long table of Gryffindor and Fendo, seemed to feel something and glanced around, and at a glance he saw the girl who still stood out even among the crowd wearing the same black robe. Seeing the bright smile of the sister, Yi Fengyi, his mouth moved slightly but did not make a sound. 
Zhang Chu in the crowd obviously understood Yi Fang's mouth. So she blushed slightly and looked back at Yi Fang. Seeing Zhang Chu's pretty face blushing and lowering her head, Yi Fang scratched his head in confusion, because he just asked Zhang Chu to wait for him, and he would go find her to play or something when he was free. Yi Fang just doubted it for a moment and put it behind him. After all, you can't let an old single who doesn't even have much experience communicating with girls become reborn and immediately become emotionally intelligent. Not long after Yi Fang sat down, it was Harry's turn. When Harry Potter's name was read out by Vice Principal Minerva, the entire lobby fell silent for an instant, but the next second there was a louder discussion than before, and almost all the discussions in the hall were related to Harry Potter. Of. Uh. Is he Harry Potter? There doesn't seem to be anything special about him. Do you think he really has a Z-shaped scar on his forehead? It should be true. It's said in the magic world. I don't know which house he will be assigned to, but judging from his appearance, he shouldn't be Ravenclaw or Slytherin, but most likely Gryffindor or Hufflepuff. I think it must be Gryffindor. After all, his parents are Gryffindors. Comma. The sound caused by the huge discussion shook the burning candles, and Dumbledore saw Harry stop and not sit on the chair because of the huge discussion, coughed slightly, and said, Okay, discussion that's it. Harry, don't worry, just come up and sit on the chair. Hearing Dumbledore's words, Harry instantly felt relieved. He sat on the chair according to Dumbledore's instructions. Vice Principal Minerva picked up the sorting hat and placed it on Harry's head as he sat on the chair. Gryffindor. As the name Gryffindor rang out, bursts of cheers sounded louder than Yi Fang's just now. The corners of Malfoy's mouth turned up slightly, because in his opinion, Harry was more popular than Yi Fang, and Yi Fang should be quite popular. It's better to be unhappy or even hate Harry. However, when Malfoy turned his attention to Yi Fang, who had already sat down, he almost exploded with anger, because at this moment, Yi Feng was chatting with Hermione without anyone else, without even raising his head, as if the cheers all around him could not stop. There is generally no jealousy or envy as he expected. No, he must have just not shown it. He must have regarded Harry as a competitor in his heart. When he said this, Malfoy's eyes suddenly lit up and he murmured excitedly, yes, it must be such. The reason why he didn't look at Harry and pretended to chat with that girl must be to hide his emotions. He must be furious now, right? Humph, what qualifications does a mudblood have to be my opponent? Harry Potter is already enough. It seems that I will have to win over Harry Potter later, so that I won't have to deal with that hateful guy. Draco Malfoy. Malfoy heard his name as soon as he finished speaking. He was very happy at the moment, and he believed that he would definitely be sorted into Slytherin, so he walked up confidently. Look, it's that annoying guy. I hope he won't be assigned to Gryffindor. When Malfoy walked up, Hermione, who was sitting next to Yi Feng, pushed Yi Feng in motion for him to look towards the stage. PFF. As soon as Hermione finished speaking, Yi Feng couldn't help laughing, because before the sorting hat in the hands of Vice Principal Minerva was placed on Malfoy's head, the sorting hat shouted out the name Slytherin loudly and urgently, just like Malfoy. It looked like there was something dirty on Fu's head. Initially, Hermione and Harry didn't think anything was wrong, but when Yi Feng laughed out loud, they felt a little bit better. After Ronald figured it out, he laughed even louder than Yi Feng. After all, these two guys are naturally incompatible. Deal with. The sorting had ended without any incident, and as Dumbledore knocked on the cup on the table to announce the start of the banquet, sumptuous food suddenly appeared on the table. Although Yi Feng had eaten a lot of delicious food in the past, it was considered good to be full in this era in China, so he couldn't help but swallow when he saw so many things on the table. I haven't had such a sumptuous dinner in a long time. Let's finish eating first. Seeing Yi Feng immersed in eating, Harry and the others' appetites also increased. When they were about to eat, Yi Feng suddenly put down the knife and fork he was not used to, because he felt a special power. Ah, suddenly, Ronald screamed and threw the chicken legs in his hand, and then a transparent head emerged from the pile of food. Hello, how are you? Ghost, ghost, Yi Feng. Principal Dumbledore, can I, touch, these ghosts? Looking at the transparent ghosts emerging from the pile of food, Yi Feng's eyes were filled with excitement instead of fear. This was not the first time that Yi Feng had seen the soul. He had seen the real soul one month after he officially entered the path of cultivating immortality and gained his first ray of immortal power. 
Yi Feng still remembered that when he cultivated the first ray of immortal power and obtained the spiritual enlightenment method, he couldn't wait to open his eyes but saw nothing. However, only a month later, he saw a man standing on the side of the road on the way home from school without any warning, the picture of looking longingly at the illusory figure in a certain direction. However, whether it was the accidental encounter, or the fact that he gradually became bolder later on, he deliberately went to the houses where old people died and carefully studied them, but he could not find out where those souls ended up, and none of them stayed for more than a day, time, and will not appear again after disappearing. Therefore, Yi Feng was very excited when he knew that there was Hogwarts in this world. After all, there was not only magic here, but also a variety of magical items, and even ghosts that he could not find any trace of. Perhaps these ghosts in Hogwarts can give me a satisfactory answer, so. Snapped. Just when the ghost that emerged from under the table was halfway out and about to fly away, a yellow talisman was slapped on his body. This made the ghost who had succeeded in the prank and was about to leave with a smile on his face suddenly freeze. Living. A. Hey, Yi Feng, why can you meet these ghosts? And what is that thing you slapped on him? Hermione, who was full of curiosity, stretched out her white hands to uncover the talisman affixed to the ghosts as she spoke. Paper can also be said to be a talisman. Don't want. Ah. Bump. Yi Feng. Katakana middle dot underscore katakana middle dot no. Before Yi Feng could say the word, touch, the talisman was taken off by Hermione, and the moment the talisman was taken off, a piercing scream suddenly sounded, and the ghost who was almost frightened to death by the talisman screamed. Disappeared into the ceiling at an extremely fast speed. Hermione. Hollow square. Yes, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have touched your things without your consent, but it's actually very rude to use such things to immobilize Mr. Ghost. Hermione's voice became lower and lower after speaking, and the little head also slowly lowered. Seeing this, Yi Feng sighed slightly and comforted. It's okay, I didn't tell you clearly in advance. And you're right, I was too excited and used the talisman to kill Mr. Ghost without his consent. Stay still, I'll go apologize to Mr. Ghost in a moment. Dumbledore, who had walked behind Yi Feng and his eyes became extremely solemn, flashed with relief when he heard Yi Feng's words, but he still said, Classmate Yi Feng, it's good that you have such an idea. This time I I forgive your recklessness, and I hope it won't happen again. Also, I will keep this fortune for you. Do you have any objections? Yi Feng said the word, talisman, directly in Chinese, so Dumbledore's accent was a little strange when he recited it. Yi Feng naturally had no objection to Dumbledore's suggestion. After all, although it was the ghost prank that really scared Ronald, and he had asked Dumbledore for permission before taking action, these ghosts were not fixed assets of Hogwarts, they also owned them. Self-aware living being. Therefore, Yi Fang's direct action of immobilizing people with talismans was indeed a bit excessive, but it was hard to say that there was any crime or anything like that. After all, he just immobilized the ghost, and he didn't have time to do anything. As for apologizing, Yi Feng glanced around, not to mention the ghosts who had been affixed with talismans by him just now, most of those who had not been affixed with talismans have now fled. Even one or two who are more courageous are currently floating high near the dome and far away from him. There is a posture of running away if the situation goes slightly wrong. Dumbledore also saw this situation, but he had nothing to do. After all, Yi Feng was only an 11-year-old child, so he couldn't say anything. He could only suggest that Yi Feng should not do such things in the future. Of course, after warning Yi Feng not to put talismans on ghosts in the academy at will, Dumbledore also asked the question he was most concerned about, which was where Yi Feng got this talisman that could immobilize ghosts. Faced with Dumbledore's question, Yi Feng only thought for a second and gave an almost standard answer. I bought this talisman from a Taoist temple near our home. It cost me half a month's pocket money. Hearing Yi Feng's answer, Dumbledore looked thoughtful. After all, that country is quite mysterious even in the magical world, so it is normal to have some similar magic props. After getting the answer he wanted, Dumbledore nodded and turned back. Seeing this, Yi Feng breathed a sigh of relief and became excited at the same time. Since the spirit-binding talisman I drew myself can be used, doesn't it mean that other talismans can also be used? Yes, the talisman that immobilized the ghost just now was drawn by Yi Feng himself, but because he didn't have much pocket money, 
he could only buy a little yellow paper, cinnabar and the like, so even though he got it from the system there are many ways to draw talismans, but due to lack of materials for practice, he himself does not know whether the talismans he drew are useful. Of course, now that the most basic spirit binding talisman has been proven to be useful, there will naturally be no problem with other talismans. The only problem now is the materials for drawing talismans. After all, the drawing of talismans is not just yellow paper and cinnabar. Some talismans need to be added. Other things. Comma. Yi Feng, the ghost running around and playing pranks in the original drama, was no longer a problem, and without the ghost's pranks, the little wizards of the same class as Yi Feng could continue to enjoy their feast. After this incident, there was no more trouble. After eating and drinking, their prefect led them back to the lounge. On the stairs leading to the lounge, their prefect warned them that although this was the closest place to the lounge, it's a fast path, but the stairs here may move at any time, so be careful to remember the path you've taken and don't get lost. After a few minutes of guidance from the prefect, Yi Feng and the others successfully arrived in front of a painting of a fat woman. Is this the, legendary, fat lady? But I doubt that a painting can really stop the wizard. Although Yi Feng was a little doubtful of the strength of the painting, he never thought of trying it. And after the prefect read the command and led them into the common room, and after introducing various situations and precautions, they found their respective dormitories and beds and prepared to rest. Yi Feng was not assigned to the same dormitory as Harry and the others like the protagonists of those fan fictions. However, neither of them wanted to talk, so he fell asleep quickly. After all, classes would officially start tomorrow. As for Yi Feng, he is looking forward to tomorrow's class. After all, the first class is the transformation class. If his idea can really be realized, there may be more animagus in the magic world. The next morning, Yi Feng still opened his star-like eyes before the sun rose as always, and at this time, the others in the same dormitory were still sleeping soundly. After getting up, Yi Feng walked to the window and fed some meat to his little owl, which had all grown its needle feathers and was about to grow feathers. Then he went to wash up as usual. By the time Yi Feng finished washing, the sun was about to rise. It got up, but few people in Hogwarts still got up. Yi Feng is not someone who likes to disturb others, so after he got up, he did not intend to go out for his daily breath breathing. Instead, he gently opened the doors and windows. However, after opening the doors and windows, Yi Feng discovered something rather embarrassing, matter. Although Hogwarts is very large, the windows of the dormitories where students live will not be blocked, but the direction of the openings must be different. Unfortunately, the dormitory where Yi Feng lives opens in a direction that cannot be seen. On the sunny side. Ahem, this is a bit embarrassing. It seems. As he spoke, Yi Feng suddenly noticed that his dormitory happened to be on the top floor, which meant that he could actually go out from the window and climb to the top of the building. Although the buildings in Hogwarts are steeple-shaped, and the slopes are steep, it is generally impossible to climb up, but Yi Feng is not an ordinary person, so after a few seconds, Yi Feng stood on the towering spire. Superior. Suck. As the sun rose, Yi Feng opened his mouth slightly and took a long breath in front of the rising sun. As Yi Feng took this breath into his lungs, the purple light in his eyes flashed away. Waiting the sun completely jumped out of the mountains, and Yi Feng immediately stopped breathing and closed his mouth. Gulu. As his throat moved slightly, Yi Feng used the method of swallowing purple energy to swallow the collected purple energy, and then let out a long breath. Of course, in order to avoid the last situation happening again this time, Yi Feng slowed down a little when he exhaled, so it looked like he was just exhaling a long white mist. At the same time, Dumbledore, who finally summoned Harry Potter to Hogwarts, stretched and opened the window to get some fresh air. Today's weather must be very. Dumbledore. Katakana middle dot underscore katakana middle dot. N airy summation opening parenthesis D no, no. Yi Feng. Sigma, Su degree D degree winking face, Su. Headmaster Dumbledore. Good morning. Yi Feng did not expect that Dumbledore would actually open the window at this time, nor did he expect that the roof of the house he was on was shorter than Dumbledore's, so the roof was just on the same level as the window of Dumbledore's room. He ran to the roof this was seen immediately. Of course, although it was a bit surprising, Yi Feng didn't think anything was wrong. After all, both immortal cultivators and wizards can fly. Yi Feng has been running to high places in recent years, so he didn't even realize that he was running. 
There was nothing wrong with going to the roof and he greeted Dumbledore cordially. Yi Feng didn't think anything was wrong, but Dumbledore opposite him was almost scared to death, because this was at a height of dozens of meters. If he fell, he could basically have an owl deliver a message to Yi Feng's parents for dinner. Dumbledore was frightened without any hesitation. He directly took out the wand in his hand and cast a levitating spell on Yi Feng. When Dumbledore took out the wand, the delicate sword pendant on Yi Feng's waist trembled slightly, but it stopped for a moment. After seeing Dumbledore taking out the wand, Yi Feng was about to reach out for the wand, but when Dumbledore after the magic was cast, Yi Feng stopped because he knew that Dumbledore had no ill intentions towards him. Sure enough, the moment Yi Feng was hit by Dumbledore's magic, he felt himself floating up uncontrollably. A look of surprise flashed in Dumbledore's eyes when he saw Yi Feng pulling out his wand. Because of this kind of reaction ability, other people's when it comes to young wizards, many adult wizards don't have them. Of course, appreciation is appreciation, but this kind of behavior of running to such a dangerous rooftop early in the morning to watch the sunrise is absolutely not allowed, so Dumbledore decided to make Yi Feng suffer a little, so he moved the hand holding the wand slightly. And as the wand moved, Yi Feng also floated and floated outside the roof. Anyone else would have been stunned by this scene, but Yi Feng, to put it bluntly, Dumbledore may not fly as many times as him, nor may he fly as fast or as high as him. Therefore, when Dumbledore used the levitation spell to float him to a height of tens of meters above the ground outside the roof, Yi Feng not only did not panic but said with a surprised look on his face, Principal Dumbledore, is this the levitation spell? It's so magical. If you can exert control over yourself, does that mean a wizard can fly without a broomstick? Dumbledore. Key back quote D. Is this why I use the levitation spell to make you fly? This is punishment. Punishment. Although Dumbledore was very crazy when facing Yi Feng's reaction, he could not say it directly. However, Yi Feng's behavior was absolutely not allowed, so Dumbledore directly pulled Yi Feng back and let him fly from the window. Arriving at his room. Although the school rules of Hogwarts do not explicitly prohibit little wizards from climbing to the top of the building, your behavior is too dangerous. If you want to watch the sunrise, I know a better place. Since there is no explicit prohibition in the Hogwarts school rules, I will not deduct points from Gryffindor this time, but as a punishment, I will punish you to copy the Hogwarts school rules. Do you have any opinions on this decision? Quote, Although Dumbledore's words were not harsh, they were filled with an unquestionable meaning, and Dumbledore was indeed considering his safety, so Yi Feng accepted the punishment, but he soon regretted it. At first, Yi Feng thought that the school rules might be the ones Dumbledore had mentioned before, but when Dumbledore put the school rules in front of him, he knew that he was wrong, and he was very wrong. In the end, Yi Feng succeeded in copying the school rules before going to class with his strong hand speed since he was single. Unfortunately, he also missed the breakfast time, so he only had time to go to the kitchen to get some ingredients and hurried to class. When Yi Feng ran to the classroom, it wasn't class time yet, but there was already a gray and black cat squatting there on the podium. Yi Feng is not a cat lover, so he doesn't know much about cats. He doesn't know what kind of cat it is, but he can tell at a glance that this cat is the transformation of Vice Principal McGonagall. This makes his eyes suddenly light up, and he walks over quickly. Reach out and touch. Vice Principal McGonagall. Key back quote D. Under the death gaze of Vice Principal McGonagall, Yi Feng had to retract his hand angrily. After all, Vice Principal McGonagall would change back in front of everyone. If he really touched McGonagall, whether the Vice Principal will die or not, he will definitely be beaten to death by Vice Principal McGonagall. Seeing Yi Feng retract his hand, Vice Principal McGonagall also breathed a sigh of relief. However, while she was relieved, she also had a doubt in her heart whether Yi Feng recognized her. With regret in his heart, Yi Feng sat down in his seat, which was next to Hermione. However, what was different from the past was that Yi Feng just said hello to Hermione and then sat down and ignored her. Instead, he kept staring at the podium, on the cat. Hi, seeing that Yi Feng ignored her, Hermione gently pushed Yi Feng. What are you thinking about? Why are you so lost in thought? I've called you several times. Sensing the slightly resentful tone of the people around him, Yi Feng quickly returned, I'm wondering if transfiguration can really make people turn into something. Plant an animal. When Yi Feng said this, 
He did not look back, but still stared at the cat on the stage, as if the black and white cat had some fatal attraction. This made Hermione a little bit disgusted, so she looked again he said, you seem to like cats very much. I like cats too, and I have one at home. It's called Crookshanks. Although Yi Feng was a novice in terms of emotions, he could still smell the faint smell of jealousy in Hermione's words, and just when he saw clearly the general principles of Animagus, he received a mission, so he looked away from Vice Principal McGonagall. I really like cats. They are elegant and calm, and their soft bodies are nice to touch. Unfortunately, the cats I had in the past were wild and not very clingy. Really, that's such a pity. When I go back this time, I can bring Crookshanks, and I think you will definitely like her. Seeing Yi Feng finally withdrawing his attention, Hermione also after returning to normal, at this time, two fiery figures rushed in from the door. Hermione couldn't help but shake her head when she saw these two figures. Although they were not good friends yet, they were still classmates who came together in the same carriage. They were more familiar with each other than the others, so Hermione couldn't bear it when she saw these two guys being late on the first day. Zhu shook his head. As for Yi Feng, he looked like he was watching a good show. Ronald and Harry, who rushed in, breathed a sigh of relief when they saw that no teacher had come over to the podium. Ronald complained out of habit, it's a good thing you're not late, otherwise Professor McGonagall's face would be scary to death. As soon as Ronald finished speaking, the cat on the podium suddenly jumped down from the podium. While jumping down, the cat changed rapidly. Almost in the blink of an eye, the cat that had been squatting on the podium for a long time suddenly changed. Became Vice Principal McGonagall. Ronald. Sigma opening parenthesis DLLLL. The moment he saw the cat turned into Vice Principal McGonagall, Ronald opened his mouth in shock, but he was worthy of being a member of the Weasley family. He reacted almost instantly and looked at Vice Principal McGonagall and praised, it's really amazing. Ronald's reaction ability is very strong, but it is a pity that Vice Principal McGonagall does not accept this trick, and transfiguration is indeed very strict, because transfiguration is a magic that completely changes one thing into another thing. In other words, if you fail to study and do not remember certain key knowledge points, it is very likely that you will not be able to change back into another animal after using the transformation technique, so Professor McGonagall's tone is very stern. After scolding Harry and Ronald, Vice Principal McGonagall asked them to sit down. What made Yi Feng a little disappointed was that because the transfiguration class was more rigorous, Professor McGonagall did not teach them transfiguration in their first class. Instead, he gave them a lesson note. G.U. Almost as soon as Professor McGonagall announced the end of class, Yi Feng's stomach rumbling. This made Hermione and Ronald, who were sitting next to him, look over in confusion. Seeing this, Yi Feng smiled awkwardly and said, Morning when I got up, I met Principal Dumbledore, and he, invited, me to sit in his office for a while, so I didn't have time to have breakfast. You didn't have breakfast. Hermione was a little shocked when she heard Yi Feng's words, because when she got up, she heard his roommate said that Yi Feng had gotten up early, so she thought Yi Feng should have already had breakfast. I should leave some for you. The dessert this morning was quite delicious. Hermione's face was full of annoyance when she said this, while Neville lowered his head in guilt. Because Yi Feng was the best person to him in Hogwarts, but he didn't notice that Yi Feng didn't eat breakfast. Seeing that both of them felt a little guilty, Yi Feng smiled and said, it's okay. I already went to the kitchen to get something before I came here. You don't have to worry. Hermione and the others were immediately relieved after hearing Yi Feng's words. However, when they came to the potions classroom, they saw Yi Feng taking out his crucible that was slightly different from theirs and pouring water into the crucible. After that, they could not help but be shocked when the small flame under the crucible was turned into a large fire. Yi Feng, we heard that the potions teacher is very strict, especially the Gryffindor students, so. Boom. Before Ronald finished speaking, the classroom door was suddenly pushed open, and then a black figure rushed in and stood at the edge of the podium. So Mr. Weasley, what are you going to do? Gulu. Seeing the condescending Snape, Ronald couldn't help but swallowed hard when he was caught just saying bad things about others, but his reaction was still as quick as ever. So Professor Snape, I would like to advise Yi Feng not to adjust the heat of the crucible so high. This is very dangerous. Seeing that Ronald was scared, 
Snape took his eyes away from Ronald and prepared to see what Yifang was doing, but when his eyes moved towards Yifang, a figure wearing glasses completely attracted him. Gaze. After staring at Harry carefully, or to be precise, Harry's eyes for a second or two, Snape withdrew his gaze, walked to the podium, and began his opening remarks. Of course, after the opening remarks, Snape did not forget to note Ronald's offense against him, and directly deducted a full 10 points from Gryffindor. Without too much nonsense, Snape was in a better mood probably after deducting points for Gryffindor, so he started teaching Yifeng and the others directly, and after explaining, he let them start brewing the potion. Of course, this magic potion made Yifeng and the others familiar with the brewing process, so the process was very simple, at least for Yifeng who had used a rice cooker to make elixirs. Therefore, it only took Yifeng five minutes to boil and pack the potion that Snape had given him. However, Yifeng did not stop after boiling the potion that Snape told him. He began to wash the pot skillfully, then added water, and increased the heat to maximum. On the stage, Snape looked at Yifeng's skillful movements. Even though Yifeng was a Gryffindor, he couldn't help but nod. It was just that the things Yifeng added to it seemed a bit wrong with what he told him. What is an octagon? Oh, it turns out this thing really has eight anise. What an image. Cinnamon, is this the skin of some animal? Ha, huh, it's actually a piece of bark. Pepper, a type of pepper, but why is it a small black fruit? It's really strange, but it looks good. It's just a pity that there is no magic fluctuation. This pot of potion has failed. After a few minutes, wait, although I have never seen many of the previous materials, I can still understand them. But what does adding mutton mean? And, why is it so fragrant? Snape couldn't help but swallowed as he thought to himself. Gouda Gouda, there was a little bit of red soup in the crucible that was boiling. When Yi Feng put the thinly sliced mutton into the crucible, a rich meaty aroma wafted up. It was also at this time that Yi Feng took out the soup. He took out his wand. I forgot to bring my chopsticks, so just use this wand to get rid of it first. As he spoke, Yi Feng wiped his wand and then directly extended the wand into the crucible and opened the mutton placed inside. On the podium, Snape was extremely confused when he saw Yi Feng actually stirring the potion in the crucible with his wand and immediately became furious because potions is a subject he likes very much and he does not allow anyone to mess around in this class. Your name is Yi Feng, right? Can you tell me what you are doing? Hearing the sound, Yi Feng looked up and saw an unusually gloomy and scary face. Right next to him, Hermione, Harry and the others were frightened when they heard the sound and looked at it. Hermione even missed the crucible because she was closer. They were all knocked over. Laugh. The half-finished potion spilled from the overturned cauldron made a violent sizzling sound, and a black smoke rose directly. Snape was so frightened that he immediately took out his wand and used a small spell to directly turn the black smoke away. Dispelled. Seeing this, Snape, who was already angry, became even more angry. He stared at Yifeng with fierce eyes and said to Hermione, I don't think you are suitable for potions class. Although Yifeng has not watched the Harry Potter series of movies, he still knows some basic, knowledge points, so he used to have feelings for this old man who although he would target Hogwarts everywhere, he had been silently protecting Harry in secret. Not annoying. However, Yifeng became angry when Snape said this. Although Yi Feng didn't know what criteria Snape used for evaluation, it was absolutely wrong to say in front of all the students that Hermione was not suitable for potions class just because she knocked over a cauldron, and even while being frightened, of. So, Yi Feng directly picked up the test tube that he had placed next to him. Professor Snape, I know you don't like us at Gryffindor College, but to say such hurtful words just because of a trivial matter, I don't think this is what a qualified teacher should do. Yi Feng said as he spoke. Test tube in hand. Seeing that Yi Feng actually dared to refute him, Snape was already angry and immediately started to scold Yi Feng. However, before he could say anything, he smelled a faint smell mixed with the aroma of meat, which made him he suddenly looked at the test tube in Yi Feng's hand. This is, a potion for curing scabies. And judging from the color and taste, the quality is pretty good. It's almost as good as my refining level. Looking at the potion in Yi Feng's hand, Snape was silent, because he had never seen a student who was so talented in potions. He had to admit that even he would never be able to follow the instructions in the book after hearing it only once. 
It is required to find the correct materials and add them in the correct order and quantity to cook it successfully. As for Yi Fang, not only did he successfully brew it, but the quality was also very good. It could even be said that the quality was even better than what some potions teachers brewed. At this moment, Snape was conflicted. He wanted to take back his words, because Yi Fang was indeed too good, but as a teacher, he couldn't save his face, especially since Yi Fang was still a Gryffindor, and he was still in front of Harry. Finally, Snape rolled down his sleeves, turned around and walked towards the podium and said angrily, Mr. Yi Fang, although you brewed a good quality potion, Gryffindor will still be deducted five points because you contradicted the teacher. Quote. Also, can you explain to me the potion of, magic potion, you are brewing now? I don't remember teaching you to add sliced mutton to the potion, and also use a wand to stir it. The reason why the wand works is because it is made of materials containing post-magical elements. To a certain extent, the materials used to make the wand can also be used to brew potions. Mr. Yi Fang, tell me, you use the wand to stir the brewing potion. Do you want to use the wand as an ingredient? Seeing that Snape had softened and stopped being aggressive, Yi Fang did not hold on and explained, Professor Snape, actually you misunderstood. I have already prepared the potion. The pot in front of me now is not potion, but my breakfast, and in our country we call it, hot pot. Snape, ha, huh. after being silent for a while, Snape took a long breath and said calmly, in other words, you are using the crucible to cook food instead of brewing potions. Yes, Yi Feng's answer was very straightforward, because he had just finished copying the Hogwarts school rules, so he remembered very clearly that the school rules did not explicitly prohibit students from using crucibles for cooking, and he was not wrong. However, sometimes when teachers want to punish you, they don't need to know which school rule you broke. As long as they think you are wrong, they can reprimand you. That's what Snape did now. Good answer, 10 points from Gryffindor. Yi Fang. Katakana middle dot he katakana middle dot. Seeing that Snape actually picked up the quill to implement the deduction points, Yi Fang's head was full of question marks, because this was a bit beyond his expectation, and he didn't think he should be deducted for the 10 points, so he directly he opened his mouth to defend himself and said, Professor Snape, why do you want to deduct 10 points from Gryffindor? Why? Snape almost laughed angrily when he heard Yi Fang's words. Excuse me, Mr. Yi Fang, what class are you taking now? Potions class. Oh, are you cooking potion now? No, so I'm deducting Gryffindor points because of you. Is there a problem? Have. Snape. Asterisk. N airy summation opening parenthesis D no, no. What? What did you say? You didn't brew potions but cooked food in potions class. What's wrong with me deducting your points? After hearing Snape's words, Yi Feng said solemnly and solemnly, Professor Snape, I just finished copying the Hogwarts school rules in Principal Dumbledore's office in the morning. I remember very clearly that there is no provision in the school rules that students cannot participate in potions class. Serve cooking food. As long as the law does not prohibit it, the fact that the school regulations do not clearly stipulate prohibited things proves that students can do it. Therefore, Professor Snape, there is nothing wrong with me cooking food in potions class, not to mention that I failed to eat breakfast. Dumbledore's fault. Yi Feng said the latter sentence a bit low, but he was the only one speaking in the classroom at the moment, so even though he lowered his voice, everyone in the classroom heard it. Seeing that Yi Feng had pulled Dumbledore out, if he continued to pester him, he believed that Yi Feng would definitely dare to pull Dumbledore out. In other words, he lost this confrontation. Sit down, no points will be deducted from Gryffindor this time. Oh, as soon as Snape finished speaking, loud cheers rang out in the classroom, and Snape lowered his head slightly when he saw this scene and lowered his eyes slightly before saying, however, I will propose that Principal Dumbledore ban students from cooking with cauldrons in potions class as soon as possible. For food. After saying this, Snape glanced at Yi Fang and found that Yi Fang's eyes moved slightly and an idea flashed in his mind. Then the corners of his mouth twitched slightly and then he said, oh, to add, it doesn't work without a crucible. Snape's proposal became a reality the next day. Dumbledore officially announced that students would not be allowed to use wands to stir potions in potions class, students would not be allowed to cook food in potions class, lower grade wizards would definitely not with these three new school rules, Yi Feng has become a legend in the school. 
a legend about a man who single-handedly added three school rules in one day. Because of a pot of hot pot, Yi Feng became a celebrity in Hogwarts overnight. As the famous troublemakers in Hogwarts, the Weasley twins, they directly found Yi Feng because they admired Yi Feng very much. Such, braveness, of the wind. As for Yi Feng, he was feeling uncomfortable about his hot pot crucible which was confiscated after being used only once, so he directly rejected the Weasley twins' invitation. After all, he had to replace it with a crucible made of the same material as the others. He didn't dare if he uses it for cooking again, he's afraid he won't grow any longer. The Weasley twins were a little sad to be rejected, because in their opinion, Yi Fang's potential in playing pranks is absolutely huge. If they can get him to join the team, their goal of dominating the entire Hogwarts will be one step closer. Yi Fang was not interested in pranks or anything like that. He was more interested in the Black Lake and the Forbidden Forest. Unfortunately, because of his previous extraordinary behavior, Dumbledore looked at him more strictly, so he could only give up temporarily. The idea of finding out. Of course, hunting in the Forbidden Forest and fishing in the Black Lake are temporarily unavailable, but it is still possible to get up and exercise every morning. So, when the sun was about to rise the next day, Yi Feng left the dormitory after washing up. All the way to the high tower next to the auditorium. Because the auditorium is relatively large, its roof is not a cone-shaped spire, but an arc-shaped roof like a cover. The slope will be much gentler. Although it will not be as gentle as flat ground, it will be enough to make people feel comfortable. Free to walk up there. Of course, these are not the most important. The most important thing is that there is no obstruction around here, so he can directly see the sunrise here. So, Yi Feng, who came to the roof of the auditorium, sat on the steering wheel facing the rising sun. Come down. Ding, congratulations to the host for successfully taking purple energy every day. Since the host has consumed purple energy for 3,600 days in total, a set of heavenly fishing rods will be awarded as a special reward. The detailed usage method is for the host to explore on his own. Yi Feng, N Airy Summation Opening Parenthesis D No, No. Yi Feng was shocked when he heard the system prompt. This is not the first time that Yi Feng has encountered this kind of reward for accumulated sign ins, so what scares Yi Feng is the reward, the fishing rod of the heavens. Anyone who has read the novel knows that those who are linked to the heavens generally cannot reach a lower level. After all, if the level is low, they cannot communicate with the heavens. More importantly, Yi Feng is worried that he does not have a good fishing rod for fishing. This the reward could be said to be delivered to Yi Feng's heart, so Yi Feng couldn't wait to take out the fishing rod. At the moment when he took out the fishing rods, dazzling light bloomed from the group of six fishing rods. Fortunately, Yi Feng had already experienced it and directly used his magical power to set up an area to block it. Otherwise, I am afraid that the Daily Prophet would be there the next day. News like, a mysterious phenomenon occurred in Hogwarts yesterday, and it was suspected that Voldemort was attacked, will be reported. When the light slowly faded away, a group of fishing rods composed of six main colors of yellow, purple, green, blue, white and black appeared in Yi Feng's eyes, and when Yi Feng stretched out his hand to the fishing rod floating in the air, a fishing rod with the main color yellow automatically fell into his hands. When the yellow fishing rod fell into Yi Feng's hands, the information about the fishing rod also entered his mind. The function of this set of fishing rods is very simple. The levels increase from yellow, purple, cyan, blue, white and black. Yellow fishing rods can only be used for fishing in this world. Purple fishing rods are of the same type, that is, as long as they belong to Harry Potter. Fishing can be done anywhere in the world. The cyan fishing rod goes a step further, and the fishing range extends to the magical worlds, including the world with the western gods. Blue corresponds to the world of martial arts, white represents immortals, and black covers the entire fantasy world. When this group of six fishing rods are combined into one, there is no one in the world who cannot fish. This set of fishing rods is really awesome, because no matter what world, even the lowest priced yellow fishing rod can directly catch the cause and effect, the flow of fate, but the scope is different, and the reason why the higher the level of the fishing rod is, it is because in addition to the latter world covers a wider area, which is also related to the fact that those worlds are further away from here. Of course, no matter how awesome this set of fishing rods is, there are prerequisites. After all, 
there is a saying in the fishing industry that a poor student has more stationary. A good fishing rod may not necessarily catch fish, and the same is true for this set of fishing rods. To use this set of fishing rods, you need to input Shanli. The more Shanli you input, the higher the quality, the further the fishing line can be cast, and the sweeter the bait you release will be, so you can catch good things. The probability is higher. Now, the fairy yellow fishing rod owned by Yifang can basically be used normally, but the distance of the fishing line is too high. Yifang tried it with all his fairy power and found that he could probably fish in Hogwarts Academy, to bluefin tuna in the Atlantic Ocean. In other words, he couldn't even fully use the yellow fishing rod, and he couldn't even think about other things for the time being. Yifang probably figured out the function of the fishing rod, and his eyes almost narrowed with laughter. After all, he had been craving for all kinds of seafood in the Black Lake for several days, and with this fishing rod, he didn't have to worry about breaking it. The line ran out of fish. But it was not fishing time yet, so Yifang put away the fishing rod in his hand. After putting away the fishing rod in his hand, Yifang stood on the dome and took a posture. Then as the bright beat sounded, Yifang also moved with the wind on the dome. Hey Yifang, what are you doing? Practicing your magical Chinese Kung Fu. While Yifang was very involved in practicing, a shout suddenly sounded from behind him. Hearing the sound, Yifang immediately stopped what he was doing and turned around to look along the sound. Then he saw two identical boys with flaming hair leaning half of their bodies out of the window at the rear, looking excited, looked at him. Seeing that it was Weasley who greeted him, Twin Leaf Fung smiled and nodded, yes, but we call this morning exercise. The set I just practiced is called the Rising Sun, which is also called Eagles Taking Flight. In addition, there is the advanced version of Youthful Vitality, which is also called Time's Calling, and the ultimate version, Dancing Youth or Letting Your Ideals Fly. How about it, do you want to learn? If you want to learn, I can teach you. Do you want to learn? I can teach you. Yi Feng's words kept ringing in the minds of the Weasley twins like a devil's whisper, so a few minutes later, two more people appeared on the dome, and the fast-paced beat the sound was also much louder. 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 2 2 3 4 5 6 stretching exercises 1 2 3 4 Ah, the air in the college today is as fresh and beautiful as ever. 5 or 6 full body exercises. 1 2 3 4 Before Dumbledore could finish speaking, a series of strange and very fast-paced tapping sounds came into his ears, and when he looked in the direction of the sound to see what was going on, his whole body was filled with emotion. I was confused. Then, what is that? Wait, that seems to be, the Weasley twins and Yi Feng, Yi Feng, why did you run to the roof again? And you brought two Mr. Weasleys with you. Thanks for watching, please like and subscribe. Hogwarts. I am the only one who is a cultivator. Chapter 21. Yi Feng and the others, who were happily doing morning exercises to stretch their bodies, were suddenly startled when they heard Dumbledore's voice. The Weasley twins were so frightened that they ran out with a cry, but the moment they ran out, they again stopped. As for Yi Feng, his reaction was not as big as that of the Weasley twins. Although he was also startled, he was frightened because he was immersed in teaching the Weasley twins to do morning exercises, so he was frightened by the sudden sound, so when he found out that it was Dumbledore calling them, he was not scared. Instead, he gave Dumbledore a bright smile. Good morning, Headmaster Dumbledore. I am teaching the two Mr. Weasleys to do morning exercises. Doing morning exercises every day can quickly activate the body, which is very beneficial to physical and mental health. Principal Dumbledore, do you want to try it? It is also useful for the elderly. Maybe it can improve your health. My body is several years younger. How much younger? How about? Try. No, Mr. Yi Feng, please don't change the subject. It's not a question of whether to do morning exercises now. Why are you on the roof? Didn't I read out the new school rules in public in the auditorium yesterday? Are you going to violate the school rules? Three gentlemen. Hearing Dumbledore's words, Yi Feng nodded very seriously and said, Yes, if I remember correctly, the new school rule is, young wizards in lower grades are absolutely not allowed to climb to the roof to watch the sunrise, but Principal Dumbledore, we are not watching the sunrise, we are doing morning exercises now, so we are not violating school rules. Dumbledore. Katakana middle dot underscore katakana middle dot. Is, is that so? 
As he spoke, Dumbledore took out his wand and flicked it, and a thick book flew in front of him. As he flicked his wand, the thick book flew out, automatically flipping quickly to the last page. On the last page, or the last page with writing, there were three school rules that were still very new in ink, and one of these three school rules was exactly what Yi Feng said. Epsilon equals Omicron backquote asterisk alas. Seeing that what Yi Feng said was exactly what was written in the school rules, Dumbledore couldn't help but sigh. He finally understood why Snape was so angry yesterday, because this student he recruited from that mysterious country was indeed different from everyone else, different. It seems that I will have a headache in the future. I don't know if I am right or wrong in recruiting this little guy. Looking at the boy in the distance with his back to the rising sun and a dazzling smile, Dumbledore rubbed his forehead in distress. Comma. That day, all the wizards who entered the restaurant to have breakfast were told not to leave in a hurry after breakfast. Principal Dumbledore had something to announce to them. When Yi Feng heard the news, he guessed that it should be with him this morning. It has to do with what the Weasley twins did. This is exactly what happened. When all the wizards finished their breakfast, Dumbledore bowed his head slightly and apologized, saying, I'm sorry that I delayed everyone's time because of some of my mistakes, but this matter must be corrected as soon as possible, so I chose to leave you all behind to announce this. For some reasons, one of the three school rules announced yesterday is hereby officially declared invalid. After saying this, Dumbledore took a deep look at Yi Feng, and all the wizards were in an uproar when they heard Dumbledore's words. The school rules are invalidated. Why, wasn't this just announced yesterday? What is the school rule? You can't cook food in potions class, or you can't climb to the roof to watch the sunrise. To be honest, I never thought of climbing to the roof to watch the sunrise before. If I can get an appointment with Dilly, let's watch the sunrise together and give her a surprise. Maybe she can agree to be my girlfriend. What is going on? Dumbledore is not the kind of person who changes his mind every day. It has only been one night. What happened? Comma. Both students and teachers couldn't help but start talking after hearing Dumbledore's announcement. Dumbledore didn't let them wait long. After only five or six seconds, he raised his hand and pressed it down to signal others to stop talking. Calm down. Okay, no need to guess. The school rule I want to abolish is, little wizards in lower grades are never allowed to climb to the roof to watch the sunrise. No, it can't be said to be invalid. I think there are still big loopholes in this school rule. So I wanted to modify it, and I was able to discover this loophole thanks to classmate Yi Feng. So, in view of classmate Yi Feng's contribution, I decided to give Gryffindor 20 points. Yi Feng. Sigma, Su degree D degree winking face, Su. Yi Feng was stunned when he heard Dumbledore's words, and the other Gryffindors including the Weasley twins cheered loudly with excitement, because this was not just 20 points, but also an honor. After all, the extra points there are not many who can make contributions to the college and be personally recognized by the principal. Seeing this scene, Dumbledore raised the corners of his mouth slightly, glanced at Yi Feng with deep meaning, and then continued to speak, in view of Yi Feng's, reminder, I decided to change this school rule. And without mastery of levitation, the broomstick wizard climbed to the roof. Besides that, I have a suggestion, and of course it's just a suggestion. Mr. Yi Feng, Mr. Fred Weasley and Mr. George Weasley, if you want to do morning exercises in the future, I suggest you go down to the open space below the college to do it. This is safe and will not disturb other people. What do you think? How about a proposal? Dumbledore has already mentioned this, what else can Yi Feng and the others say? He had no choice but to agree. As for not being able to go to the roof, there would be broomstick lessons and charms lessons soon. Once he learned how to control the broomstick and then buy a broom, if he couldn't go to the roof, he wouldn't go on it. When Yi Feng lowered his head and thought, some thoughtful people also came to understand what was going on, so they looked at Yi Feng with surprised eyes, and as some people explained in low voices, everyone soon understood some people understood what was probably going on, which made them look at Yi Feng even more curious. As expected of a Gryffindor, so many things have happened in just a few days since school started. Try to see if you can make a friend first. If not, you will be a strong opponent. As an opponent, you have to prepare early. Comma. The crowd looked at Yi Feng with different meanings in their eyes, and Yi Feng ran away as soon as Dumbledore announced that the matter was over and they could go back to prepare for class. 
Now he is considered a famous figure, and his popularity in the school is only slightly lower than that of Harry Potter. Therefore, if he is surrounded by this group of people, he will not be able to escape in a short time. He does not want to be with these people. When it comes to entanglement, especially some seniors are not so honest with their hands. Just taking the opportunity to pinch someone's face is already considered a big deal. On the podium, a short and bald figure stood on top of stacks of books. He was Yi Fang's teacher of today's charms class, Phileas Flivy, the Dean of Ravenclaw. Although Phileas Flivy is short in stature, as the headmaster of Ravenclaw, a gathering place for top students, there is absolutely no doubt about his level of magic. And if Harry was not in Gryffindor and he needed to contact Hagrid, he would definitely go to Ravenclaw. But it's not bad now. After all, Phileas Flivy will not hide his secrets just because you are not a Ravenclaw, and you can find them in many spell books. Of course, there is a big gap between self-study from books and being taught by others, because many of Hogwarts spells need to resonate with your voice, that is, you need to recite the spells, and you can't pronounce them wrong to make yourself happy. The magic works according to the resonance. Therefore, when Phileas Flivy began to lecture, no one in the audience dared to miss out, because as long as you mishear a note and pronounce it slightly wrong, you will not be able to release the curse. As for Yi Feng, he paid full attention to all the details of Phileas Flivy during his demonstration, including hand movements, tone of voice, pauses, etc. Of course, the most important thing is the fluctuation and movement of magic power, which he directly observes with his spiritual consciousness. Wingardium, Leviosa. After Professor Phileas Flivy finished speaking, Yi Feng's voice also sounded. As Yi Feng finished speaking, he gently raised his wand, and the feather on the table floated gently, and Yi Feng saw the feather after floating up, his eyes suddenly lit up because he thought of something. Since the floating spell can make objects fly and can control the direction of movement of floating objects, wouldn't it be possible to control these objects to kill enemies by increasing the magic power applied to floating objects? Isn't this a royal animal? Yi Feng, who suddenly thought of this, screamed in his heart, so he increased the output of his magic power. It's a pity that modifying the magic spell is not that simple. Otherwise, after so many years of development in the magic world, smart people will always think of this possibility. However, until now, the magic world has not had a magic spell that can directly control objects and attack. This is enough to explain. Problem. So without any warning, when the magic power Yi Feng applied to the floating feathers increased to a certain level, the feathers ignited with a golden flame, burning them out almost instantly. Although the feathers were burned by the sudden flames, Yi Feng was not discouraged because he found that his idea was right, but it was a pity that the feathers could not carry the magic power he input, so they spontaneously combusted. This is the right direction, but if you want to create a magic item that can withstand a large amount of magic and have enough lethality, it is better to just learn a good magic spell. Maybe this is because there has been no magic item to control objects and kill enemies for so many years. It's one of the reasons why it appeared. Thinking of this, Yi Feng had no intention of continuing to explore, because he knew how to control things, so there was no need for him to bother studying a skill that he already knew and used with great proficiency. Although Yi Feng's feathers were burned off, there was no doubt that his floating spell was successfully cast, and Hermione was worthy of being a top student who could lead her teammates even in a two-on-one situation. She just one step slower than Yi Feng, she also cast the floating spell without burning her feathers. Seeing that both Yi Feng and Hermione succeeded, others were also stimulated, especially Malfoy. However, the more anxious you are about curses, the harder it is to pronounce them correctly. Therefore, Malfoy failed to succeed until the end of class. This made Ronald, who succeeded after practicing for most of the class, laugh at him. Yi Feng didn't know what was going on. These two guys seemed to be a pair of natural enemies. Even though Yi Feng attracted most of Malfoy's firepower without paying attention, they still faced each other, and they did so every three days. We'll get into a fight. What's so great about just a floating spell? I just let it go on purpose. Now I'm going to let you see the results of one session of practice. Yingardum, Leviosa, after saying this, Malfoy pointed his wand directly at Ronald. To everyone's surprise, when Malfoy pointed his wand at Ronald, a white light flew out of his wand instantly. It fell on Ronald. Seeing Malfoy attacking Ronald directly, everyone was frightened. 
Ronald even turned around in fear to see if he was okay. When he found that there was no change in his body, and no one appeared. The blood hole and all the rest suddenly breathed a sigh of relief, only Yi Fang's eyes burst out with a dazzling light. I thought about it. Since ordinary objects can't withstand the magic power I apply, then I can completely change the object of the magic power. For example, it would be great to change it to a man-controlling technique, or something like that. Of course, it is not that simple to study the human control skill. After all, there is a big difference between dead objects and living people. So now Yi Feng just has this idea. How to operate it specifically needs to be done after he goes back. Think slowly. When Yi Feng was thinking about the feasibility of the man control technique, Ronald, who was looking at him, suddenly felt a chill on his back which made him shiver and rub his arms, while Phileas Foley Way dismissed the class after making sure Ronald was fine, and warned Malfoy not to use magic on his classmates at will, especially attack magic. The courses at Hogwarts are still very relaxed, not as demanding as in China. There are only two classes in the morning, and there is a short break at noon. However, they do not have a lunch break, or the college does not require students to take a lunch break at noon. Therefore, after the morning class and lunch, the students went to do what they liked to do. As for Yi Feng, he did not go to the library to study or disturb Zhang Chu, but left the college. Quietly ran to the edge of the Black Lake. In order to avoid Dumbledore's sight as much as possible, it took Yi Feng two full noons to find a fishing position with a good view, a decent water depth, shade from trees, and even a place where lounge chairs, small tables, etc. could be placed. Very good. The fishing position has been cleared. Don't worry about the big squid. I will catch you right away. I also brought you cumin, iron plate, chili powder and many other ingredients, ahem, it's delicious. With Yi Feng's murmur, Yi Feng skillfully set up a yellow fishing rod, and then skillfully pulled the fishing line in front of him. After getting the fish hook, he skillfully baited the fish hook, and then skillfully followed the bait with it. Throw the line to the appropriate distance. While Yi Feng was concentrating on fishing, Dumbledore, who was holding a telescope in the distance, couldn't help but sigh. Minerva, go and bring that little guy back. Dumbledore, I kind of understand now why you brought him back to the academy. His talent is the highest I have seen in so many years, but... Minerva didn't finish her words, but Dumbledore knew exactly what she was going to say, because he was thinking the same thing at the moment. Yi Feng's talent was indeed the highest they had seen in so many years, even higher than Voldemort's back then, so high that he even wanted to change his training target to Yi Feng. But at the same time, this guy's ability to cause trouble was so high that it gave him a headache. Minerva, I can only take the trouble to pay more attention to him. Maybe there is more than one choice for the future. I see another hope that is slowly lighting up. Mr. Yi Feng, the school rules of Hogwarts clearly stipulate that fishing in forbidden lakes is prohibited. Principal Dumbledore is already waiting for you in the principal's office. Yi Feng, who was concentrating on watching the floating water, did not notice at all the vice principal Minerva who had arrived behind him at some point. Therefore, when the vice principal suddenly spoke, he was frightened and trembled all over, stiff. It took Yi Feng two full afternoons to find this suitable fishing position and clear it out, just to make sure that the position was good enough and concealed enough, but it took him less than half an hour to concentrate on fishing. Dumbledore, are you a dog? You're staring at me so hard. Why don't you watch your little Harry staring at me? Yi Feng had many thoughts in his mind at the moment he was scolded by Vice Principal Minerva. In addition to complaining about Dumbledore, he also regretted that he had restrained his consciousness in order to experience the fun of fishing. Although Yi Feng is not an experienced fisherman, he still likes to enjoy the fun of fishing, so he never uses his spiritual consciousness to cheat when fishing. Otherwise, as long as his spiritual consciousness is turned on, it will be clear whether there is a fish or whether the fish has eaten the bait. Chu, even in this case, as long as the fish passes by the hook, he can directly lift the rod and anchor the fish. However, what one enjoys when fishing is the joy of waiting for the fish to bite the hook, then, fighting wits, with it, and finally pulling it up and putting it in the net bag, so Yi Feng never uses his spiritual consciousness to cheat. Yi Feng's habit is undoubtedly in line with the thoughts of a fisherman, but it is precisely because of this that he did not realize that he had been targeted by Dumbledore. He did not wake up until the enemy, 
touched the back and stole the house. That Vice Principal McGonagall, you just listen to my quibbles and don't explain. Mr. Yi Fang, you don't need to explain to me. If you have anything to do, wait until you get to the principal's office and tell Principal Dumbledore. I believe he will give you a satisfactory answer. Yi Fang shocked face carrot back quote oh. Hearing McGonagall's words, Yi Fang was a little helpless, but he was caught red-handed and had no choice but to do anything. Just when he was about to close his pole and accept the punishment, the float on the water suddenly sank and hit the black mark referring to the fish float completely sinking in the water and at the same time as the black mark, a huge force came from the fishing rod. Whoosh, Yi Fang, an airy summation opening parenthesis D no, no, plop, Professor McGonagall, an airy summation opening parenthesis D no, no, Professor Yi Fang McGonagall was stunned when she saw Professor Yi Fang flying out and then falling into the forbidden lake with a thud. But she quickly came to her senses and took out her wand to cast magic while watching from the window of the principal's office. Dumbledore here was equally shocked when he saw this scene. Although Harry is the son of the prophecy that he believes can defeat Voldemort and save the magical world, he also sees Yi Fang's super talent, so although he does not pay as much attention to Yi Fang as Harry does, Yi Fang is still there. He also has a heavy weight in his heart. Therefore, when Dumbledore saw Yi Feng being dragged down by the creatures in the Forbidden Lake, he directly used phantom movement to come to Professor McGonagall, and at the moment he appeared, his wand lit up. While Professor McGonagall and Dumbledore on the shore were anxiously trying to rescue Yi Feng, Yi Feng, who was pulled into the water, was very excited because he saw the big fish biting the hook and dragging him into the water. What dragged him into the water was not the huge squid, but a large silver fish that was one meter long. Judging from its slender and powerful body, it must taste very good, so Yi Feng suddenly pulled the fishing rod, the body also adjusted in the water and stood up as if on the shore. The moment Yi Feng stood up straight in the water, the fishing rod in his hand was suddenly pulled into a large bow. The big fish swimming wildly was also directly pulled back, and its forward speed dropped instantly. Seeing that he had controlled the big fish, Yi Feng's heart moved. The magic power around him quietly acted on his thoughts, directly lifting his body to the surface of the lake. While Yi Feng pulled the fishing rod to float, the water surface continued to surge. Dumbledore and McGonagall, who had already flown to the lake, were about to use magic to rescue Yi Feng from the water, but the next second they were stunned. In front of them, a thin fishing rod quickly broke through the water and swayed continuously. The straight fishing line made a whining sound as it was pulled quickly on both sides. But that's not what shocked them the most. What shocked them the most was that when the fishing rod slowly floated up, a sullen and serious controller of the fishing rod was, fighting, with the big fish in the lake. The little guy floated up from the lake. Levitation spell. Without a magic wand and without a formula, how is this possible? Silent, weaponless casting. This, is this really the little wizard who just entered school? Is he a monster? Yi Feng. Ideographic period. Carrot, ideographic period. Although you are my principal and vice principal, if you say this about me, I will still sue you for defamation. Of course, I think so, but I can't say it. After all, he is now a criminal. Whether he will be punished or not, whether he will be punished or not, depends on the mood of the two people, so Yi Feng is not interested. Instead of speaking, he struggled with the fish and tried to pull it to the shore. Dumbledore and Professor McGonagall didn't know what they were thinking. After seeing Yi Feng safe and healthy and fighting the fish vigorously, the two of them stopped moving. They just stood beside him quietly and looked at him. Half an hour later, Yi Feng pulled the exhausted fish ashore. I didn't expect you to be able to pull up such a big fish. It seems I still underestimated you. Stronger than ordinary people or even adults, you can cast spells silently and without a wand. Mr. Yi Feng, you really brought me many surprises. However, you did violate the school's ban, so this fish was confiscated. Yi Feng, an airy summation opening parenthesis D no, 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 Principal Dumbledore, if you punish me, don't confiscate my fish. I am willing to copy the school rules. If it doesn't work once, I can do it twice, or three times, as long as my fish is not confiscated. In principle, I can promise that I will never cause trouble again within a month. What's the biggest punishment for a fisherman? It's not that the Air Force is fighting turtles, it's not that the fishing rod is broken, it's not that it's forbidden to go fishing. 
The biggest punishment for fishermen is to let the fish run away when they catch it and are about to put it in their care, and the intensity of the punishment is proportional to the size of the fish. If an ordinary fisherman catches a fish the size of the fish Yi Fang caught now and runs away, then he might say in frustration when he closes his eyes, I wish I had been more careful. In the end, Yi Fang's fish was still not saved, but the good news was that it would be one of the main ingredients for today's dinner, and as a price for confiscating the fish, Dumbledore did not make any additional changes to him for coming here to fish. Punishment, but this is actually the biggest punishment. Therefore, when many students were happily enjoying the fish on the table in the evening, only Yi Fang looked at the two finger sized piece of fried fish in front of him gloomily. Fortunately, there was a broomstick class tomorrow afternoon, which made Yi Fang a little bit feeling better. HMPH, Principal Dumbledore, I will make you regret the decision you made today. This month, I will let you know what is called an immortal cultivator. My poor big white bait, you died miserably. But it's so cute, you can still move it when you feed it. Is that Yi Fang? It's the first time I discovered that Asians can be so cute. What should I do? I suddenly fell in love with him. Wake up, you are already a 16-year-old girl and he is only an 11-year-old child. You are not suitable. Who said I want to be his girlfriend? I can be his sister. If I can bring such a cute brother back during the summer vacation, I don't think my mother will refuse. Cute, only you Gryffindors would find him cute. What I saw was another Weasley twin. So what? Cuteness is enough. What's more, Xiao Yi Fang's talent is so strong. This is something Professor Dumbledore has personally admitted. That will be a super genius who may surpass him. Comma. Yi Fang. Katakana middle dot underscore katakana middle dot. Yi Fang was very happy when he first heard those seniors discussing him. After all, it was a happy thing to have his appearance confirmed. But as he listened, he realized that something was wrong, because Dumbledore himself said admit that he has no idea that his talent is stronger. Although the noseless one was already half disabled, he wouldn't be afraid even if he was not disabled, but he didn't want to be pushed out of the way to block the gun for no apparent reason, and he wasn't the kind of person who liked to be in the limelight. In fact, he has a stable quality in his heart. For example, he doesn't like to be too bright. For example, he will try his best to restrain his light and not be the leader, nor be the tail of the crane, but just mix in the middle and be the sixth or something. Of course, these are not the most important things. The most important thing is that those senior students are really good at it. As the saying goes, a female hooligan is not scary. What is really scary is a group of female hooligans gathering together. So after Yi Feng swallowed the fish in his mouth, he directly said hello to Hermione and Harry and left. Seeing Yi Feng run away quietly, Dumbledore, who was sitting at the top, smiled and picked up the wine glass and took a sip. He is old now and has limited energy. In addition, he has to take care of Harry, so Yi Feng will definitely not be able to keep an eye on him, so he thought of a way to make Yi Feng into a star like Harry. But Dumbledore didn't expect that Yi Feng would be so loved by the senior students after he pushed him out. This was a surprise, but his goal had been achieved. But to be honest, after the food was ready, Yi Feng's originally thin face slowly began to grow fleshy. With that fleshy, pink appearance, he sometimes had the idea of pinching it, so those female students would it's normal to like Yi Feng. What's more, Dumbledore also discovered that Yi Feng had a light fragrance on his body, which was a light natural fragrance similar to that of plants and flowers. Being by his side would make people feel calm and peaceful, so Yi Feng was so many people like him, and it is absolutely normal for so many people to fight to hold him. Yi Feng didn't know this, so he couldn't figure out why so many girls suddenly wanted to hug him. As for the light fragrance on his body, in fact, as long as he reaches a certain level of immortality, his body will become pure. Body, and he had already achieved it, so he didn't realize it at all. But even though he didn't know this, he instinctively sensed the danger, so he ran away while most people were not full. There are no self-study classes at Hogwarts at night, so Yi Feng sneaked back to his dormitory after dinner. As soon as Yi Feng returned to the dormitory, he heard a loud cry, and then a small round ball that was only half the size of a fist. The ball silently landed on Yi Feng's shoulder, and gently pecked Yi Feng's neck. Okay, okay, I know you are hungry. I brought you a piece of fresh fish. Eat it quickly. As he spoke, 
Yi Feng turned his hand and took out a piece of fish that was only the size of a thumb and handed it to Xiao Yuan on his shoulder. Ball. You guessed it right, the little round ball that came over to Yi Feng to act coquettishly and begged for something to eat was precisely because of little fatty's owl. Yi Feng also didn't expect that the owl he bought that he thought would grow to be very big turned out to be the smallest owl in the world, the bird's owl, the smallest owl that should not appear here, with an adult size of only 12 centimeters. However, despite its small stature, all the elixirs that Yi Feng had refined before went into its belly, so even though it can fly, if it really wants to fight, even an eagle owl that is dozens of times larger than it can't fight. You must be able to beat it. After feeding his owl, Yi Feng went to study his transformation technique. After all, he still had a system task. When his roommate came back, he had already fallen asleep. The next morning, Yi Feng, who had gone to bed early, also got up early, but this time he did not go to the roof to take the purple energy, but was going to find a sunny window, so. Headmaster Dumbledore, get up soon. The sun is going to shine on your butt. Dumbledore. An airy summation opening parenthesis D no, no. Dumbledore, who was lying peacefully on the bed with a pointed nightcap on, was startled by the sudden knock on the door. When he sat up with a confused look on his face, Yi Feng had already opened his door and walked to the window as if nothing had happened. He opened the window and took a deep breath. Ah, the air in the morning is so fresh. Every morning when I open the window and take a deep breath of fresh air, I feel a lot more energetic. While Yi Feng said this, the sun in the sky just jumped out of the horizon. Yi Feng's there was also a flash of purple in his eyes. Gulu, ha, with a long exhalation, Yi Feng had a bright smile on his face again, and when he turned around, Dumbledore was still sitting on his little bed, not knowing what to do. Morning, Principal Dumbledore, do you want me to help you bring your clothes? Okay, thanks. He back quote D. Just as he was about to say thank you, Dumbledore suddenly came to his senses and was now fully awake. Classmate Yi Feng, can you tell me how you got into my room? If I remember correctly, the door of my room was enchanted, without my permission or password, even by Voldemort. They can't come in. Hearing Dumbledore's words, Yi Feng tilted his head and asked with an extremely innocent look on his face, is there any? I just knocked on the door and opened it by myself, and then I came in. Principal Dumbledore, could it be that you forgot to close the door last night? Why don't you think carefully, did you not check whether the door was closed or not after you came in last night? Hearing Yi Feng's words, Dumbledore also became deeply suspicious, because it seemed that he might indeed have left the door open. Wait a minute, I was almost fooled by this little devil. This is a magic door. The magic door will close automatically, no one needs to close it personally. Seeing Dumbledore's reaction, Yi Feng ran away quickly, and shouted as he ran, I remember, Principal Dumbledore. Harry made an appointment with me yesterday and asked me to teach him morning exercises. I can't leave first without being late. I'll come see you again tomorrow. The man who spoke before Yi Feng had already disappeared, which made Dumbledore almost laugh angrily, but he soon came to his senses. This little guy was probably far more talented than he thought. After all, he exerted influence on the room. Although the enchantment on the door cannot really stop Voldemort, ordinary professors at Hogwarts may not be able to break it silently and instantly. It seems that this child is more mysterious than I thought. He is indeed a little wizard from that country. I hope you can bring me more surprises. If Dumbledore knew what would happen in the future, I'm afraid he would give himself a hard slap because the surprise Yi Feng brought to him was far beyond his imagination. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 2, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. The cheerful beat sounded from Hogwarts, and under the rising sun, a delicate and cute 11-year-old boy led a group of people to clumsily do morning exercises with a serious look on his face. Yi Feng was not lying to Dumbledore when he said that Harry made an appointment with him to teach him morning exercises. Instead, he was probably curious about this and made Dumbledore quickly change the morning exercises that he had set the school rules the day before. The Weasley twins and Harry shouted, and now there were ten students standing behind Yi Feng doing exercises with him. At the beginning, Harry and the others felt that this set of movements was useless, and they even didn't want to do it because of some inexplicable shame. However, after they followed Yi Feng and did it halfway, 
they suddenly found that their bodies felt a lot more relaxed, and there was a warm feeling in the whole body, which made their eyes widen in an instant. Although Yi Feng did not modify this set of broadcast gymnastics, this world has supernatural power like magic, so when they followed Yi Feng to do this set of broadcast gymnastics that can mobilize all the muscles and bones of the body, the energy in their body's magical power begins to flow and nourish their bodies. Although this kind of nourishment will not make them become immortal cultivators, there is absolutely no problem in becoming better, younger and healthier than other wizards over time. He discovered this as early as the first day when the Weasley twins did morning exercises with him, but this enhancement was nothing to the current Yi Feng, so he didn't care at all. However, Yi Feng didn't care that Dumbledore, who was quietly following him, was extremely shocked when he found out, because although the daily improvement in strength of the current dance is pitifully weak, it is still a considerable improvement in the long run. More importantly, Dumbledore also discovered that while doing this set of actions, the magic power on Harry and the others was slowly increasing at the same time. Is this why this little guy is more powerful than others? He is such a mysterious and cute little guy. He can teach you such a precious thing without any secrets. While sighing, Dumbledore also quietly swayed to the beat of Yi Feng. When he felt the warmth rising in his body, he was still a little unable to let go, but his slightly squirmed figure instantly let go. Once opened, the movements have become much more standard. But how do you say something? You stand on the bridge and look at the scenery, and the people watching the scenery are watching you upstairs. While Dumbledore was hiding upstairs watching Yi Feng and the others doing exercises and following along, Snape was looking at him in shock in the corridor a little further away from Dumbledore. Snape was shocked and in disbelief when he first saw the respected Dumbledore doing these actions, but in addition to being an excellent magician, he was also an excellent potions professor. He was very aware of the fluctuations in magic power. Perception is also quite strong. Therefore, he soon discovered the undulating magic power on Dumbledore, and when he tried to follow Dumbledore's movements, he was immediately shocked, because this set of movements could not only enhance his physical fitness, but also increase the amount of magic stored in his body. As expected of Principal Dumbledore, it's a pity that I only learned a little bit of this set of tail moves. If I could learn them all. With this idea in mind, Snape came to yesterday's location very early the next day. With yesterday's experience, Snape was not as shocked today as he was yesterday, which also gave him more time to observe other things, and then he discovered that Dumbledore was actually following others in doing this set of actions. Is it Yi Feng's morning exercise? No wonder Professor Dumbledore tolerates him so much. If it were me, maybe. Snape didn't finish what he said, let alone spread it, but like Dumbledore, he also had another habit, but he got up by himself, while Dumbledore got up after enjoying Yi Feng's wake-up call service. However, there is a saying that goes well, if you often walk by the river, your shoes will not get wet. The more times you go there, you will be bumped into by a student one day, not to mention more and more students are coming to do exercises with Yi Feng. So, one day, a student who happened to pass by was shocked to find that Professor Snape, who was so unsmiling that many students secretly guessed that he might not smile at all, was actually secretly following Yi Feng and the others to do their morning exercises. Judging from the opponent's proficiency in movements, this time is not short. Of course, these are all things for later, and it was precisely because of that incident that the matter of morning exercises was spread throughout the school. So under the leadership of Dumbledore, it was natural that there would be one more student in Hogwarts College. Shang is different from the tradition of other magic colleges and even schools, doing morning exercises. Yi Feng didn't know what happened next. At this moment, he was looking forward to the open space in the middle of the academy that was specially used for learning to fly broomsticks. Why I say touching instead of walking is naturally because he is a bit too famous now. In addition, the people who did exercises with him in the morning went back to publicize the effects of doing exercises with him, so now it is not just those beautiful ladies and seniors also joined in blocking him. So that afternoon, when all the first grade wizards stood neatly in two rows in the middle of the broomstick training ground, the rather embarrassed Yi Feng finally came like the wind, and when Yi Feng saw them when there was a broom in front of me with almost no broom branches, my expectations turned into disappointment in an instant. You must know that he went around several times in order to attend this class, battled wits with a group of people, tried to lure a snake out of its hole, and finally escaped from the encirclement, and came here. However, 
although this thing's quality was a little off, it was still a broomstick after all, and it was only for practice. They could buy new ones later, so Yi Feng took a quick look and found a place where no one was standing before leaving, passed. To be honest, although he also felt that using this kind of broomstick with a small half of the broomstick broken off for students to practice was a bit cheap, it was still acceptable, but when he saw that the broomstick in front of him had been coated with pulp, and the branches at the tail when almost all the flying broomsticks were dropped, Yi Feng still broke through. This kind of school is specially used for the training of newly admitted young wizards. It is acceptable for Yi Feng to have worn out items passed down from generation to generation, but you must at least keep one, whole corpse. But what about the broomstick in front of him? The thing in front of him now is not so much a flying broomstick as it is a flying stick. Although it is said that broomsticks are for flying and not for sweeping the floor, but this is to a sense of the times low EQ, shabby, right? As soon as Yi Feng said this, everyone looked at him, and when they saw the flying broomstick in front of Yi Feng, they laughed out loud at the same time. Even the teacher who taught them the broomstick class couldn't bear it. Zhu turned his head away. Ahem, classmate Yi Feng, there are only so many usable broomsticks left in our college. Even though the broomstick in front of you is almost crossed out, it can still be used normally. Quote. Yi Feng. Professor Hooch. Could you look me in the eyes and say what you just said again? Although he complained in his heart, Yi Feng could only endure it. After all, who made him come the last? In order to avoid those enthusiastic seniors and come here to attend class, Yi Feng walked around for half an hour after leaving the dormitory. Although he was not late in the end, he was also the last one to arrive. As the last one to arrive, he naturally, I can only choose this one over the remaining broomsticks. Okay, let's all stand next to the broomstick. Seeing that Yi Feng didn't say anything else, Teacher Hooch coughed slightly to quiet the students and walked to the side of the broomstick. The use of a flying broomstick is actually very simple because it is equivalent to a refined aircraft. All the wizard needs to do is to use his own magic power to establish a connection with the broomstick and then control it to fly. As for control, Yi Feng took a look just now. It should be similar to a balancing car. It all depends on one's talent and practice. Rise. When the teacher taught me how to get the broomstick on the ground, Yi Feng just said softly and the broomstick on the ground flew to his outstretched right hand and was caught by him casually. However, looking at the bare broomstick in his hand that had been covered with pulp by previous generations of students, Yi Feng couldn't help but be speechless because this thing didn't look like a broom but rather like a stick which was not quite the same. Straight stick. The people nearby were quite surprised when they saw Yi Feng calling this stick all of a sudden. After all, this thing was almost the same as a stick in their eyes, and Yi Feng could actually use it in this situation. The cry was indeed beyond their expectations. But the others quickly turned their attention away. After all, Yi Feng was not the only one who could summon a flying broomstick at once. Harry and Malfoy also succeeded. Although the others were not able to call their broomsticks all at once, they could still succeed with five or six calls at most. Hogwarts is a magic school, and all they can recruit are wizards. There is no need to learn or practice anything to become a wizard, so it is a broomstick that has been built long ago and can be used by almost any wizard. Not difficult. Of course, it is not difficult to return, but there are still some small problems. For example, Ronald was too eager when he aroused the broomstick, causing the broomstick to fly up very violently, and the broomstick directly gave him a blow on the head. Such an episode did not affect Mrs. Hooch's class, so she saw all the students holding the broomsticks in their hands and directly asked the students to ride on the brooms, and after hearing her whistle, they took off one after another. Because Yi Feng came the latest and was the last in line, so generally speaking, his turn should be the last, so Yi Feng was not in a hurry at all. He looked at the flying broomstick in his hand and wondered what those male wizards were doing. After I sat on it, it was so stable and not too heavy. How about, adding a seat cushion? It would be better to add a handle as a rudder, two pedals, and if possible, a fence guard plate. That would be perfect. Beep. While thinking, a loud whistle sounded, and then Yi Feng heard the noise coming from the middle of the team, and when he looked towards the middle, he saw Neville sitting on a broomstick and flying up. W degree degree W. I didn't expect Neville to be so powerful. He could control the broomstick to fly in an instant. 
As soon as Yi Fang finished his surprised words, Neville screamed and ran out. It was at this time that Yi Fang saw that Neville must have been unable to control his magic power and the broomstick under his butt was out of control. It seems that Neville hasn't learned how to cast spells without weapons, right? Doesn't that mean that he can't get off the broomstick by himself or control the broomstick? Thinking of this, Yi Feng threw the flying broom in his hand to the ground and stepped on it. Whoosh! As a sound broke through the air, Yi Feng, who was standing on the broomstick, flew away. In this scene, not to mention these little wizards who had just arrived like Yi Feng, it was Mrs. Hooch who had taught broomstick lessons for so long. They were all shocked, because even she had never seen a broomstick used like this. Cool, he's so handsome. Although this is not the correct way to use a broomstick, I have to say that it is indeed very handsome. HMPH, he's just a clown trying to please others. He'll pay the price for his actions soon. He'll be smashed into pieces and chewed in the mud. He might even break his legs. Surface, Yi Feng is not the kind of person you think. I think he must want to save Neville, and I believe he can do it. When Hermione retorted Malfoy, Yi Feng was already chasing after him on his broomstick. He got on Neville, but he couldn't do it for a while. Because Neville's broomstick is completely out of control, his flight trajectory is completely unpredictable. Not to mention flying up, down, left and right, now he can even fly upside down and spin in crazy circles, so even if Yi Feng temporarily there was no way to reach out and save him. Hey, suddenly, Neville's broomstick took him straight towards the spear in the hands of the towering statue in front of them at an extremely fast speed. Although the statue is not very big, it is just the size of a normal person, but I don't know what Hogwarts thinks. The sharp spear in the statue's hand is actually real, the kind that can be used directly after being taken off, kind. Although Neville's flying height should not directly hit the spear, you can't bet on this kind of thing. If you lose the bet, the future Gryffindor swordmaster may be gone, so Yi Feng took out his wand. I lost it. Pa, pa, dang 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 dang. As a violent sound broke through the air, the broomstick sitting under Neville's butt was directly shot through and exploded from behind by the wand thrown by Yi Feng. Moreover, because Yi Feng threw it with too much force, the wand penetrated Neville's horse. The flying broomstick did not stop but continued forward, directly smashing the statue directly in front of Neville. The statue holding the spear was shot to pieces. Naturally, the spear it held could not stand upright and fell from the roof with a loud clanking sound. And Yi Feng, he took advantage of the broomstick Neville was riding. After the explosion, Neville rushed over and grabbed his clothes when he was flying. He lifted him forward like a kitten. When rushing past the exploding statue, Yi Feng reached out and took back the wand that fell on the roof and dropped the shocked Neville to the ground. Pa, pa, pa. The moment Yi Feng put Neville on the ground, all the first year wizards gathered around and applauded Yi Feng, even Mrs. Hooch did the same. However, when it was confirmed that no one was injured and the class continued, and Ronald and Malfoy also followed Yi Feng's example and stepped on the broomstick under their feet to compete, Mrs. Hooch's face turned dark. What are you doing? Broomsticks are for riding on, not for stepping on. But why can Yi Feng do it? Yi Feng, Yi Feng. Ronald's words immediately silenced Mrs. Hooch, because she couldn't figure out why Yi Feng could stand on the broomstick and control the broomstick flight, and the whole process was very smooth, much better than the broomstick she controlled while sitting. And smoother. Ha, huh, you have also seen what happened to Neville. It is very dangerous to use a broomstick without following the regulations. Yi Feng's incident was just an accident, so follow the rules. Yi Feng, you too. Hearing Mrs. Hooch's words, Yi Feng was a little disapproving. If you let him fly with a broomstick with only one stick, you might as well kill him. As for not being able to stand on it, there is no stipulation in the school rules anyway, and even if it is stipulated, so what? Sample, I can't stand or add anything. Because of Mrs. Hooch's sanction, Yi Feng did not participate in the following exercises, and Harry showed an amazing talent in controlling the broomstick in the following exercises. Therefore, while others were still practicing, Yi Feng and Harry were dragged by Vice Principal Minerva who was watching from a distance to find the captain of the Gryffindor Quidditch team, Oliver Wood. Potter, Yi Feng, this is Oliver Wood. I have found two excellent seekers for you. Both of them have very strong talents. You can try to train them. Yi Feng, 
Oh, asterisk, carrot, carrot, asterisk. Okay, Mr. Yi Fang, please speak. Seeing Yi Fang raise his hand, Professor McGonagall signaled that Yi Fang could speak. With the permission of Vice Principal McGonagall, Yi Fang said something that surprised Harry and all of them. Actually, I'm not very interested in Quidditch. I can just leave the seeker to Harry. Although Yi Fang has never participated in Quidditch training, he is really not very interested in this kind of sport. After all, Quidditch requires you to sit on a flying broom to grab the ball, and there are no entertainment activities. In the magic world, Yi Fang has seen many sports and fun things. Although they regretted Yi Feng's choice, McGonagall and the others still respected Yi Feng's choice and did not force it, let alone tell the matter. However, they underestimated the ability of people who like gossip to find information. When get out of class was over the next day, the whole school was talking about Harry becoming a seeker, but this was not the most heated discussion. The most heated discussion was another thing, that is, Yi Feng rejected the idea of joining Quidditch as a seeker. Yi Feng, why do you refuse to become a seeker? As far as I know, this is a dream for many wizards. After lunch, Hermione was following Yi Feng to find a place to review what she had learned in the morning. The resident asked the question in his mind. Yes, why? Ronald, who came out shortly after, couldn't help but agree, and Harry next to him couldn't help but nodded. Looking at the longing eyes of Iron Triangle in the original drama, Yi Feng sighed slightly and said, Do you really want to know? That's right. Three loud answers sounded at the same time, even attracting the attention of nearby classmates because the sound was a bit too loud. It's actually very simple. Finding the ball is too simple for me. I have no interest in things that are too simple. Hermione and the others were all stunned by Yi Feng's answer, but thinking about the scene where he saved Neville before, they felt that there was nothing wrong with it. After all, Yi Feng was indeed very strong in this aspect, and could even be said to be a bit ridiculously strong. It's a bit incomprehensible. Wouldn't it be better to be simpler? Then maybe we Gryffindors can win the Quidditch Championship. Yi Feng did not answer Ronald's doubts, and the two parties separated after walking forward for a while. Although underachievers and overachievers can play together, there is still a bit of a generation gap between the two parties. For example, Ronald cannot study quietly after class like Yi Feng and others. Although Harry is not a bad student, he is not the kind to be quiet either. The kind that comes down. It's a pity that they didn't know that the place where Yi Feng and Hermione study was not a secluded garden. After the two left the classroom, they went straight out of the academy and didn't stop until they came to the edge of the Black Lake. After arriving at the edge of the Black Lake, Yi Feng took out a set of tables and chairs. Of course, it was a set but there were only two chairs. When Yi Feng took out the tables and chairs, Hermione easily pulled one of them open and sat down. Yi Feng skillfully took out his fishing rod, hung up the bait and threw it out before sitting down. Just like this, on the shore of the sparkling lake, a young man and woman sat quietly. The girl quietly looked through the books on the table, occasionally reaching out and stuffing the snacks on the table into her mouth, while the boy concentrated on staring at the fish float on the lake. Suddenly, the fish float on the lake suddenly sank. The fishing rod held by the young boy bent like a full moon the moment the fish float sank. The huge pulling force even pulled the boy sitting on the chair to lean forward suddenly. It's a big deal. Hermione. Sigma opening parenthesis DLLLL. Looking at the fishing rod that was almost stretched to a full moon, with a book in one hand and a handful of French fries in the other hand, Hermione's eyes widened in shock, even the French fries that had been stuffed into her pretty little mouth. I forgot to eat. It was not the first day that he followed Yi Feng to the lake for fishing, but for two consecutive days Yi Feng didn't catch even a single fry, let alone a big fish. This is why she will continue to follow Yi Feng here. After all, and Jing, there are not many good places to read in the shade and have snacks. Yi Feng, I feel offended. However, today Yi Feng actually opened for the first time, and even if Hermione didn't know how to fish, she could tell that the fish he caught was definitely not small. When Yi Feng stood up and pulled the fishing rod with excitement on his face, he followed the fish in the water. When the fish, fighted, and occasionally took two steps to change its position, Hermione, who was watching from behind, became excited and anxious. Woo! The sound of the fishing line being pulled rapidly through the air kept resounding, 
but he fine relied on the powerful fishing rod in his hand that was not afraid of cutting the line to directly resist, forcing the big fish in the water to retreat continuously. As the big fish in the water was pulled out from the bottom little by little, waves suddenly rolled up on the water surface. Perhaps they sensed the danger. When they were about to come out of the water, the big fish in the water began to fight hard, and a huge force suddenly acted on the fishing rod. Above, the result of the big fish's explosion was that Yifang was dragged forward by nearly one meter. Yeah, let go. Seeing that Yifang was about to be dragged into the water, Hermione exclaimed and asked Yifang to let go of the fishing rod, but how could the fisherman take the initiative to let the fish run away? So Yifang naturally didn't let go. Seeing that Yifang didn't let go obediently, and seeing that he was about to be pulled forward again, Hermione became anxious. She rushed forward and hugged Yifang from behind, and hugged Yifang's waist before moving back, pull. Hermione's idea was simple. Since Yifang was unwilling to let go and he couldn't hold the fish by himself, he could add her weight, right? Unfortunately, Hermione still underestimated the fish in the lake a little too much. Even if the two of them worked together, they were still slowly being pulled into the lake. Fortunately, the fish in the lake was not endurance enough, and they were only less than 10 meters away from the lake shore. At one meter, the force from the fishing rod gradually weakened. Yi Feng's eyes lit up when he found that the force on the fishing rod had weakened. He shouted, back off, and pulled the fishing rod back. Hermione was very smart. She understood what Yi Feng meant in an instant, so the two of them worked together to pull back. After half an hour, a huge fish head with a light blue color in the sun surfaced from the water. It's so big. No wonder Yi Feng exclaimed, because the head of the fish they pulled up was almost as big as the two of them. And when they pulled the big fish to the shore, Hermione was even more shocked and rosy. Mouth, and then looked at Yi Feng like a monster, because this fish was two meters long. Yi Feng was very happy to catch such a big fish, but he was also in trouble because the fish was really too big, and the kitchen utensils in his hands were not big enough to cut the fish apart. What should we do? We can't let the house elves in the kitchen handle it, otherwise Dumbledore will definitely take the opportunity to cause trouble again. Wait, Dumbledore, it seems that there is indeed a suitable, dissection knife, that can be used. In the middle of the murmur, Yi Feng's mind appeared in a shabby, broken hat, and this hat is now placed in Dumbledore's office. It was also at this time that the sorting hat in Dumbledore's office suddenly felt cold. I seem to feel a sense of malice in the dark. Could it be that Voldemort is coming back? But whatever, let Dumbledore have a headache. Headmaster Dumbledore, Headmaster Dumbledore, are you there? Headmaster Dumbledore, are you here? If you are, just say a word. If you don't say a word, I will go in. Squeak. Don't think wrongly, this squeak was not made by Dumbledore, but Yi Feng had already pushed open the door of Dumbledore's office while talking, and the sorting hat in the office and Dumbledore's pet fox, that is, the phoenix saw Yi Feng even if the wind came in, they would not notice it, because they had already become accustomed to it. Yi Feng was quite familiar with it, so he was not surprised when he saw bird and hat making no sound. He just glanced at it and saw that Dumbledore was indeed not there, and then turned his attention to the sorting hat. Sorting hat. Sigma opening parenthesis D winking face. You. Dot why are you staring at me like this? I'm warning you. I'm a veteran of Hogwarts. Even Dumbledore has to be polite to me. Don't mess around. But is Yi Feng afraid of this? Not to mention it was just the sorting hat, but Dumbledore, too, didn't he just try to trick him when he should? So Yi Feng simply ignored the sorting hat's warning. Seeing that Yi Feng ignored his warning and still walked towards him, the sorting hat was frightened. He said in a panic, Hey, hey, Yi Feng, boy, I'm warning you, this is Dumbledore's office, I you are an indispensable veteran of Hogwarts. If anything happens to me, you will definitely be expelled. However, Yi Feng seemed to have not heard his words and still walked towards him. When he walked to the side of the sorting hat, he directly raised his hand to grab the sorting hat. Ah, it's time to kill the hat. Someone is going to kill the hat. Dumbledore, come quickly. Someone is going to kill the sorting hat, the hardworking sorting hat of Hogwarts. Yi Feng. D degree asterisk. Hearing the pitiful scream from the sorting hat and the black line on Yi Feng's head, he had to speed up his movements. Ha, huh, 
As Yi Fang grabbed the sorting hat and put his hand inside the sorting hat's hat and pulled it out, a cold gleaming western style one-handed sword appeared in his hand. After pulling out the holy sword of Gryffindor, Yi Fang threw it away and threw the sorting hat back, who was still screaming. He raised the holy sword of Gryffindor in front of him and stretched out his other hand to lightly touch the sword. Bomb. Ding. A crisp buzzing sound sounded, and Yi Fang could clearly feel the bursts of joy coming from the holy sword. However, this holy sword did not have self-awareness similar to the sorting hat. Perhaps only it could be hidden in the sorting hat. Yi Feng didn't care as to why the sword was hidden in the sorting hat or who hid it inside. The only thing he cared about was whether the sword was sharp enough. Shua, with a casual flick of Yi Feng's hand, a piece of black hair appeared in the air. At this time, Yi Feng handed over the long sword in his hand, letting the hair fall freely on the sword's edge. The moment the hair fell on the sword blade, a sound that ordinary people couldn't hear sounded. Then the hair was divided into two parts very neatly, but before the two parts of hair fell to the ground, a wisp of green smoke appeared. Then he jumped up. Yi Feng has not forgotten that there is such a thing as a curse in this world, so his hair cannot be left casually. However, this sword can break off the hair that he chopped off so easily, achieving the effect of blowing hair and making a decisive decision. It was indeed a bit beyond Yi Feng's expectations. It's a good sword. It's worthy of being the sword worn by the founder of Gryffindor. I just don't know if it will be easy to use for a while. Yi Feng murmured, took the sword, turned around and walked out, and soon returned to the lake. Not long after Yi Feng left, Dumbledore suddenly appeared from the office. He glanced at the sorting hat, which had returned to normal as if nothing had happened, and murmured, Is there an error in the prophecy? I didn't expect this little guy to be so relaxed. Then he pulled out the holy sword. It seems that I still underestimated this little guy, but how did he know that the holy sword was in the sorting hat? And, what did he want to do with the holy sword? With the slightest curiosity, Dumbledore also he followed the path Yi Feng took just now. Gryffindor's holy sword can be said to be related to prophecies and even the future of the wizarding world, but it is in Hogwarts Academy after all, and as long as he is in the academy, Dumbledore is confident that there will be no accidents, so he will go all the way. Not fast. However, when he slowly followed Yi Feng's footsteps to the lake and saw what Yi Feng was doing with the holy sword, he really wanted to give his previous self a slap in the face, because Yi Feng was actually using it. Gryffindor's holy sword kills fish. That's Gryffindor's holy sword. The sword once worn by one of the four founders of Hogwarts. It can be said that this sword is considered a treasure in the entire wizarding world. Even Voldemort, who frightened the wizarding world, has been looking for it for who knows how long. But such a treasure that countless people desire is currently being killed by Yi Feng with one hand, and judging from Yi Feng's skillful movements, he should have been using it for a while and is completely familiar with it. Yi Feng, Yi Feng, who had already bled the two meter long fish, cut off its head and discarded the unwanted internal organs and was decomposing the fish, shivered in fright when he heard the angry shout because the sound was too loud for him. It's so familiar, he hears it every day these days. Oh ha, it's over. After hearing the voice, Yi Feng paused for a moment, then pretended to be calm and put the Gryffindor holy sword in his hand into the space ring. Then he turned his head and looked at Dumbledore with a bright smile and said loudly, Principal Dumbledore, why are you here? Look. This is the dinner ingredient I prepared for school night. Look at the texture of the fish. It's beautiful, right? It tastes absolutely delicious. Dumbledore almost laughed angrily when he heard Yi Feng's words, and he already knew Yi Feng very well. If he continued to follow his words, he would probably get confused by him, so he did not answer Yi Feng's words. Words of wind. Let's not talk about the fact that you went to the lake to fish privately again. Tell me. Where did the sword in your hand just now come from? Hearing Dumbledore's words, Yi Feng felt a little guilty, because he already knew which sword it was when he took it, but he still took it out and used it, because in addition to the fairy sword given by the system sign in, he still had the remaining sword in his hand. The ones that came out were just ordinary knives. It's not that those knives were not sharp enough, but they were still not very handy after all, because the fish was a bit too big so he thought of using the sword that might be a holy sword to dissect the fish, fish. Of course, although he understood what was going on, he couldn't really tell the truth, so he just said, I, picked up, this sword from a tattered hat. 
I saw that the sword is quite sharp. So I used it to kill fish. What's wrong, Headmaster Dumbledore, is there something wrong with this sword? Dumbledore, this is more than just a problem. This is a big problem. This is Gryffindor's holy sword. You actually use it to kill fish. That's what he thought, but Dumbledore could never say that, so he could only shake his head and said, there is nothing wrong with this sword, but you are only 11 years old and you can't hold such a dangerous weapon. Now, let's go ahead. Leave it to me for safekeeping, and as for the fish, I'll have the house elves come and take care of it. I was a little surprised to see that Dumbledore didn't use the topic to make use of Yi Feng. When Yi Feng saw that he had been busy for a long time but decomposed less than half of the big fish, he decisively took out the holy sword of Gryffindor and handed it to Dumbledore. Dumbledore was relieved to see Yi Feng handing the holy sword back to him without any knowledge, but when he smelled the strong fishy smell from the spotless sword, he instinctively frowned. Hi, I can't have this sword. It's not that I can't put it back in the sorting hat. It's definitely not that I don't think it's too fishy. It's just that I need to change it to a safer place. Yes, I need to change it to a safer place. Dumbledore left, and Yi Feng looked at the world and felt that time was almost up. He and Hermione cleaned up, washed their hands, cleaned up the fishy smell on their bodies, and walked back along the path back to the academy. Add Angelica Diarica first, then Sanhua, cough, the Sichuan peppercorns and dried ginger need to be fried first. Well, I just happened to bring a small walk over. While frying the peppercorns and dried ginger, I smashed the purple kamong, amamum villosum, nutmeg, and cinnamon first. In a low voice, Yi Feng methodically processed one ingredient after another, which made Snape on the podium nod happily. The only drawback was that because the location was a bit close to him, the Sichuan peppercorns and dried ginger tasted a bit choking when fried. A few minutes later, Yi Feng mashed the fried Sichuan peppercorns and chili peppers, mixed with cloves, aniseed, fennel, woody incense, galangal, etc. into foam, and finally mixed them all with the previous purple komori, amamum villosum, etc. It smells so good, but classmate Yi Feng, what kind of potion did you make this time? Why is this potion in powder form? Is it meant to be sprinkled? Hearing Snape's words, Yi Feng hesitated for a moment, but finally decided to tell the truth. After all, Snape had promised him that as long as he could refine the potions he arranged, he could tinker with other ones, and he could choose at will within a certain range. Even with the magic potion, he can't burn the bridge. Professor Snape, the thing I refined is called 13 incense. It is indeed used for spreading. Yi Feng did not lie. This thing is indeed used for spreading, but it is not used for attacking, but used for seasoning. Although the food at Hogwarts is quite good, Yi Feng still doesn't like British food. He still prefers Chinese food, so Yi Feng decided to open a small stove for himself. However, it is a pity that the ingredients used in cooking are also very different due to different eating habits, so Yi Feng had to tinker with various seasonings before cooking by himself, so he came up with the method of making in potions class. The 13 incense scene. At this moment, Snape didn't realize anything. After all, if I didn't tell you that it was a condiment, who could guess its use from the name Shisanxiong? Snape is like this now, so he asked me to refine a brand new potion. Then, oh, a brand new potion, can you tell me what this potion does? Yi Feng, E-M-M-M-M-M, remove mutton, enhance flavor, increase freshness, and add fragrance. Yi Feng also felt a little guilty when he mentioned the effects of 13 incense. After all, it was obvious at a glance that this effect was not something that a serious potion could achieve. Snape, N airy summation, backquote. What's the purpose? Can you? Dot say it again. Snape had a question mark when he heard what Yi Feng said. It removes mutton, enhances flavor, adds freshness and fragrance. It is especially suitable for marinating mutton. I strongly recommend that the house elves in the kitchen add a little bit when cooking mutton and other meats with a fishy mutton smell. Gulu. Ronald, who was sitting on the other side of Yi Feng, looked at Snape, whose face darkened as soon as Yi Feng finished speaking. He couldn't help but swallowed, and his body instinctively shrank toward Harry and away from Yi Feng. Although he admitted that the condiments made by Yi Feng were delicious, he was already salivating a little just hearing about the effect of the 13 spices, but looking at Snape's face, he was afraid that Yi Feng would splash it after a while. His face was covered in blood, 
so he thought it would be better to stay away and be a little transparent. Are you sure this thing you are talking about is a magic potion? Yes, I'm sure. Snape's tone was already quite dangerous, but Yi Feng still gave a very positive answer. After all, he couldn't admit directly that this was just a seasoning, right? Hearing Yi Feng's answer, Snape laughed angrily. Seeing that Snape actually smiled, Yi Feng couldn't help but get hairy, and a layer of goosebumps visibly appeared on his arms. Very good, very good. Then tell me why your so-called 13 incense is called a potion. As a friendly reminder, if you can convince me or refute me, not only will I not blame you, but I will also give Gryffindor 10 points. In the future, you you can also continue to make this, magic potion, in my classroom. But if you don't convince me. Snape didn't finish what he said, but judging from his expression, if Yi Feng really refused to convince him or if Snape couldn't find a reason to refute, then he might lose his skin. Although Yi Feng felt that he might be doomed this time, he still wanted to try harder, so he took a deep breath and said, Professor Snape, what is your definition of a magic potion? Snape wasn't quite sure why Yi Feng asked this question, but he still answered truthfully. A magic potion is a potion that is made by boiling various magic materials so that it can exert some strange effects. Note, potions are not only water-soluble. Potions, powders, pills, ointments, etc. can all be collectively referred to as potions. Yi Feng's eyes lit up when he heard Snape's answer, and he immediately said, since Professor Snape also said that a magic potion is a potion that is made by brewing various magic materials to produce some strange effects, then my 10 why can't 3 incense be a magic potion? Snape's eyes flashed slightly when he heard Yi Feng's rhetorical question. He knew that the little guy in front of him had caught the loophole in his previous sentence, so he directly added, the magic potion needs to work magic, no matter it is used it can be used for combat or treatment, but your 13 incense only removes the fishy smell from meat and is used as seasoning. I would like to ask Mr. Yi Feng, how can a condiment be called a magic potion? Even if its effect of removing fishy smell is indeed very strong, it is still just a condiment and not a real magic potion. No, no, Professor Snape, you cannot deny that it is a type of potion just because it can be used as a condiment. Why can't 13 incense be a magic potion? All the materials he uses are selected from the materials you gave, and I also used magic guidance during the refining process, and it does work when it works. With the participation of magic power, its ability to remove fishy smell is effective even if it is placed on magical animals. Whether it is the process of refining or the process of exerting its effect, these 13 incense are in line with Professor Snape's definition of a potion. So Professor Snape, I think the 13 incense I made is a potion. But I just used it as a seasoning. You can't deny that the potion called 13 fragrances is a potion just because I use it as a seasoning. This is wrong. Snape. Underscore. Although he was speechless, Snape had to say that Yi Fang's ability to quibble was indeed very strong. Not to mention, although he clearly knew that there must be something wrong with his retort, even he was still convinced by this set of rhetoric. There was some hesitation. In the end, Snape, who was not good at words and even less argumentative, had to admit Yi Fang's argument and admitted that the 13 incense he refined was one of the potions, and after obtaining Yi Fang's consent, he seriously copied the recipe into the potion formula collection. Although this was just an ordinary debate, his victory or defeat had an extremely profound impact on potion science, because since then, once the restrictions on potion types were opened, a large number of new ones emerged in a short period of time magic potion, and the leader among them is Yi Feng. Of course, during this process, Yi Feng also successfully made the school add several school rules. For example, you are not allowed to bring an alchemy furnace with a size of more than 50 centimeters to the potions classroom to make alchemy, and you are not allowed to cook hot pot base, especially spicy ones, in the potions classroom. Pot bottom ingredients and the like. The news that Yi Feng defeated Snape quickly spread throughout the academy like the wind. Zhang Chu from Ravenclaw was very happy when she heard the news, because her brother was good enough for her as her sister. Naturally, it is also a matter of honor. However, she almost choked on her own saliva when she heard that Yi Feng was arguing with Professor Snape about whether 13 incenses were potions. Others don't understand what 13 fragrances are, so how can she understand? After all, that thing had already appeared during the Northern Song Dynasty, 
and many different formulas were developed subsequently, so she still knew about this famous condiment. But Ji Gui knew that it was impossible for her to tell him. After all, he was her brother, and it was impossible for her to expose her brother. Oh, this guy was quite honest at home. I didn't expect that he would become so naughty after he came to school. It must be those guys from the Lion Academy who have led my brother to bad behavior. Fortunately, Zhang Chu said this from the bottom of his heart. If he really said this and was heard by others and spread to Gryffindor, then Harry and the others would definitely be aggrieved, because Yi Feng didn't need to be taught at all, or it could be said that he was a fearful person. The kind that doesn't cause chaos, it can be said that he is the most noisy among all Gryffindors. Yi Feng didn't know that Zhang Chu from Ravenclaw was extremely happy after hearing that he had defended Snape. After all, although they were on the same campus, they were in different grades and colleges, so it was difficult to find them without actively looking for them, met each other. What's more, Zhang Chu belongs to Ravenclaw, and Ravenclaw are all top students who love learning, so they don't run around. Fortunately, Yi Feng has not forgotten his sister. After successfully making the 13 incense, Yi Feng didn't just keep it for himself. He immediately went to the kitchen to try it out. He found that the effect of removing fishy smell and adding fragrance was quite good, so he just started using it himself. The condiments made a great meal. When Harry and the others saw the dishes that Yi Feng brought out were made by the house elves of the college, they were not even the same as the dishes that Yi Feng brought out before, but they tasted more attractive and looked better. Even the always rational Hermione couldn't help but swallow. Yi Feng, I love you to death. Ronald, who had been aroused by Snape's potions class as early as possible, couldn't help it anymore. He cheered and jumped towards the potion that Yi Feng put on the table dishes, but the next second he screamed and retracted his hand. How many times have I told you? If you want to eat my food, you can't be in a hurry, and you can't just take it with your hands. I've already sat down. After hearing what Yi Feng said, Ronald touched the back of his somewhat red hands, but for the sake of the delicious food in front of him, he sat back obediently and picked up the knife and fork in front of him, but he was stunned the next second because he found that the knives and forks that used to be so easy to use didn't seem to be very useful now. Seeing Ronald clumsily using a fork to pick up a piece of sweet and sour pork ribs, Yi Feng almost couldn't help laughing. That thing was sweet and sour pork ribs. Although there was a layer of batter hanging on the outside, it looked like a piece of boneless meat. It is indeed a piece of ribs, so if you want to use a fork to fork it, it is not much different from using a fork to fork a stone. Seeing Ronald wanting to eat but unable to fork it, Yi Feng looked anxious but did not remind him. Instead, he nodded towards Hermione and Harry, and then pulled Neville, who was sitting on the other side of Ronald and was swallowing his saliva, to sit in his seat and turned around. Walk towards Ravenclaw. Although the cafeteria of Hogwarts does not clearly delineate which area is the dining area of which house, Due to personality or habits, people from the same house will basically sit together to eat, and there will rarely or even not be mixed together. Case. Therefore, when Yi Feng left Gryffindor's dining area and walked towards Ravenclaw's dining area, not only Harry and the others put down their knives and forks and looked at him with puzzled faces, but also the students from other colleges also stopped their hands. Action looked at him. Faced with everyone's gaze, Yi Feng didn't care at all. He still walked forward steadily and finally stopped next to a girl who was about the same age as him, with delicate appearance and the same skin color as him. Everyone else stopped, Zhang Chu was no exception, and when she saw Yi Feng coming this way, she already knew that Yi Feng must have come to see her, but Yi Feng actually came here at this time. Looking for her made her heart beat fast. Although she was so nervous that her heart was pounding, Zhang Chu did not suffer from stage fright. She said softly, Why are you here? Do you need help with anything? Hearing Zhang Chu's words, Yi Feng said that he was not touched. It would be a lie. After all, he had never enjoyed the care of his sister in this life or the previous life. Therefore, when Zhang Chu saw him coming over, the first thing he thought of was that he was Yi Feng was quite moved when there was no need for her help. But it's a pity that Zhang Chu guessed wrong. Yi Feng really couldn't think of anything that he needed help from others at Hogwarts. And the reason why he came here at this time was naturally because he made a sumptuous meal. Dinner is going to be shared with her. Therefore, 
Yi Fang shook his head and looked at the girl next to Zhang Chu who could score 90% in appearance but only 70% in figure, nonsense, he is not a Duluo, what kind of figure can a 12-year-old girl have very gentleman he said, this beautiful lady, could you please sit a little to the side. Yi Fang's name is well known in Hogwarts, and European and American girls are relatively precocious, both physically and mentally. Therefore, when Yi Fang said this, the girl not only did not get angry, but moved to the side with excitement on her face. He moved a little, and his desire to read gossip and watch the excitement was completely reflected on his face. In fact, it's not just this girl, other people looking here also have the same mentality. Even Dumbledore, who is sitting at the top and dining, slightly raised the corners of his mouth as if to watch the fun. The only difference is probably that he is sitting there. Hermione was in the Gryffindor dining area. Although Hermione still had a watchful expression on her face at this moment, if you look carefully, you can see that the smile on her face is a little forced, and the little hands placed under the table are even more entangled, and my fingertips turned white because I worked too hard. And in the midst of everyone's attention, Yi Feng took away the food in front of Zhang Chu with a wave of his hand, and then released a lot of steaming and fragrant dishes from the space ring with a wave of his hand. I made it myself, and I don't know if it tastes to your liking. Oh, when Yi Feng said this, the whole restaurant was boiling. The girls looked at Zhang Chu with envy, especially the Gryffindor girls, because some of them had not only smelled the food made by Yi Feng, some of them I've even had the pleasure of tasting. Facing the many calls and the faint words of, together, even Yi Feng couldn't help but blush. Before putting the chopsticks he had just made on the table, he left a sentence, you eat first, if you like it, if you say that, I will make it for you every day from now on, then he ran away. As Yi Feng ran back to the Gryffindor dining area, there were boos from behind him. In fact, Yi Feng was not afraid of the boos. He was afraid that these people would misunderstand the booing and would really not be able to stand down until then, so he ran away decisively. When he returned to the Gryffindor table, he found that Harry and the others still hadn't been able to eat the food. While the food was being served, he squeezed in next to Hermione and sat down and said, don't just wait and eat. You don't know how to eat it, do you? Okay, watch it, I'm only going to teach you once. After saying that, Yi Feng turned around and reached into the inside of Hermione's wizard robe to take out her wand. Then he took out his wand and rubbed them together on the table, then used them as chopsticks to pick up a piece of steaming braised pork ribs. Have you learned? This is how you eat Chinese food. Knives and forks don't work in Chinese food. You have to use chopsticks. However, today I forgot to get two more pairs of chopsticks, so I just used a wand to make do. Anyway, it's pretty much the same. Chapter 31 Have you learned? This is how you eat Chinese food. Knives and forks don't work in Chinese food. You have to use chopsticks. However, today I forgot to get two more pairs of chopsticks, so I just used a wand to make do. Anyway, it's pretty much the same. Seeing Yi Feng using his wand as so-called chopsticks, he skillfully picked up a piece of braised pork ribs and put it into his mouth. Hermione, who was originally in a daze, widened her eyes and her cute little mouth opened slightly involuntarily. Um, Yi Feng, who was chewing the ribs in his mouth, saw Hermione's small mouth slightly open and thought she wanted to eat it too, so he hummed in confusion, and naturally picked up another piece that was slightly smaller, but with more meat and more meat. The pieces of pork ribs that were easy to fall off the bones were stuffed directly into her mouth. Hermione, hum, hum, good time. The expression on Hermione's face kept changing after the ribs entered her mouth. When she instinctively bit the ribs in her mouth and tasted the deliciousness of the ribs, only a happy and satisfied smile remained on her face. Ronald, who had been greedy for a long time next to him, almost drooled when he saw this. He also followed Yi Fang's example and took out his own wand, but unfortunately he only had one wand, so. Ronald, Harry, the next second, the two voices sounded at the same time. Ronald, Harry, let me borrow your wand and let me use it. Harry Potter, don't even think about it. Don't be so stingy. The worst is, one person will be pinched once. No, the wand is for performing magic, not for picking up food. Besides, you can borrow it from someone else. Ronald, who was about to snatch Harry's wand, his eyes lit up when he heard Harry's words. Yeah, if Harry's doesn't work, I can ask someone else to borrow it. 
And who said you have to use a wand? Just two small sticks of suitable length and thickness. Ronald ran out after thinking of this. About two or three minutes later, Ronald ran back with a straight branch as thick as chopsticks. When Yi Feng saw the branch that Ronald had brought back, he remembered that his space ring also contained a pair of chopsticks that were used to mix seasonings, so he took it out. He cleaned it up and handed it to Hermione. Hermione should have been very happy when she got the chopsticks, but for some reason she felt a little bit disappointed in her heart. However, this disappointment was quickly dispelled by the smell of the large pile of delicious food in front of her. After nearly an hour, Ronald reluctantly put down the chopsticks in his hands after picking out the last piece of spicy chicken nuggets from the chili. Yi Feng also cleaned up the wand, which was stained with a lot of oil, and gave it back to Hermione. Although Yi Feng cooked a lot of dishes, sharing is also a virtue, so all the dishes that were enough for six adults were eaten, but Ronald was more greedy but couldn't use chopsticks well, so he ate until now, resulting in by the time they finished eating, everyone else had already left. Ah, I'm so full, Yi Feng, I. I can't seem to get up, please give me a hand. Yi Feng, not underscore not. Although he had a look of disgust on his face, Yi Feng still stretched out his hand to pull Ronald up, who was slumped on the chair and unable to get up. When Yi Feng pulled Ronald up, our Miss Granger reached out her little hand and grabbed Yi Feng without leaving a trace. Feng's robe took advantage of the force and stood up. Harry was not so shameless. He ate less and stood up after holding on to the table. As for Neville, his temper was too cowardly, so when Yi Feng and the others were halfway through eating, he went back first. When leaving the restaurant, Harry and Hermione felt that Ronald was too full and decided not to rest in the lounge for now, but to take a walk outside to eat, and then, they walked until dark. Although Hogwarts does not have late study hall, they do not allow students to leave the lounge and wander around the campus at night. Especially after nightfall, there will be people patrolling to catch and punish little wizards who wander at night, and this person is called Fayer Key, and he has a cat that does not catch mice but only catches students who wander at night. Because of this cat, many students who went out at night could not escape his pursuit. Although Harry and the others were brave enough, they did not want to be caught, so they quickened their pace on the way back. However, sometimes the more hasty you are, the more likely it is that problems will arise. Just when they stepped onto the stairs leading to the lounge, the maze-like stairs that stretched in all directions began to move, which forced Yi Feng and the others to speed up their pace. However, when they walked out of the stairs while they paused as the stairs changed positions, they discovered that they had unknowingly arrived at the third floor, which Dumbledore had warned students that they were never allowed to go. Seeing that this was actually the third floor, Harry and the others were a little anxious, but Yi Feng looked thoughtful at the ever-changing stairs, because he realized that no matter how they walked, they would end up here, because just now the purpose of changing the stairs was to take them to the third floor, which was the door of the room in front of them. Are we about to start? Did you do it, Principal Dumbledore? Although it's not a threat, it's not a bad idea to go over and have a look. It's better than going back to sleep. As Harry and Hermione were debating whether to open the door and go in, a soft meow sounded from beneath their feet. Oops, it's Mrs. Norris. Seeing Harry squatting on the ground and looking at their cute furry kitten, their expressions changed drastically. Without thinking, they pushed open the door that they had just avoided like snakes and scorpions, rushed in, and kept running forward. Not knowing how far he ran, Ronald stopped panting and gasped, Ha! Huh. Harry, we, should get rid of Mrs. Norris, right? Meow, Ronald. Sigma, Sue degree D degree winking face, Sue. Hearing the cat meowing very close to them, Harry and Ronald ran away without looking back. But what made Harry and the others despair was that no matter how fast or how far they ran, Mrs. Norris's voice always sounded. It sounded like a shadow less than one meter behind them. Harry, why? Dot why are we all running, after running for so long, and Mrs. Norris's scream, scream, is still behind us? I, I don't know, maybe cats run faster. Ah, are you talking about Mrs. Loris? As he spoke, Yi Feng reached out and touched Mrs. Loris in his arms. Mrs. Norris. O equals Omega equals MMEOW. Harry, Ronald, Hermione. N Airy summation opening parenthesis D no, no. Yi Feng. Times three. Finally, amid the condemnation of Hermione and the others, Yi Feng reluctantly put down Mrs. Loris, whose hair was fluffy and soft and felt so good. 
Mrs. Loris also reluctantly meowed at Yi Feng, because the hot boy had it smells really great. Unlike Filch, who always smells musty. After Yi Feng put Mrs. Loris down, they quickly got rid of her, but now they encountered a very serious problem, they were, lost. Yi Feng naturally remembered how to go back, but Dumbledore controlled the stairs to send them here just to let them enter the secret room, so Yi Feng did not give directions, but asked Harry to lead the way, and as expected, they came to a locked door. In front of the door. Meow. Just when Harry and the others were hesitating to find another way out, Mrs. Norris's voice and Filch's excited muttering to themselves came from behind them. Get out of the way, Alaho open. Seeing that Mrs. Norris was about to bring Filch over, Hermione couldn't care less. She directly opened the lock with Alaho open, opened the door and walked in. Alaho opening, Ronald closed the door and breathed a sigh of relief. Then he remembered that Hermione had used the Alaho opening just now, so he looked at Hermione with a puzzled face. Seeing Ronald's face full of doubts, Hermione explained, It's in Chapter 7 of, Standard Spells. Don't you ever read it or preview it? Ronald immediately lowered his head when he heard Hermione's words, because Hermione was right. He had never previewed anything. It could even be said that he had never read back in the book except for what the teacher taught. Harry was better than him. But they only had to read three or four more pages than he did, and they didn't even have these words in their dictionaries. Boys sometimes always have inexplicable self-esteem. At this moment, facing Hermione's plain and natural expression, he had an inexplicable feeling of, unconvinced, in his heart, so he whispered in a low voice, yes. What a great thing, Yi Feng should be able to do it too. Although Ronald said this in a low voice, Hermione was right next to him, so Hermione naturally heard his low murmur. This made her a little sad, but soon her discomfort was matched by Ronald's dissatisfaction. Disappeared because they found that Yi Feng and Harry were both looking at the furry thing in front of them quietly. Is this a three-headed dog? In addition to being bigger, it seems like. Ah, before Yi Feng finished speaking, as the three-headed dog was awakened and slowly stood up, three screams sounded from around him. Well, a threatening low growl sounded, and then the three-headed dog, which Yi Feng judged was just a bit bigger but not vicious, opened its big mouth in the middle and bit Yi Feng because Yi Feng was standing closest. Boom, just when the big mouth of the three-headed dog was still about one meter away from Yi Feng, Yi Feng's eyes suddenly widened and he reached out to cover his nose. At the same time, he raised his other hand and quickly fanned out. With a loud noise, before Harry and the others could react, the dog's head, which they thought was terrifying, hit the floor with a thud. At the moment they were stunned, Yi Feng turned around decisively and grabbed Hermione's arm. The little hand ran out of the door with lightning speed and closed the door smoothly. It's so scary. Fortunately, I ran fast, otherwise I would have been smoked to death inside. At this moment, behind their door. Three-headed dog. What terrible humans. Hagrid, I want to go home. I don't want to sleep here anymore. Hagrid, come and save me. Zero DQ. In front of the three-headed dog. Harry, did something swipe past just now? Ronald, that seems to be the case. Wait, where are Yi Feng and Hermione? Did they abandon us and run away? Ronald, Harry, the door is locked. Yi Feng, Hermione, open the door quickly. Bang bang bang. Harry and Ronald, who finally came to their senses, turned around and ran away almost at the same time. However, when they tried to open the door, they found that it was actually locked. This made them instantly panic because of the long hair behind them. The three-headed thing swallowed them up one by one without chewing. And Yi Feng, Hermione, did we forget something? Hearing Yi Feng's words, Hermione, who had not yet come back to her senses, replied in a daze, is there any? There shouldn't be, right? Harry, Ronald, sure enough, there is no me in your story. We are all irrelevant outsiders. Although Hermione did not come back to her senses and forgot about Ronald and the others behind her, Yi Feng was still a little more reliable. After hearing the sound of the door being smashed, he immediately used Alaho to open the door again, and before us Ronald, who was so frightened that he burst into tears when he opened it, and Harry, who looked a little broken, rushed out immediately. You guys, are you okay? Yi Feng felt a hint of unbearability flash in his heart when he saw the appearance of the two of them, so he comforted them and closed the open door behind them. 
When Yi Fang closed the door, the three-headed dog behind the door suddenly took two steps back and looked at Yi Fang in horror. He was relieved when he saw that Yi Fang just closed the door, but he still didn't dare to approach the door. He also did not give up the entrance to the secret room at his feet. While the three-headed dog behind the door breathed a sigh of relief, Harry and the others also breathed a sigh of relief. God knows how scared they were when they found themselves locked in, and there was a three-headed dog behind them that could eat them alive one by one. Even if they ran out now, their legs were still a little weak. Therefore, after seeing that Filch was gone and they were all unharmed, they unanimously decided to rush back to the lounge immediately. Of course, this time, although they still didn't know the way, they still miraculously returned to the stairs. After stepping on the stairs back to the lounge on the second floor, Harry and the others finally recovered completely. What are they doing? They locked such a terrifying creature in the school. Ronald, who was so frightened that tears burst out of his eyes, was the first to speak. For some reason, Hermione wanted to quarrel with Ronald when he opened his mouth, so she responded directly and unceremoniously, what are your eyes for? Didn't you see that they were standing on something? Quote, I didn't look at its feet, I just looked at its heads. Haven't you noticed? It actually has three heads. Ronald was not a vegetarian, so he immediately retorted. He was standing on a trap door, which means it didn't just happen to be standing there. It was probably guarding something. Seeing that the two were about to quarrel, Harry quickly interjected. What is he guarding? Maybe, but no matter what he is guarding, we can't inquire about it. Our small bodies can't defeat it. Three-headed dog. Ah, yes, yes, you can't beat me. I accidentally knocked myself on the floor just now. It was definitely not someone who slapped me on the floor. After hearing Yi Feng's words, Harry and Ronald's eagerness for adventure was immediately extinguished by a bucket of cold water poured over them. However, the reason why the protagonists are protagonists is because they possess extremely powerful souls seeking death crossed out spirit of adventure. So not long after they separated from Yi Feng and Hermione and returned to the dormitory, the two people, whose scars were not healed, had completely forgotten the pain, and immediately got together and started discussing what was under the trap door. Of course, Yi Feng's words had some effect after all, so although they discussed it, they didn't really want to take action. This matter was quickly forgotten by them because Harry was about to start practicing. Quidditch. As for Yi Feng, he has no interest in Quidditch, so although he, Zhang Chu and Hermione all bought 2,000 nimbuses, apart from adding a few protective circles to Hermione, Zhang Chu and their broomsticks, he had never touched a broomstick again, because he was now completely immersed in studying transfiguration, until one day during dinner, Quirrell burst into the restaurant yelling. Yeah, with a loud creaking sound, the door of the restaurant was pushed open from the outside, and then a man with his head tightly wrapped in a scarf and dressed very similar to Ah San rushed in with a shout. There is a troll in the underground classroom. Sue D. Sue frightened. There is a troll in the underground classroom. Zero DQ was afraid with a hint of crying. There's a troll in the basement. I think I should come and inform you. After saying this, Quirrell fell to the ground and lay prone on the aisle. Ah, seeing Quirrell fainted on the ground, and what he said before fainting, the whole restaurant screamed instantly. Yi Feng, who had seen Quirrell's expression without any acting skills from beginning to end, was expressionless at the moment, but otherwise when everyone stood up and was at a loss, he also stood up. Of course, unlike the others, who were at a loss and didn't know what to do, Yi Feng had a clear purpose, so two seconds later, a long leg that was not big but relatively slender among his peers stopped at next to Quirrell's head. Voldemort. Katakana middle dot he katakana middle dot. Yi Feng. Lift your feet. Voldemort. Key back quote D. Yi Feng. The raised foot fell down. Voldemort. Don't come here. Zero DQ. Although Voldemort, who was parasitic on the back of Quirrell's head, was extremely angry, he could only watch helplessly as the small but firm and powerful foot landed on his face for the sake of his next plan. Even though there was a hood between them, Voldemort could still feel the grooves in the soles of that small shoe. Especially the feeling that the grooves in the soles were deeply imprinted on his face was extremely clear, and he didn't know if it was him. It was an illusion that the foot seemed to have crushed him when it left his face. Why is that thing so painful? Voldemort. Don't let me know who you are. When the foot moved away from his face, Voldemort vaguely heard these words that made him furious. 
Unfortunately, the owner of the foot left quickly, and he happened to be stepped on in the eye just now, so by the time he recovered, the man had already gone away, and more importantly, Dumbledore on the stage spoke. Dumbledore on the stage saw the mess of the little wizards below and shouted loudly, asking these little wizards to stop. Quiet, please don't panic. Now, please prefects, please lead the students from each house back to their respective dormitories. The teachers will go to the underground classroom with me. Dumbledore was still very prestigious. Almost instantly, the little wizards who were in chaos and full of panic calmed down and walked to the lounge in an orderly manner under the leadership of the prefects. In the original play, the reason why Harry and the others left was because Ronald's words hurt Hermione and made her hide in the toilet and cry all afternoon. Therefore, after hearing the news about the troll, Harry and Ronald left the team to find Hermione. But now, Ronald didn't say anything to hurt Hermione at all, so Hermione was quietly following Yi Feng back to the dormitory with her Gryffindor classmates, so Yi Feng was wondering if Harry and the others would leave the team. It turns out that Yi Feng underestimated the inertia of the plot. Halfway through, Ronald suddenly held his stomach and started shouting that he needed to go to the toilet. Judging from the expression on his face, it was not just an act. He was really hungry. At this time, Yi Feng thought the Weasley twins gave him a pumpkin lollipop during the meal before getting up, but he didn't like it very much so he handed it to Ronald instead. Did those two guys add ingredients to that lollipop? Yi Feng had a headache when he thought of the Weasley twins, Ronald's two twin brothers, because these two guys couldn't put Yi Feng into it. After joining the gang, he tried to trick him every day, but unfortunately he never fell into the trap. This time it was probably the same as before. Unfortunately, Yi Feng instinctively sensed something was wrong and handed the lollipop to their dear brother. The result was now obvious. Let's go, I hope you can hurry up, and I hope the troll didn't come out and stay in the underground classroom. Although the blame ultimately fell on Ronald's two brothers, he was the one who handed the candy to Ronald after all, so Yi Feng felt that he still couldn't leave him alone and went back to the dormitory first. More importantly, Yi Feng really wanted to see what this so-called troll was. It could actually scare a professor of defense against dark arts at Hogwarts to such an extent that the other teachers did not suspect that it was a scam. Maybe it was because the Weasley twins were powerful enough, or maybe because he was afraid of encountering a giant monster. In short, Ronald's steps were quite fast, but it was a pity that his luck was not very good. I don't know if it was some wafting smell or the sound coming from here that attracted the troll. In short, less than three minutes after Ronald entered, there was a monster about five meters tall, covered in green skin and holding a huge wooden stick in his hand. The humanoid monster slowly walked toward them. Is this the giant monster? It feels a bit ruo. It's not as powerful as the three-headed dog before. Besides, I just remembered that today is Halloween. Yi Feng remembered it when he saw the pumpkin lantern at the foot of the giant monster. Today is Halloween. Speaking of which, for Halloween, do you have to dress up as a ghost or something to ask for candy? How about putting on some light makeup? When Yi Feng was distracted by his thoughts, the troll was less than 10 meters away from the toilet door, and Hermione behind him was desperately pulling him back. At the same time, the slender white hand was also he covered Yi Feng's mouth to prevent any shocking words from coming out of his mouth and attracting the troll. As for Harry, he was reminding Ronald in a low voice that the troll was coming this way, asking him to start moving and move faster. After all, the troll was not locked up this time. When the troll was less than two meters away from the toilet, Hermione pulled Yi Feng and hid in one of the toilets. Harry and Ronald also hid and tried not to make any noise, trying to hide and wait for the troll to leave on its own. However, someone had deliberately let the troll in, so the next second a huge head poked over Harry and the others from above the toilet. Ah, this was the second time Yi Feng heard such a loud scream today, and the second Hermione heard Harry's screams, she pushed open the toilet door and rushed out and took out her wand. However, it is a pity that although Hermione is very talented in magic and is very diligent after class and has learned many more spells than others, she is still only a first-year student after all. She has not learned any offense or defense at all. The magic of sex. Therefore, when the troll raised the wooden stick in his hand and was about to swing it down with all his strength, her mind went blank. However, Hermione was worthy of Harry Potter's IQ ceiling. In just a moment, she thought of a solution. Wingardium, 
Leviosa. Although she has not learned Expelliarmus, the floating spell can also get rid of the enemy's weapons if used properly. However, even without the wooden stick, the troll is still a troll after all, so when the troll turns around and looks over, Hermione's little face turned a little white. As Hermione was desperately trying to think of a way to escape safely, a hand grabbed her and pulled her behind her. Collapse. Boom. With a loud noise, the troll fell down, and Hermione looked at the giant monster that was knocked unconscious on the ground with a wooden stick and the questions in its head were filled with questions. As this, fainting. Perhaps seeing Hermione's confusion, Yi Feng withdrew the wand that controlled the troll stick and explained, there are actually two types of fainting. One is the more common magic version, which directly makes the person who is cursed fall into coma. This is the physical version, and I need to use external force to make the target fall into coma. Of course, this strength requires relatively in-depth experience to be able to control it correctly, otherwise it will easily become a wild goose chase. Seeing the serious Yi Feng talking nonsense, Hermione, who had been tense all the time, burst into laughter. At this time, Harry and Ronald opened the toilet door and walked out. The troll is solved. In many American movies or TV series, the police or the army always arrive late after the incident is over. At this moment, Professor McGonagall and the others also arrived late after Yi Feng and the others solved the troll. My dear, I hope you too can. Oh. Mr. Yi Feng and Miss Granger are here too. I hope you can give me an explanation. Hearing McGonagall's words, Ronald's face turned red immediately, because he couldn't say that he just had a bad stomach and ran out to go to the toilet, only to encounter a troll halfway up, right? That's it. I read about the trolls in the book and was very interested in them, so I dragged Harry and the others out to look for the trolls. Yi Feng saw Ronald's embarrassment, and he also understood this matter. He couldn't escape the relationship, so he took the initiative to take the matter upon himself. Professor McGonagall showed an expression as expected when she heard Yi Feng's words. However, she still knew a little about Yi Feng's strength. This was a little guy who had tricked Dumbledore many times while he was on guard. Can she face it head on? I dare not say that when dealing with giant monsters, there is absolutely no problem in protecting others from running away. Therefore, Although Professor McGonagall's face was still serious, his tone of voice was much gentler. I hope you know the seriousness of this matter. You must know that it is quite dangerous for even a senior wizard to face an adult mountain troll. In view of your reckless actions, Gryffindor will be deducted five points. Quote, because Yi Feng and the others were not trying to save people like in the play, their points were not added back after being deducted. And Quirrell, or Voldemort behind him, saw Yi Feng at the moment he became so excited that he didn't even look at Harry again even though he was right next to him. It's him. It must be him. This guy stepped on me just now. Quirrell, find a way to kill him. You must find a way to kill him. Listening to his master's roar that resounded in his mind, even Quirrell, who had gradually become accustomed to being parasitized, felt dizzy. He had never seen Voldemort so angry, but thinking of what happened to him when he pretended to fall to the ground, Voldemort it seems normal to be so angry. At the same time, Yi Feng, who was, obediently, listening to Professor McGonagall's teachings, couldn't help but frown slightly, because Voldemort's overwhelming anger and murderous intent had already overflowed, even if he restrained himself 100%. With 99.9 .9 points of spiritual power, I can still feel that thought. This Voldemort is really petty. Didn't I just step on you? What's more, this is not your body, it is Quirrell's body. While Yi Feng was muttering in his heart, he was also thinking about whether to just do it directly. This is good for Voldemort. Anyway, this guy has no body now. If he wants to, he only needs a soul attack to send him away. Forget it, let's keep it. This is Hermione's graduation exam. If we kill it early, Hermione and the others won't be able to graduate perfectly. Oh Autumn. Suddenly, Quirrell sneezed inexplicably and shivered. It was at this time that Professor McGonagall remembered that he had just been attacked by a troll here, and the toilet faucet next to him that was crushed by the troll was still running. The water is flowing out. Okay, although this giant monster has been dealt with, we are still not sure that there are no other giant monsters. You guys should go back to the dormitory quickly. You will not be allowed to come out again until you are notified. 
Yes, Professor McGonagall. Seeing that Professor McGonagall had finally finished his lecture, Yi Feng and the others quickly agreed, but when they were about to return to the dormitory stairs, Yi Feng suddenly stopped and asked Harry and the others to go back first. Harry, Hermione, please go back first, I have something to do. When they heard that Yi Feng was not going back, Harry and Hermione immediately offered to stay, but in the end they were rejected by Yi Feng. After Yi Feng promised to stay here and not go far to other places, Harry and the others saw that Yi Feng didn't look like he was going to cause trouble, so they agreed to go back first. After Harry and the others left, Yi Feng hummed a tune and began to walk back. As he walked, he took out a small amount of flour from the space ring and smeared it on his face, making his face extremely pale. Of course, this is just the first layer of disguise, because when he started to apply flour, the sound of Yi Feng's footsteps suddenly disappeared. If someone is lying on the ground, you can see that Yi Feng's feet are off the ground at this moment, but because of the height it's only about 5 centimeters so it's hard to spot if you're not paying attention. Oh oh oh, little guy in front of you, stop. Let me see which little guy is misbehaving and goes out for a night walk at night. Just when Yi Feng was using his immortal power and divine consciousness to need a piece of tape material to shape it into a Voldemort mask, a voice suddenly came from behind and stopped him. Oh, it's Mr. Nick. Excuse me, are you okay? Yi Feng did not look back when he answered, but he put away the half-finished mask without leaving any trace. Hey, little guy, come back and let me see who is out for a night out on Halloween. Don't you know? that there will be scary witches coming out to catch children this night. This sentence was quite normal at the beginning, but later on the tone became sinister, and it changed directly from a male voice to a hoarse female voice. Hearing this, Yi Feng not only didn't feel scared but wanted to laugh a little, so he thought about it and said calmly, Mr. Nick, have you heard of a story? There is a warning in a distant country. When you are driving alone at night, you must not stop the person in front of you casually, because. As he spoke, Yi Feng slowly turned around and looked at the man with a bright smile. Looking at Nick. Ah, 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 ah. The screams echoed throughout Hogwarts. The wizards who were already extremely worried about the trolls all trembled in fear when they heard the screams. Even Dumbledore was frightened. He shuddered, and the people who caused all of this were naturally Nick, who was almost headless, and opposite him, Yi Feng, whose face was pale and exactly the same as Nick's. Yes, at the moment he turned around, Yi Feng used the transformation technique to change his face into Nick's face, and then, the effect was outstanding. Yi Feng sad face p underscore p. Ha 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 ha, to be honest, when it comes to pretending to be a ghost or something like that, pretending to be a vampire or something to scare people is just too weak. This is the real scary thing. After scaring Nick away, Yi Feng continued to walk forward. After walking 20 or 30 meters, he turned a corner and continued walking for less than 2 meters. Yi Feng was stopped again, and this time the person who stopped him was not the ghost was Quirrell, or Voldemort. Stop, are you Yi Feng? You're still wandering outside so late. Come back with me quickly. While saying this, Quirrell had quickly walked behind Yi Feng and reached out to grab Yi Feng's shoulder. When his hand fell on Yi Feng's shoulder, he had not finished speaking. It was stuck, because his hand on the opponent's shoulder seemed to be caught on an ice cube. It was not only ice but also very hard. Boom, almost at the same time, there was a thunder in the sky, and through that moment of light, Quirrell finally understood why the person in front of him was silent all the way, because the other person did not step on the ground at all. Gulu, although the most terrifying dark lord in the entire wizarding world lives behind his head, and although living ghosts can be seen wandering around Hogwarts all day long, at this moment Quirrell still felt endless fear in his heart. He recalled certain midnight legends from eastern countries. Are you, calling me? While saying this, Yi Feng's head turned 180 degrees to look at Quirrell behind him, and when Quirrell saw the, person, in front of him turn around when the appearance of his face appeared, the screams sounded from Hogwarts again. Ah 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 a shrill scream rang out, and Quirrell, frightened by his imagination, subconsciously turned around and ran away, because he felt that he might have encountered the legendary, ghost. If you find an ordinary foreigner, he may not believe that all this is true. After all, they have never been exposed to the magical world and have never seen ghosts or anything like that. But Quirrell is different, he sees it every day. 
a ghost wandering around the academy. It was precisely because he knew the existence of this kind of thing that when a terrifying existence in legend suddenly appeared in front of him, and he had no understanding of the place, fear instinctively surged into his heart. People's instinct when faced with fearful things is usually to run. The moment Quirrell was frightened, he instinctively turned around and ran away. After Quirrell turned around, Voldemort looked at the picture behind his head that was 89 times similar to the one he had turned into Voldemort. The figure's heart is also hairy. Of course, Voldemort was once the Dark Lord after all, and he was more courageous than Quirrell, but when he saw the figure floating up and following them, and slowly turning back while chasing their bodies, Voldemort was also frightened. It's not easy. Voldemort had not seen many ghosts, and he had even dealt with Dementors, but this was the first time he had seen such a strange thing. However, Voldemort, as the former Dark Lord, was still very courageous, and he was more careful than Quirrell, so he soon discovered that the thing following them was actually wearing a mask on its face. The moment he discovered this, Voldemort was so angry that his hair stood on end. Oh, is Voldemort bald and hairless? That's okay. In short, Voldemort, who thought he had discovered the truth, was so angry that he immediately asked Quirrell to stop. After hearing Voldemort's words, Quirrell suppressed the fear in his heart and stopped and took out his wand. View. A green light flashed, and a noseless mask flew out. At the same time as the mask flew out, a bolt of lightning flashed across the sky, completely illuminating the corridor. Under the illumination of lightning, a face that looked exactly like Voldemort's when he was young appeared in front of Quirrell. But what made Quirrell's legs a little weak was that the face was a little white, as if he had been dead for several days. Of course, this is not what scares Quirrell the most. What scares Quirrell the most is that the face he is familiar with is wearing a bright smile at the moment, and while, young Voldemort, is smiling brightly, two lines of blood and tears are falling from his face. Slowly flowing eyes. Boom, a closer bolt of lightning exploded, and the loud sound rattled the glass beside Quirrell and the others. Such a strange scene made Quirrell instantly feel chills all over his body, and Voldemort, who also saw all this with Quirrell's vision, couldn't help but swallow his saliva. Are you, going to play hide and seek with me? The person you find will become just like me. Hide quickly, I'm going to start counting down, don't even think about escaping, I will, watch you. While speaking, young Voldemort, was about to lie down on the wall and count, but just before he was about to lie down on the wall, he suddenly stopped and disappeared in a flash of light and shadow. When he reappeared, he was already behind Quirrell. Hey hey hey, I found you, now you want to become one with me. The, young Voldemort, who suddenly appeared behind Quirrell directly lifted the cloth on Quirrell's head and leaned his head over to look at Voldemort intently. Voldemort looked at the face that was exactly the same as his when he was young but with two lines of blood and tears, and smiled. The weird face and mind are blank. The young Voldemort looked at the old Voldemort who was parasitic on the back of Quirrell's head with a strange smile. The moment their eyes met, the air seemed to freeze. The next second. Boom. The deafening thunder sounded again, and the next second Voldemort, who had only one face behind Quirrell's head, rushed out with a whoosh. Ghost. D backquote no. Yi Feng. N airy summation opening parenthesis D no no. No one expected that Voldemort was so frightened that he rushed out of Quirrell's head with a whoosh, which frightened Yi Feng. At the same time as Voldemort rushed out, Quirrell also screamed, which was beyond Yi Feng's reach. Speed ran away without looking back. Looking at the figure that disappeared almost instantly, Yi Feng scratched his head and said with a puzzled look on his face, is it really so scary? Or is Voldemort just timid? Yi Feng didn't expect that his performance as a ghost would be so effective, but now that the person had run away, and counting the time, it was time for him to go back, so he took out a tissue and wiped the blood and tears on his face and turned it back into his own he looked like that, and just as he walked back and turned a corner, Dumbledore with an anxious look on his face was walking quickly towards him. Yi Feng, why are you here? Didn't Professor McGonagall say that you and Harry have gone back? Seeing Dumbledore, Yi Feng lowered his head guiltily and quickly wiped away the blood and flour on his face with paper. However, although Dumbledore was old, his eyesight was good, so he naturally saw Yi Feng's actions. Seeing Yi Feng's actions and thinking of the ghost crying and wolf howling just now, Dumbledore suddenly had an idea in his mind that it was the truth. Just now, wasn't it you who was pretending to be a ghost and scaring people? 
Seeing that the matter was revealed, Yi Feng stopped and raised his face, which had not been wiped clean and had blood mixed with flour that looked quite weird. He said with an innocent look, Isn't today Halloween? I heard that there is a tradition here it's on Halloween that children dress up as ghosts or something to ask for candy, am I remembering it wrong? Hearing Yi Feng's words, Dumbledore looked helpless. He sighed and said, There is such a custom, but we are in school now, and there are also trolls mixed into the school. The school is very dangerous now. You shouldn't do it now. You're pretending to be a ghost here to scare people, but you should just stay in the lounge and wait for the teachers to sort things out. Classmate Yi Feng, please wash off the paint and flour on your face and go back to the lounge. Otherwise, I will detain your Gryffindors. Eh, hey, isn't this Professor Dumbledore? Good evening, Professor Dumbledore. But who are you talking to? Quote. Dumbledore was interrupted before he finished speaking, and the person who interrupted him was another Yi Feng who walked silently from the darkness behind him. Dumbledore was a little angry at being interrupted, but the very familiar voice made him turn his head and glance behind him, and when he saw that familiar smiling face, his body suddenly stiffened because it was not by his side at the moment. Another boy with the same face was standing one meter away, looking at him with a smile. Ha! Huh, taking a long breath, Dumbledore forced himself to calm down. Although he had never seen such a scene, the wizarding world had a potion like Polyjuice potion that could completely transform into another person, so although he was shocked, Dumbledore could still control it. After calming down, Dumbledore looked at Yi Feng who came from behind and said with a serious face, What grade are you in? Polyjuice potion is not something that can be brewed and used casually. You have violated the school rules of Hogwarts. Just after Dumbledore finished speaking, Yi Feng, who was standing next to him, looked at Dumbledore with a puzzled look on his face and said, Professor Dumbledore, are you, talking to me? Little guys, although I have never drunk Polyjuice Potion, I have seen Professor Snape make it and people who have used it, so your tricks are of no use to me. Okay little guys, since you don't want to go back to the dormitory, then come back to the office with me. I have prepared enough paper for you in the office. As he spoke, Dumbledore turned around and walked towards the office, but to Dumbledore's surprise, the two Yi Feng didn't follow him, they just looked at him with a smile on their faces. It seems you two still don't give up, so let me help you recall. Wingardium, Leviosa. As Dumbledore's right hand counted, two rays of magic light fell on the two Yi Feng instantly like meteors, but what made Dumbledore's pupils shrink suddenly was that the two rays of magic light passed directly through and did not really it fell on two Yi Feng. Boom, thunder flashed in the sky, and in the dark night coupled with such a strange scene, even Dumbledore couldn't help but get goosebumps. When he saw that the Yifeng beside him had no shadow, the Yifeng opposite him when the wind stopped his feet from touching the ground, a chill suddenly ran down his back. Professor Dumbledore, are you talking to me? At this moment, both Yifeng looked at him with weird smiles on their faces and spoke in unison. Dumbledore. Shet. This weird scene made Dumbledore sweat all over his body from fright at this moment, because even though he was well informed, he had never seen such a scene before, but when Dumbledore saw these two Yi Feng after just looking at him strangely but not doing anything to him, he slowly calmed down. If he really encountered the rumored dirty thing, then the other party should have taken action against him at this moment, but now the other party did not do anything. There are only two possibilities in this situation. One is that the other party has no ability to hurt him at all now, which can be seen from the fact that the person was scared away instead of being killed, the other is even simpler, that is, everything is just that nasty little bastard's prank by Yi Feng. No, no, actually there is another possibility. Thinking of this, Dumbledore suddenly took out a yellow talisman from his pocket and slapped it on his side, looking up at him with a weird smile, on Yi Feng's forehead. Yi Feng, Dumbledore. Looking at Yi Feng who was motionless, both Dumbledore and Yi Feng fell into silence at this moment, because the thing attached to Yi Feng's forehead at this moment was the spirit-binding talisman he used to immobilize Nick before. Classmate Yi Feng, is it time to explain to me what's going on? When the talisman photographed Yi Feng, Dumbledore also saw more things, such as the magic elements floating in the air around Yi Feng. To be a little livelier, and more importantly, the lights here are a little dimmer. Of course, what made Dumbledore confirm that this was indeed Yi Feng's mischief was actually the fact that he saw a little bit of flour on Yi Feng's face that had not been completely wiped off after he came out. 
It was precisely because of this that Dumbledore truly confirmed that he was not the one who met Yi Fang. There was something dirty, but it was the little bastard Yi Fang who was doing something wrong. Seeing that Dumbledore had seen through his disguise and was already planning to catch him, Yi Fang knew that he could no longer pretend, so he directly took back his spiritual clone. He was also the Yi who ran over after washing his face. Fang turned around and ran away. Good night, Professor Dumbledore. It's already very late, I'm going back to sleep. Yi Fang had already disappeared into the darkness before he finished speaking, and Dumbledore looked at Yi Fang who disappeared into the darkness and breathed a sigh of relief. Especially when Yi Fang beside him also disappeared and the talisman was slowly falling to the ground. You really can't underestimate this little bastard. I was almost fooled by him, but don't tell me, this guy really looks like a ghost. Now I finally know why those friends from China who have never heard of them would dress up as ghosts during the ghost festival. This kind of Chinese horror is really scary. If someone gets into it again. Even Dumbledore couldn't help but shudder when he thought of this, which made him involuntarily scan his surroundings and raise his wand to cast fluorescent light, and then hurried to his residence. Perhaps because they were really frightened, Yi Fang's defense against dark arts class was immediately suspended the next day. As soon as the news came out, the classroom became lively, and then a well-informed, red hair, quietly tell Harry about the news he learned. I didn't expect it to be true. What's true? Ronald, where did you hear the gossip? I heard it from the seniors when I was having breakfast this morning. They said that Professor Quirrell seemed to have encountered something scary last night and was frightened. Principal Dumbledore and the others searched all night but couldn't find him. Been there. Originally, I thought this was just a rumor, but I didn't expect that Quirrell actually didn't come to class. In other words, this news is very likely to be true. Yi Fang. Hollow down pointing triangle, no. Hermione next to Yi Fang glanced at Yi Fang after hearing the news. When she saw the happy expression on Yi Fang's face, she just combined it with the time they went back to the dormitory last night and Yi Fang could easily go back to the dormitory. Guess, it was most likely him who did this. Although Hermione is not the roundworm in Yi Fang's belly, she still knows Yi Fang quite well as she often plays with Yi Fang. She is convinced that this is indeed something Yi Fang can do. After all, he can kill fish with the Gryffindor Holy Sword. Even if he did something outrageous, Hermione said she could accept it. Yes, after that day, she became very interested in the exquisite and extremely sharp sword that Yi Fang used to kill fish. Hermione would always get to the bottom of things that she was interested in. Then, she spent two days in the library. After that, I successfully found information related to that sword. When she found out that the sword was the holy sword of Gryffindor, Hermione was a little unbelievable at first, but after repeated confirmation and asking Yi Feng where the sword was found from, she couldn't accept that it was the result of countless people looking for it. The holy sword of Gryffindor has not been found for many years. Therefore, when Hermione saw the expression on Yi Feng's face, she guessed almost everything, but she would not point it out. After all, once this kind of thing was revealed, it would not matter to Yi Feng or Professor Quirrell. Neither will be too good. This discussion continued until lunch, because during lunch, Harry's owl brought him a broomstick, and the broomstick had Nimbus 2000 written clearly on it. However, although the discussion slowly stopped, the incident evolved into multiple versions and was passed down from generation to generation and became a midnight legend. So that on Halloween, no one in Hogwarts would dare to go out at night again. Everyone will go back to the dormitory early to rest on this day. Of course, an important reason for this tradition was that Dumbledore issued a new school rule the next day, students are absolutely not allowed to dress up as ghosts and go out at night to scare people on Halloween night, especially students from China. Of course, these are all things for later, and now everyone's conversation is distorted by the Nimbus 2000 in Harry's hand. Nimbus 2000 can be said to be the most powerful generation of flying broomsticks nowadays, so a lot of people gathered around the broomstick as soon as it came out. As for the Nimbus 2000 that Yi Feng bought for himself, Zhang Chu and Hermione, that was not the case. It wasn't delivered in public, very few people saw it, and they had never used it, so even Harry and the others didn't know about it. Wow, there are 2,000 Nimbuses. With Harry having this broomstick, our chances of winning future Quidditch matches will be greatly improved. The Weasleys, who had always liked to join in the fun, 
naturally didn't react when they heard the news here, miss. Of course, it would be better if they didn't have some special, sauce, hidden in their hands when they came over. Hey Harry, can you lend me the Nimbus 2000? You know, our family doesn't have much money and can't afford a good broomstick, so. While speaking, the Weasley twins squeezed directly to Harry's side and pulled Yifang was squeezed away. Of course, although Harry was very famous and was like a star in Hogwarts, he was actually very talkative, so he directly motioned to the Weasley twins to pick up the broomstick and take a look. With Harry's permission, the two of them became even more excited. They pushed Yifang away with a push of their buttocks and sat next to Yifang. While they squeezed Yifang away, they sprinkled some powder on the food in front of Yifang. You want to trick me again? Your perseverance is really firm, but... Although the Weasley twins' little move was very subtle, they were considered old rivals, so Yifang had been guarding them, so he discovered the two's little move right away. However, he didn't point it out. Instead, he took advantage of them thinking they had succeeded and excitedly admired Harry's nimbus. He quietly moved the food in front of him to theirs and divided it into two equal portions. Ten minutes later, Hey, Fred, do you feel a little uncomfortable in your stomach suddenly? George, you're in trouble too. Yi Feng, ah, can't you let us win once? Even if it's just once. The Weasley twins wailed and ran to the toilet after realizing that they had been tricked, because they were the ones who brought this thing. People know the function of that thing better than they do. It turned out that the Weasley twins had no skills at all. They seriously underestimated the power of the seasoning they had cooked up, and they paid a heavy price for this. It wasn't until the Quidditch match started in the afternoon that they turned pale and shrunk before walking out of the toilet with their legs weak and holding on to the wall. In this state, let alone participating in the Quidditch match, could they leave? Standing firm behind the wall was a problem, so they could only focus on Yi Feng. Yi Feng. Gryffindor's honor depends on you. Yi Feng. Katakana middle dot he katakana middle dot. Although the team has a reserve batsman, there is only one, and there is definitely no substitute player for the next day, so Yi Feng, you can only play. Don't worry, it's very simple for a batsman. Just hit the ball away and don't let your opponent get the ball. Just leave the rest to your teammates. Although he was very reluctant, Yi Feng was eventually forced to become the batsman in this Quidditch match. As for the rules, he only remembered one rule, which was not to let his opponent steal the ball. Just don't let the opponent get the ball. It seems quite simple. Yi Feng was pushed onto the field with a unique understanding of the rules of Quidditch. At this moment, his opponents and teammates were completely unaware of this. Something terrible is going to happen. Listening to the loud noise outside the door, Yi Feng's heart couldn't help but beat wildly. Although he had no interest in Quidditch, he had never experienced this kind of highly anticipated scene, so when he was forced to put on Gryffindor's Quidditch uniform and go on stage with Harry, when he reached the door, his heart couldn't help but beat wildly. Ha, huh, take a deep breath, don't be nervous, as long as you don't let your opponent get the ball, just don't let your opponent get the ball, just. While Yi Feng was doing some mental building, a dark-skinned girl about 15 years old patted Yi Feng's shoulder and said with a smile, Student Yi Feng, you don't have to be nervous. We have everything under control. You just need to pay attention to safety and avoidance. Just don't get knocked out by the opposing batter. Yi Feng, ha, huh. oh oh oh, I understand. Just knock out all the opponents. I understand. Yi Feng, who was a little nervous, only heard half of Angelina's words, so Angelina was a little bit dumbfounded when she heard Yi Feng's words. And just when she was about to explain that she didn't mean that, the door suddenly opened. Wood, who was at the front, rushed out immediately. Seeing that the captain took the lead and rushed out, the others naturally followed and rushed out. This rush directly interrupted Angelina's explanation, and when Angelina found Yi Feng who was stepping on the broomstick, when he was ready to explain clearly, the players from both sides were already in place. Oh, is that Gryffindor's Yi Feng? I didn't expect him to be quite handsome, even more handsome and cuter than that Harry. But he actually stepped on a broomstick. This is not a broomstick lesson. Doing this you have to suffer. Indeed, but I heard that he was temporarily brought here to make up the numbers because the Weasley twins were hungry. Is that so? It seems like Gryffindor is going to lose this time. What a poor little guy. This is his first Quidditch match in this situation. 
I hope today won't be a nightmare for him. Nightmare, doesn't that mean that he will be in a very low mood after the game? Then as a senior, should I go and comfort this cute junior? Maybe there will be a chance, ha 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 ha. Seeing Yi Fang's special appearance, the stands immediately started talking. Quidditch is indeed the most popular and popular sport in the wizarding world. In this case, even Dumbledore and Professor McGonagall did not want to pursue Yi Fang. Just standing on a broomstick. As Mrs. Hooch opened the box, a bludger the size of a small watermelon and a golden snitch no bigger than an egg flew into the sky, but this had nothing to do with Yi Fang, because this was what Harry, the seeker, needed to do, and he only needed to do it now. Just keep an eye on the quaffle that hasn't been thrown by Mrs. Hooch, because he's the batter. Of course, because he had never practiced with the Quidditch players, Yi Fang did not move when the quaffle was thrown by Mrs. Hooch and then snatched away by the senior Gryffindor. He and Harry were looking for the ball. His hands just floated quietly on the court and watched. Needless to say, Gryffindor's Quidditch players still had something to offer. They scored two goals in just two minutes, and both of the opponent's shots were blocked by their goalkeeper, the captain. But maybe it was because the opposing Schlackland players were impatient. They no longer kept calm and grabbed the ball but began to use their hands and feet. One of them went too far. He actually snatched the bat from the batter's hand and knocked it away with a stick. The ball hit their goalkeeper, knocking them unconscious and falling to the ground. Yi Feng, who was watching and learning the rules with great interest, immediately became angry when he saw this scene. He stepped slightly hard with his right foot, and with this force, the broomstick flew out quickly. Seeing Yi Feng rushing out, the other team members were relieved, because they thought Yi Feng was going to save their team member who was slowly falling to the ground, but in fact it was not the case, Yi Feng was going for the beaten star. After flying, it circled around and flew to the bludger behind the buck-toothed boy in green clothes. Call out, under Yi Feng's full control, the speed advantage of Nimbus 2000 was maximized. Dumbledore's eyes, which were originally slightly squinted, widened when he saw this scene. But when he saw Yi Fengli's floating star when the walking ball got closer and closer, he was even more frightened and took out his wand. Boom, with a loud bang, the bludger, which was about the size of a small watermelon, was ejected like a cannonball. If someone's eyesight was strong enough, he could see that the bludger hit the ground the moment it was blown away. There was a sonic boom. Crack. Ah, the next moment the bludger was knocked out, screams and breaking sounds sounded at the same time, and then two guys in green Quidditch uniforms flew out in a spin, and finally hit the empty stands with a bang. The place. Dumbledore, who had already expected it, sighed when he saw this and hurried over. He was relieved when he found that the two Slykland students only had a few broken ribs and fainted in pain, and their lives were not in any danger. Looking at this guy, he is still very measured, but this time the little Slytherin guy is going to be in bad luck. When Dumbledore was checking the injuries of the two Slytherin people, Yi Feng also stared closely at Mrs. Hooch as the referee. When Yi Feng saw that Mrs. Hooch did not say that he had violated the rules, Yi Feng was instantly reassured. It seems I understood it correctly. This is what a batsman should do, as for scoring runs. Yi Feng said, Score. Why score? In Quidditch, isn't it possible to win by defeating all your opponents? What to do? As a result, the originally intense Quidditch field turned into a battlefield of fierce pursuit. As for the Golden Snitch, no one paid attention to it now. Exclamation mark. So cruel. Wow, the spot where the ball hit, it hurts just looking at it. Here I go, this junior is really fierce, and he didn't let go of such a beautiful senior, but I like this attack position, it's very flexible, he he he. Isn't this too cruel? It's only been five minutes. In just five minutes, there are only two Slytherin players left. Among these two people, there is also a seeker. If there will be a seeker. Dong. Well, the seeker has also been, sacrificed, and Slytherin's last hope is gone. They can no longer win this game. Win, you actually still cared about winning or losing this game until just now. The nature of this game had already changed when Yi Feng was chasing the Slytherin players. That's right, winning or losing is no longer important. Now everyone is looking at whether the Slytherin players can escape Yi Feng's pursuit and exit successfully, and if not, how long they can last. But looking at the current situation, the last person won't be able to hold on much longer. 
While everyone in the field was talking about it, Yi Feng, who looked excited, was standing on the broom and approaching the Slytherin player in front of him. The biggest reason why he could survive until now and not be defeated was because of him. The smarter ones have been avoiding the bludgers. But who said he couldn't do it without the quaffle? After catching up with the opponent, Yi Feng didn't do anything to the Slytherin Quidditch player. He just quickly approached the opponent from the left rear, and then when the opponent was about to change direction and run in my other direction, he instantly accelerated and went to the right. He turned and made a standard American interception, that is, he hit the side and rear of the opponent's broomstick. The last member of Slytherin who was hit from the side lost his balance and fell to the ground. Fortunately, the wizard's physical fitness was quite good, and the buffer magic was also cast on the field, so the last member of the Slytherin team was he fell unconscious but his injuries were not serious. The last member of Slytherin had already left the field, and they didn't have a single point on the scoreboard. The final result of this Quidditch match was naturally Gryffindor's victory. As for the course of the match, basically, Students from the other three academies except Slytherin said that although few goals were scored in this game and the golden snitch was not caught, they still enjoyed watching the exciting chase battle. Of course, it would be best not to do this the next time you play against them. One such game is enough. Therefore, on the night after the game ended, Dumbledore announced a rule about Quidditch while eating. In view of today's, intense, match between Gryffindor and Slytherin, I combined the suggestions of many professors and finally made a decision. We decided to add a rule to Quidditch. In a Quidditch match, a batter can only send off a maximum of two players from the opponent team, and these two players do not include the seeker. In addition, in view of student Yi Feng's incorrect and violent use of the broomstick, for everyone's safety I am here to announce a new school rule. When using a broomstick in school, you must follow the correct method. If it is due to personal reasons or special circumstances, you must ensure your own safety. Otherwise, the right to use the broomstick will be revoked. As soon as Dumbledore announced this school rule, the whole school was in an uproar, because many people felt that the way Yi Feng stood on the broom was much more handsome than flying with the broom between his legs, and many people had even started practicing, broom flying. However, Yi Feng, the initiator of this incident, did not pay too much attention to this school rule because there were loopholes in this school rule. The school rules say, if due to personal reasons or special circumstances, the premise must be to ensure one's own safety. That is to say, as long as he can ensure his own safety and provide sufficient evidence, then let alone stand on the broomstick. It flies, and there is no problem even if you lie on it. So, after reading and returning to his dormitory, Yi Feng directly erased the control magic circle on the broomstick with a wave of his hand, and then engraved a modified control magic circle on himself. The original broomstick control magic circle needs to be controlled like riding a bicycle, but the handlebar is the broom head, and the seat cushion and pedals are also invisible. Now that Yi Feng had erased this magic array, he decided to add a control array similar to the flying sword, but he soon discovered a problem. When a cultivator flies with a sword, he does not let the sword provide the power to fly. Instead, he exerts his own power on the sword to control the sword to fly. Therefore, a cultivator with a sword does not have to worry about losing his balance and falling, or losing control of his feet. The problem with the sword. But now he is not using a sword but a flying broomstick. The evidence he provided is also provided to Dumbledore and other magicians. In other words, he must make Dumbledore and the others think that this set of things is safe, rather than thinking that they are safe even though it is safe. Something that is simply incomprehensible. How about just modifying the broomstick to perform billions of blows? Thinking of this, Yi Feng suddenly thought of a certain squirrel who wanted to install guardrails on the flying sword because he was afraid of heights. He felt that the other person's idea seemed to be quite good when used on a flying broomstick, so Yi Feng used his backhand to place a space ring on it. I took out a lot of materials. Yi Feng does not have many magic or weapon refining materials, but he still has some ordinary materials. Modifying a broomstick does not require any precious materials, ordinary materials are enough. First of all, it is too embarrassing to fly directly with a thin broomstick. We need to add a handsome shell, and with the shell, we need a rudder to control the direction. Now that the rudder is in place, the gear to control the flight speed must also be arranged. Finally, 
For safety, the brakes and safety devices for throwing people away when braking suddenly must also be arranged. Hey, it seems like there are quite a lot of things that I always want, but in order not to fly with a broomstick, I did it. Then, an hour later, Yi Feng fell into deep thought while looking at the design drawing of a flying motorcycle on the table, which was only black and white but had a science fiction color. Is this the legendary end of theology and science? But this picture is quite handsome. The next day, news came out that someone had seen Dumbledore's office flashing around at night. Some people didn't believe it at first. After all, it was Dumbledore's office, and Principal Dumbledore had always been a very stable person in their opinion. So he would not do such boring things. As for someone breaking into Principal Dumbledore's office, they thought this was not as reliable as the previous guess. A week later, Dumbledore's eyes widened when he looked at the flying broomstick that was full of strange beauty and shock in his office, eyes. A director of the War Ignorance Bureau once said that good-looking things in terms of weapons and equipment must also be powerful. Yi Feng's individual aircraft takes into account aerodynamics, gravity distribution, etc., and if it meets these conditions and can be harmoniously combined, it must be in line with the laws of nature, and things that conform to the laws of nature generally look good. The value is not bad. Therefore, even the well-informed Dumbledore was shocked after this thing was unveiled. However, after the shock, Dumbledore still faithfully fulfilled the school rules he announced before, saying, Is this what you have achieved this week? Student Yi Feng, I will not ask about safety for now. Now please tell me, this thing what's the connection with broomsticks? Faced with Dumbledore's questioning, Yi Feng didn't panic at all. He confidently pressed a button on the front of this sci-fi individual motorcycle aircraft, and then the upper part of the motorcycle opened directly to reveal the modified controls hidden inside. There are 2,000 halos of the magic circle. Dumbledore fell into silence looking at the broomstick lying quietly inside the individual aircraft, but his eyes suddenly widened when he discovered that the magic circle on the broomstick had been modified and was quite perfect. You modified the broomstick's control magic. Hearing Dumbledore's words, Yi Feng glanced at Dumbledore and said matter-of-factly, the original control magic has nothing to do with this shell and naturally needs to be transformed. However, in the face of this great invention that can subvert the magic world, Principal Dumbledore your focus is actually here, it seems you are really old. After saying this, Yi Feng still pretended to sigh, which made Dumbledore almost couldn't help but beat him. However, Yi Feng was right. With this magic circle and this weird shell, this pair of young wizards did have fatal power, attraction. My little guy has a good idea, but it's a pity that you missed one thing, that is, many people in the wizarding world can't even buy a better broomstick. How can they afford this one, which costs 2,000 more than the Nimbus? An even more expensive new, flying broomstick. Is it really what Dumbledore thinks? It can only be said that things are fickle. Even Dumbledore, who is experienced, cannot read people's hearts. In fact, the development of things was completely opposite to what Dumbledore thought, because Yi Feng's heavy broomstick captured the hearts of most Hogwarts students as soon as it was unveiled, and with the publicity of these students at Hogwarts the entire wizarding world knows. The reason why this heavy broomstick explodes in popularity is simple, safety and violence. Safety means that it protects the user better than traditional broomsticks. Even when equipped with a helmet, if you hit the ground at full speed and roll around for more than 10 or 20 times, you can shake your head and then get up and continue. Fly. As for violence, that is another side effect. Because of the solid materials used, the weight of the heavy broomstick is 200 kilograms. In addition, the shell is enchanted with a strong spell. With its extreme speed and weight, you don't need to use magic to face the enemy. You can just rush past it. The powerful impact can even kill an adult mountain monster in one go. Of course, this is all a thing for another day. Now that he has transformed his legal broomstick, Yi Feng has directly focused on another thing, because Christmas is coming soon, and he has to consider giving it to his good friend Harry. What kind of gifts have they and Zhang Chu's family prepared? Otherwise, just give this broomstick away. Anyway, I have completely experimented with the manufacturing process and materials of this thing. If I want to recreate it, I can make one in a day at most. In the end, Yi Feng still didn't give away this first, heavy broomstick. After all, it was the first generation experimental product. 
Although he was very confident that there would be no problems, he was not sure that this thing was in the hands of others. Will there be any problems? So let's wait until he tests it a few times to make sure there is really no problem. But the problem came again. If he didn't give this broomstick, he didn't seem to have anything to give. If he wanted to buy a gift, their first grade wizard couldn't leave school. The era of online shopping had not yet developed, so even if he had money doesn't work either. Forget it, I'll do it myself, but I need to find some materials before preparing the gift. The best place to find materials is naturally the Forbidden Forest. After all, there are all kinds of magical animals in it. In addition, there are also many medicinal materials with special energy, but it is a pity that Yi Feng cannot go there. Of course, if he uses the power of an immortal cultivator, he can still go there, such as using a clone to attract Dumbledore's attention, while the main body becomes invisible and goes to the Forbidden Forest, but he is an upright immortal cultivator, and it takes a lot of materials to enter the Forbidden Forest. How boring is it to be sneaky? Even if he, Yi Feng, wanted to enter the Forbidden Forest, he had to do so in a legitimate manner, so that when he directly took out materials that could only be produced from the Forbidden Forest, he could block Dumbledore's mouth and leave him speechless. Since you can't enter the Forbidden Forest directly, there is only one way. Thinking of this, Yi Feng left Dumbledore's office and ran lightly to the edge of the Black Lake and took out his yellow fishing rod. As we all know, a fisherman can catch anything except fish, so Yi Feng, as a fisherman, also fished some magical materials from the water that are only found in the Forbidden Forest. Isn't it very similar to the river? Hey, as Yi Feng flicked the fishing rod, the fish hook without bait flew out dragging the fishing line. However, this time it was completely different from before, because the fish hook did not fall into the water but plunged directly into the void. Disappeared. While throwing out the fish hook, Yi Feng's spiritual mind was also attached to the fishing rod. Through the thrown fish hook, his spiritual mind could see the half meter radius of the fish hook. However, because he was following the fish through the fishing rod, the lines are conductive, so you can't see very clearly. It's a bit like looking at the outside scene through glass on a rainy day. Although the range that can be seen is limited and the scene is not very clear, it is enough for Yi Feng. After all, he can find a use for the things in the Forbidden Forest, and if it doesn't work once, he can come back several times, all right. With this mentality, Yi Feng controlled the fish hook and kept swimming in the Forbidden Forest. What surprised Yi Feng was that when he controlled the fish hook and passed by a forest, the fish hook seemed to have hooked something, but through fish hook Yi Feng did not observe anything nearby. Forget it, let's take it back first. Anyway, I can do this level of anchor fishing a dozen times today. Let's see if we get anything first. Yi Feng murmured, controlling the fishing rod to pull the fishing line. When the fishing rod was retracted, Yi Feng realized that his harvest this time was actually not small. At this moment, a wisp of long white hair was flying in the wind on the retrieved fish hook, and the moment Yi Feng saw the wisp of hair, he knew what it was. It's actually the hair of a unicorn, and there's quite a lot of it. It should be enough to make a hand rope. Yi Feng laughed and hooked the strand of hair, not knowing it was a fish hook, as he passed by the unicorn's habitat. When he arrived, he put away the horse hair that he had hooked when passing by the unicorn, and then threw the fish hook out again. That's, a lot of unicorn hair. Just after throwing the fish hook out, Yi Feng saw a piece of silver white hair flying in the wind, so Yi Feng directly controlled the fish hook and flew over without thinking. At the same time, Dumbledore, who was reading in the office, frowned slightly, and then he felt something swish in front of him and wrap around his white beard. Dumbledore. Katakana middle dot he katakana middle dot. Dumbledore felt his beard being tangled in something, and his mind was filled with questions. He is Dumbledore. Even the Dark Lord in the Wizarding World would not dare to invade Hogwarts easily without him, but now. Someone actually wanted to stroke his beard. This is absolutely not. Ah, before Dumbledore could finish his thoughts, he was interrupted by severe pain, and then he watched helplessly as a large bunch of his long, snow-white beards flew away from him and quickly flew away into the void. Disappear. D filled lower right triangle. Who is playing the prank? Feeling the stinging pain coming from his chin, Dumbledore, who had not been so angry for a long time, stood up immediately. When he felt that his master was angry, Fox, the phoenix, also instantly became nervous. Its sharp eyes were fixed. 
staring around and trying to find out the guy who offended its master, it wants to burn him to ashes. When Dumbledore was furious and fighting with the air with his wand, Yi Feng, who was sitting on the other side of the lake, looked at the white hair in his hand that although it did have a lot of magic power, it was not a unicorn hair and it always felt a bit familiar. Lost in thought. Forget it, put it away first, and we will use it later when we get back. Yi Feng murmured and threw out the fishing rod in his hand again, but this time Yi Feng's luck was not so good. He only caught fish three or four times in a row. Come back with something useless. Seeing that half a day had passed but the material he wanted was not available yet, Luo Yefeng was a little anxious, so he threw the fish hook out again and Yi Feng directly poured all his magical power into it. Yi Feng, who had poured in all his immortal power almost instantly, found that the range he could see had expanded more than 10 times. The field of vision had directly changed from half a meter before to a radius of 7 or 8 meters, and the clarity was also straight. Rise. If the previous picture quality was 360p, it is now at least 720p. This made Yi Feng overjoyed, and his eyes suddenly lit up when he saw a snow white creature with a single horn lying upside down on the ground. This is a dead unicorn. The moment he saw the unicorn lying on the ground, Yi Feng was so excited, because this legendary animal that represents holiness is full of treasures. As for the curse of the unicorn, Yi Feng was so excited. Feng could only say that compared to the curses in the immortal cultivation system and the curses in the witchcraft system, it was not even a younger brother. Therefore, when Yi Feng saw the unicorn lying on the ground, still warm and not stiff, he did not hesitate at all. He directly controlled the fish hook to fly out and tied up the unicorn, even in order to avoid wasting it. Even the mud stained with the unicorn's blood was fished back. Of course, the magical animals in the Forbidden Forest are all in Hagrid's eyes, and Hagrid also loves them very much, especially the unicorn that represents sanctity, so Yi Feng immediately took the unicorn back. He put it into the space ring. Very good, we have all the materials. Let's go back to catch some food. Hogwarts is on holiday at Christmas. After all, Christmas is equivalent to our New Year in the UK. Although Yi Feng and his family are in China, he does not need to stay in school because he is now living in Zhongchu. This cheap sister's home, so he needs to prepare the gifts before going back for the holidays. Of course, before leaving, he planned to celebrate Christmas for Harry and the others in advance, so after collecting all the materials for preparing Christmas gifts, Yi Feng did not leave but continued fishing on the edge of the Black Lake. While Yi Feng was fishing hard to prepare for tonight's sumptuous meal, Dumbledore used magic to replay the scene many times and finally figured out what was going on, but he couldn't believe that this was the fact. Because who would believe that someone would fish his beard away with a fish hook? Although it's a bit unbelievable, it's a fact, and I always feel that the fish hook and fishing line look familiar. Is this an illusion? With deep doubts, Dumbledore found Snape as quickly as possible, because only Snape had the best quality hair restorer. After all, his most urgent thing now was not to find out who did this, but to get his hair tonic. A large piece of missing beard, which seriously affected his image, was repaired. A few minutes later, Dumbledore arrived at Snape's potions room, but in his hurry, Dumbledore didn't realize that two sneaky and startled figures were following behind him. Dumbledore Snape was also startled when he saw Dumbledore Snape walking into his potion room quickly, because he saw that Dumbledore's long snow white beard, which was always neatly groomed, was now missing a large piece in the middle. Headmaster Dumbledore, are you? Seeing the shock on Snape's face, Dumbledore told him what he had just experienced without any nonsense, and also told him that he was in urgent need of hair restorer. When Snape heard that Dumbledore's beard was taken away in his office, his face instantly became serious, because as a colleague of Dumbledore, he still had a certain understanding of Dumbledore's strength, but he was so powerful in reality. Dumbledore was actually attacked in his office. This problem was a bit too serious. Headmaster Dumbledore, could it be, that person? Seeing that Snape's mood instantly became serious, Dumbledore waved his hand and said, don't be nervous, I don't feel the other party's malice, and that person's strength is greatly reduced now. From what I know about him, he doesn't have the strength to do this. So you don't have to worry. As for who did this, I have a guess. You don't need to worry about it. I will solve this matter. Seeing what Dumbledore said, Snape had nothing to say, 
but he still cheered up and secretly decided to pay more attention to Harry's safety in the future. After all, he was Lily's child. By the time Dumbledore came out of Snape's potions room, his beard had grown thicker again, but if you looked closely you could still tell the difference. When Dumbledore came out of Snape's potion room, his beard was obviously longer and thicker than before, but he didn't pay attention to it deliberately and couldn't tell it without looking carefully. Coincidentally, Yi Feng had carefully observed Dumbledore's beard, so when he came back from the Black Lake and met Dumbledore and said hello, his heart immediately skipped a beat, because he suddenly knew that handful of white hair lying in his space ring. What the hell is Mao? Gulu, it seems like we've gotten into trouble again. No, as long as I pretend that I don't know anything and destroy the evidence immediately after I return, then I can completely pretend that this incident didn't happen, and no one will see it anyway. Thinking of Yi Feng pretending to be nonchalant as he walked past Dumbledore towards the dormitory, and when the two of them walked about two meters away from each other, Yi Feng was already thinking about the safest way to eliminate those evidences. At that moment, Dumbledore's voice suddenly sounded from behind him. Mr. Yi, have you burned my beard into ashes and thrown it into the Black Lake? Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe.